Thai qualifying champion. Big drive! Oh my! My goodness! He's done. He's done for game one. Oh my God! Lucia Alvear. Wow! Well done, Lucia. Look at True Will taking it. He's going to Thailand. He's going to Bangkok, baby. He's doing. Welcome to SWC 2023 in Bangkok. So tip.
ขอเสียงกับแบนคนสุดท้ายเลยครับผมของ s w c 2023ในรอบ World Finals นะครับบอกเลยว่าวันนี้สนุกดุเดือดแน่นอนครับแต่ว่าตอนนี้ต้องขอเรียนเชิญทั้ง8คนนะครับไปเตรียมความพร้อมในรอบของ Quarter Final กันก่อนเลยครับ Thank you very much all the players and please be ready for your next finals alright thank you so much ขอบคุณครับสุดยอดมากๆครับสวัสดีครับต้อนรับเหล่าสาวกสมุนเนอร์สวอร์ทุกทุกท่านครับเข้าสู่เกมการในขานที่ยิ่งใหญ่ที่สุดแห่งปีครับในศึกชิงทั่วแอนซงเกตตรงหน้าตรงนี้ครับกับสมุนเนอร์สวอร์วอร์ลีน่าแชมเปี้ยนชิพ2023ในรอบของ World Finals ครับผมวันนี้นะครับผมเต้ยรอจกรต้อนรับทุกท่านแล้วพร้อมจะพาทุกท่านครับในการไปร่วมกันลุ้นร่วมกันเชียร์ครับกับเกมการแข่งขันที่สุดตื่นตาตื่นใจครับ Welcome all the summoners to the biggest competition of this year. Welcome to the summoners world world n a t championship 2023 world finals. Today I'm Tom super ready to take all of you here to a wonderful journey. จากการในขันที่ผ่านมานะครับต้องบอกว่าเข้มข้นมากๆนะครับวันนี้เรามาถึงในรอบตัดสินกันแล้วเพื่อจะรู้แล้วครับว่าใครครับจะเป็นผู้เข้าแข่งขันที่แข็งแกร่งที่สุดครับผมของ s w c 2023และในปีนี้นะครับประเทศไทยของเราเป็นเจ้าภาพถ่ายทอดสดออนไลน์ไปทั่วประเทศเลยนะครับเพราะฉะนั้นขอเสียงเจ้าบ้านต้อนรับหน่อยเร็วสุดยอดสุดยอดมากมาครับตอนนี้ All right ladies and gentlemen after a long and tough journey now we've come to the final battles hosted in Thailand to find out Who is going to be the strongest player of SWC 2023? และจากการคัดเลือกนะครับของการจัดอันดับ World Arena ซีซั่นที่24และซีซั่นที่25นะครับตอนนี้ครับเราได้8คนสุดท้ายเรียบร้อยแล้วซึ่งมาจากการคัดเลือกครับในรอบของภูมิภาคภูมิภาคละ2คนครับซึ่งก็มีทั้งที่ของอเมริกาครับยุโรปครับเอเชียแปซิฟิกทั้งหมดครับรวมทั้งสิ้นนะครับ6คนด้วยกันนอกจากนี้ครับยังมี1คนที่ได้มาจากทางการแข่งขันครับของรอบ China Qualification Match ครับและอีก1คนครับในรอบของ Open Qualifier ที่ประเทศไทยและ1ใน8คนนี่แหละครับจะมาดูว่าใครจะสามารถรองแชมป์ SWC 2023ไปได้ครับ So ladies and gentlemen Based on the rankings of the World Arena Season 24 and Season 25, now we have the top eight finalists. They come from the regional competitions, including the Americas, Europe, and Asia Pacific. With each cup having two com representatives, making a total of six contestants. In addition, there is one representative from China qualification match and one. From Open Qualifier in Thailand, and today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to find out together who will be the winner of SWC 2023. แล้วก็สําหรับในวันนี้เชื่อว่าใครที่มาในงานของเราด้านหน้าเรามีกิจกรรมต่างๆมากมายครับเริ่มตั้งแต่จุดของแลนด์มาร์กในการถ่ายภาพพอถ่ายรูปเรียบร้อยนะครับอย่าลืมครับโพสต์ลงและติดแฮชแท็กกับเราด้วยครับมี2แฮชแท็กนะครับอันแรกคือ SWC 2023ครับและ Hashtag ของ Summoners War นะครับเพื่อที่ว่าจะได้เป็นคลังภาพของครอบครัว Summoners War ในการกลับมาดูภาพความสำเร็จในปีนี้ด้วยกันนะครับนอกเหนือจากนี้ครับเรามีอีกหนึ่งกิจกรรมพิเศษในการร่วมกันโหวตนะครับว่า1ใน8คนนี้ใครจะสามารถคว้าแชมป์ไปได้นะครับนั่นคือ Players Prediction อย่าลืมนะครับว่าต้องอยู่จนจบงานกับเราถึงจะมีสิทธิ์ในการลุ้นรับรางวัลน,นี้ครับผมรวมถึงการโหวตของซัมมอนต่างๆนะครับในการมาร่วมเชียร์พิชิตนะครับคู่แข่งของคนที่คุณกำลังเชียร์อยู่นะครับแล้วก็กิจกรรมเกมต่างๆรอบงานของเราครับรวมไปถึงว่าใครที่มาแล้วรู้สึกว่าโอ้โหด้านในเน้นด้านแล้วสามารถถ่ายทอดนะครับออกไปด้านนอกมีจอสตรีมมิ่งให้ดูอยู่นะครับที่สําคัญครับอีกหนึ่งไฮไลท์ของงานของเราครับนั่นคือโซนของ Home to Art Store เรามีจุดจำหน่ายสินค้านะครับขอที่ระลึกต่างๆจากครอบครัวของ s u m m e r s w a r ให้ด้วยนะครับเอาเลยครับวันนี้ครับเราอยู่ในรอบของ World Finals นะครับเพราะฉะนั้นปีที่ยิ่งใหญ่แบบนี้เราจึงมีแคสเตอร์ถึง8ภาษาด้วยกันนะครับสุดยอดมากๆในครั้งนี้ครับ
Ladies and gentlemen, today we are at the World Finals of SWC 2023. It's the reason why we have the caster speaking in eight different languages. So let's say hi to our caster first. So where are you? The caster from Japan, Japanese caster. You know, up? Ah, from the United States, you know, up? Konnichiwa. Oh, he has a lot of love. He loves it, right? So how about Korean caster? Annyeong, Seyo. <laughs> and next, moving on to Chinese caster. Ni hao. Woo! And how are you doing, English caster? Are you ready? Yeah. Lap ma thung chao ban kap. Sawadi kap. Caster cha prathet choi. Bangshu French caster. Bai thi caster bahasa Perancis, nai kap. And moving on to German caster. And last but not least, welcome the Portuguese caster. Hola. เอาละครับต่อจากนี้ไปต้องห้ามกระพริบตาแล้วเพราะนี่คือศึกที่เดิมพันด้วยถ้วยแห่งเกียรติยศของ Summoners War ในครั้งนี้2023ที่อยู่ตรงหน้าของเรานะครับ So ladies and gentlemen, from now on, please keep your eye wide open because we are going to witness. The unforgettable battles for the prestigious championship trophy of SWC 2023, and now it's time for Caster to take the spotlight. และตอนนี้นะครับขอส่งหน้าที่ต่อให้กับเหล่า Caster ในรอบของ Quarter Finals. and welcome to SWC 2023. My name is Evan and it is my absolute pleasure to be here at the table with Seppi and Stoic. Guys, how are you doing on the day of the World Finals? Evan, I'm doing great. It is phenomenal to be here all the way out here in Bangkok, Thailand. I've had such a great time, an incredible experience. I'm so pumped to be here for the World Final. Me too. Seppi, how are you doing? Extremely happy, feeling grateful to see the eight best players in the world out of a lot of incredible 
incredible matches. And Sawati. Sawati. So happy to be here. These are the eight best players as chosen from the regional cups and the preliminaries. There was a lot leading up to this, and there's a lot on the line now. What we've got is a narrowed down list of the greatest players in the world to date in 2023. And guys, I actually think that this might be the most stacked bracket that I've ever seen. Stoic, have you seen an SWC that's more stacked than this one? We've talked about this before, and it really is. This feels like one of those uh, um, uh, world finals that we have at SWC. We just have nothing but bangers this entire time. So many incredible players in this one, where it's like every match is, is an absolute cliffhanger. We're watching every one of these go through here. It's going to be insane. It really is. Absolutely, because we have a lot on the line for these players. We have people going in for their second world championship title. Now let's take a look at how we're going to be conducting the tournament ahead of us today. First of all, something important to remember is that it's best of fives all the way today. We are done with best of threes. These players are going to get every opportunity to get to know their opponent. And of course, they're fighting for their slice of a $140,000 prize pool with first place, Seppi, taking $100,000. That is a lot of quiche, Evan. If I'm not mistaken, this is the biggest SWC prize ever. Ever. Super exciting. Yeah, that's a suspicious amount of quiche, as we'd say. So more so than just the title, they are fighting for money right now. And for everybody watching at home, this is the first time in SWC history that we have had a unique currency associated with it. Just by watching, hanging out, and cashing in on those coupon codes that'll be dropping throughout the stream, you can acquire SWC 2023 emblems, which you can exchange in the aptly named shop that's live in the events page. You can use them on things like a legendary scroll, a devilmon, a grip of mysticals, some crystals, and more. So if you haven't checked out that event yet, Go ahead and do that right now because there's a chance that you might already have some emblems you're not aware of. I, uh, Seppi, I'm saving up for, for a legendary scroll. Oh my god, that is amazing. Yeah, I'm looking for those devil mons, you know. I want to skill up my monsters. And obviously, the fun part is that you get to participate in the prediction event. And speaking of predictions, I hope that everyone at home didn't forget to do them. Oh man, if you've got to do your prediction, you're missing out on so many rewards, especially if you've missed out on any of the SWCs that we've had, because at you, if you watch every one of them, you know those codes have gone out there, and everyone's going to be looking for those codes once again today. Be patient, everyone. I'm telling you now, be patient, because there's lots to be had and lots of rewards to see. Obviously, more rewards that you see right up here on the screen. Yeah, there's a lot to keep your eyes on, not just the events. By watching this, you're helping us achieve an accumulated viewership total. And the more people we get watching SWC, the better the rewards that we unlock. At the end of this thing, if we get 100,000 people watching the show, we will get five-star Raymond and Grave Scrolls, 200,000 yields, six-star Legend Runes for everybody, and a reap. And an additional Devilmon if we get 300,000 total people watching this. Now, notably, this doesn't have to be all at one time. So just by tuning in, you're, you're helping us reach that accumulated viewership total. And I better get my Devilmon at the end of this. And if I don't, I'm blaming you, chat. <laughs> and that's your fault if I don't get my Devilmon. Somebody's going hungry. Let's beat our competitors today. Like we foreshadowed at the top of the show, this is the culmination of a lot of different regional cups that we've already seen the end of. The Americas region has Big V and True Whale coming from it. Europe's got Pinkroid and Lufia. From the Thai Open Qualifier, we've got Sarah. And from the APAC region, we got Lest, Diligent, and Takuzo. Now, Stoic, there's a few very notable names in here. The ones that have won SWC World Finals in the past, Diligent's going for round two, and so is Lest. That's right. I mean, those are massive names. A lot of people that are expecting to see these two be in the World Final tonight as well. I mean, how, how can you not expect like to sit here and be like, oh, I don't think Lest. Lest is, Lest is a previous champion. Diligent is a previous champion. All these people, absolute contenders. We've seen them in the legendary tournaments as well. All of these players know how to perform and do very, very well on this stage. They are very, very familiar with the stage and playing a person as well. Yeah, and we have a couple people going for the collection here too. True Whale's trying to round out his collection of titles. He's already got the legend tournament, uh, the legend tournament finish, and now he wants to be a world champion. Everybody, this is the bracket that we're looking at today. In our quarterfinals, Diligent and Lufia are starting it off with a banger, followed by Lest and Takuzo, the caster turned player, followed by True Whale and Sarah, and finishing off with Pinkroid and Big V. Uh, Seppi, we start with a bang and we end with one too. Yeah, this is very exciting, Evan. And like you said, not only we have previous champions here today, other players that have been in the World Finals before, but also we have the underdogs. You talked about a player like Takuzo that used to be a caster. Now he's in the top eight in the world. A lot of people are not voting for him, for Zera and Lufia, but maybe those are things that are going to play in their advantage. 
reminding everyone that Zara has the support of this huge crowd right here. That must be so exciting, right, Stark? Yep, it really is. I mean, we, we talk about this all the time, the ability to play in person. And when you have an entire crowd behind you, it's almost like that RNG is with you. And no matter what you do, everything feels like the perfect move when no matter what you did, you've got that crowd behind you. Yeah, you have all that support. And of course, we uh, going off those underdogs still, I mean, Luffy is back there who doesn't have a ton of predictions of his own just yet. But something we were talking about before the show is that he has some of the most matches played, Seppi. Yeah, that's a very good point, Evan. This is not only about having the box, having the monsters, you know, the runes, but also getting experience and getting to train. You're picking band, you're targeting, knowing the meta in depth. So that might be a big advantage for him right now. And uh, the interesting thing too is even though other players that have fewer matches like Les, they have a lot of experience from the years prior. Very true, very true. And that does count for something. Tournament experience is completely separate from ladder experience, unless you're true whale and you farm, <laughs> you know, you farm the competition. Be crazy. I think Luffy has got him got it in in him, Stoic. However, asking anybody to take down Diligent is a tough thing to do. Yeah, that is a very tough thing to do. I mean, we're talking about such an incredible player. He is very Vote yeah. For the stadium. Yeah. I, I was gonna say the other thing too is diligent is the favorite, right? We saw the predictions: thirty-four percent, almost a third of every Summoners War player is voting for him. Right. And now he's facing the person that is the least favorite. This is the perfect underdog story. Imagine beating a previous champion, the favorite. How much does that do for your confidence, right? So he's probably looking at this, no one expects me to win, so I can try different stuff and maybe surprise this guy that has won this whole thing before. Let's see if Lufia can play into the narrative. I think he can do it. I think he has what it takes. We're about to learn more about these players and their player profiles in a second too. Diligent is a real tough mountain to climb. I don't know if Luffy has got the climbing gear. I think he does. I think he brought it with him on the trip. We'll see if he can do it. I I'll think tell you, it there's a, a little bit of climbing gear. Han is climbing Han gear. Han is climbing gear Han for Duke sure. Han is climbing gear. There's a lot of LD units He's got all right the dark <laughs> units and the dark speed lead to pair with them. Very aggressive play style. Hyper volatility. Let's see if Diligent has what it takes to actually counter that because it might make him a little bit nervous, Stoic. It definitely, you were right here. Now keep in mind, there's a little bit of history, you know, in this match here as well because we're talking about Diligent versus European player. Now back 2019 in Paris, Diligent had to play up against Boss. Boss actually taking down Diligent. I can't remember what the match is, but it felt like it was a 3 0, 3 1, or something of the sort. Boss did a great but showing. Boss in did a phenomenal showing there up against taking uh, uh, up against Dylan, taking him out in that uh, uh, that world final out in Paris. So, hey, Diligent you know, might be a little nervous here going up against the European player. Yeah, he could, but. Diligent may also rest easy knowing that he's got the weight of the predictions on him. Although, you know, if I remember his last showing, Seppi, he actually looked a little bit nervous on the stage of APAC. He did, to be completely honest, Evan. Uh, but I think that the thing that he did very well was he recovered, right? Oh,这个名字的来源就是勤奋的意思，就是我觉得自己玩这个游戏很勤奋，所以就请了这个名字。然后YC就是我的名字缩写。只能用自己的经验去弥补一下车位上的应对。Here he comes, Diligent, the favorite to win the whole thing today. He's coming to the stage. 
And is Luffy going to be the one to send him home? Nope, it's not. Very independent guy over there, Stoic. Yep, yep, definitely. Now, I, I do love what Diligent said there. He said his biggest enemy was like himself. And that, that's such a right thing. We've seen this a lot of times where Diligent may have one of the biggest boxes out there for, for Unipool, even room quality as well. Sometimes when it comes to these players, their, their biggest enemy really is themselves because they've got so much there, so much going on, a lot of things going on. You know how much they think their uh, their opponent has prepared for them, and a lot of that like really plays into it. So, Seppi, why don't you tell us a little bit more about Diligent's play style that we're seeing here? Yeah, speaking of that big box that Stoic just mentioned, he has two of the strongest units in the meta that even after a nerf are very dominant. The Laura, very high base speed, 120, and also the Wedjet that has a speed lead, so it pairs up really well with another meta unit like Sagar, multiple resets, and he has other LD units that come in as counter picks, but like Stoic said, it's very difficult. When you have so many options, maybe that sea of options becomes a problem in itself. But the interesting thing about Diligent is, all players here are really good and win games when they start picking first. But Diligent is the strongest player at picking second. He's won 11 matches and only lost one. Yeah, that's a very important factor to carry into this too. Diligent's a flexible guy with a deep monster box. He can make all the choices. My name is Lufia, I'm 32 years old and I'm from Stuttgart, Germany. My in-game name doesn't have a specific meaning, it's just a game from the 90s. From my childhood, I enjoyed it to play and that's all. I like the most about Thailand, the people, they are just super friendly and respectful and also the food. The most impressive opponent is for me Diligent. He has a very good experience from the past SWCs and also his monster box fits pretty well in the current meta. Hey Diligent, I respect your SWC career, but today it's my turn. He's facing the previous champion, but today it's his turn to shine. Please welcome to the stage, Lufia. Evan, and let me tell you something. Lufia is a very unique player, maybe the most aggressive playstyle that we're going to see here today. So super excited to see what he can bring to the table. And also, he has something in common with one of our casters here. His favorite thing is the Thai food, just like Stoic. Just yeah. like Stoic. I mean, he said it himself, one of his favorite things was, was, was having Thai food here. It really is because we just last night I had one of my favorite meals here too. So awesome. It, it's been such a uh, crazy experience. <laughs> That's great. Stoic. Tell us more about Lufia's highly aggressive play style that's showing there. I mean, it's the speed leads and then it's into the highly volatility units. Bella, the Dakoni Musha, we're talking about leader skills right into those things. And at the same time, he really likes that turn one going 33 speed lead with a lot of uh, attack power manipulation resets that Cigar. We're going to be seeing a lot of that, you know, whether it's Oliver, Vanessa, that 33 speed lead into Cigar. That's a very, very popular thing right now. A lot of players are doing it. But when you have that Han and you have the Dakoni Musha and Abella as well, it's just crazy combinations that you can have right there. Oh, yeah. I love watching Luffy's style of play in action, especially on the big stage. Whatever happens next, it's going to be fast. So if Lufia aims to win this game, he's going to send Diligent home. He's going to he's going to end these games in like 30 seconds flat. <laughs> seven. I agree, Evan. And the interesting thing we'll see which one of these speed leads the players today will prefer. We saw that in different cups. Some of them went for the Oliver, like Stoic said. Some of them went for the Water Ryu. But Vanessa has been rising in the meta a lot lately. So three big options over there. And then, obviously, we have the LD speed lead units. We have the Wedjet. We have the Han. And others that might surprise here today. Maybe we'll see some counter picking depending on what Diligent brings to the table. Maybe he's been studying, you know? He's been preparing for this aggressive play style. He's had plenty of time to change up his play style since he, his appearance in the APAC Cup. 
So we'll see what Diligent brings to the table on this pick ban phase. We're about to go into match one, round one of the SWC 2023 World Finals. Diligent versus Lufia. Look at them. Do they look nervous at all, Stoic? No, cold stares from both these competitors right here. They're not nervous. Game one, my friend. The pre bands coming in. Are we going to see LD units? Are we going to see some of those high-speed volatility monsters? We see the Vanessa on one side and the Laura. What this tells me is that Lufia has prepared very well for Diligent. Is not going to let him have the Wedge at Laura that easily. So do we think he's going to be going with an Oliver first pick here, going up against Diligent, setting the tone here to find where the speeds are going to be at in this best of five? Yeah, I would love that. The Water Ryu is also a great option, like we talked about. The question right now is, will Diligent bring the Wedge at early, or will he get the Oliver that you talked about? Now, this Water Ryu is actually something Diligent likes to draft a lot. This is a very, very fast mm -hmm. unit that Diligent has. I don't know if it was speed or despair runes or just that fast here, mm -hmm. but Diligent's going to be locking in the 24 <laughs> speed lead himself. We get a Neftis, and we have this beautiful uh, Light Assassin's Creed unit name escaped me right now, but this is an insane unit we've seen lots of this before <laughs> with Diligent. I love that he's like not taking any moment to pick any elemental units. We already have two LDs on the table and the response is the Amgyuki and also the reset, the beneficial effect removal from our strong Chung Pong. I really like the comp so far, very balanced from Lufia if it's correctly tuned and has enough speed to not get cut. Now, let's see what Diligent's going to be uh, reacting here after seeing the Trunkbun Dako Nimusha coming out here. So now there is only one speed lead being drafted uh, by Diligent. He hasn't locked in another one. I do like that Masha. We have a second speed lead that might be coming to the table here, and it is going to be that Wedge Jet. He's running out of time here. He should be locking it, and he does. Yeah, we talked about the Wedge Jet. It already shows up. Not only it brings that turn one, the speed lead, but also the sustain, right? To Stoic is such a strong unit for people that don't see it a lot in the ladder. And the Masha, very good unit against the Chunkbung. What it tells you is, I'm not afraid of your Chunkbung. I'm not afraid afraid of the Amgyuki too, because even if you kill me, I have, once I'm dropped off the chair, I can nuke you with that skill too. Yep, that's right. A lot of volatility in that. Now, to no surprise, we are going to be seeing that Han coming in there, locking in a second speed lead for Lufia. So he does think his Dako is going through. Even with the, the Dako Nimusha doesn't go through, we still have another speed lead that's going to come out with the Water Ryu locking in the 24 speed lead here. So Lufia does have a very solid team here. And I do like Diligent's last pick. If that is going to be the, uh, the, the Volantis, I think Volantis is actually a pretty shot pick. It really does turn things around here, but it does make that Juno banned. I was going to say, the Juno is such a strong pick, and maybe he doesn't want to deal with that. But the question right now, is, is this a swift water Ryu that can outspeed and guarantee the turn one, or is it going to be slower than that wedge jet? Once you have that, you have to strip so your Chunk Punk can control the opponent. Game one of the World Finals starts now. Let's get into it already. There it is. We've got that light Assassin's Creed unit with skills up. We know how fast this unit is. We've seen it before. You can definitely tell wedge jet's going to be going right after this unit. Does the strip a ton of damage. A little attack bar is going to be gained up here. Yeah, now the wedge at Boff says team, a lot of attack bar gain. Will he try to go for the nuke and already set up the defense break on the jump pump? And yes, that's what he does. Dumps it. The Masha will have a big chance. She goes. She has the turn. One, two. Oh my god. I knew it was going to happen. The second you saw that defense break there, Masha was perfectly speed tuned to go right into that after that. And it was just like, I knew that unit was going to get disappeared. We've got a defense break sitting on top of the Han. Han definitely in the danger zone right now, but he can't cycle out of this, which is really good for him. Yeah, that beautiful skill, but misses the death break. This is very, very difficult for Lufia now because he needs a proc from the Amgyuki, but doesn't get it. The Han can try to get a very important stun right here. He goes for the stun on the Neftis. Eivor, right now, almost having skill two, gets a lot of damage, gains attack bar, and the Han is almost done. Han is almost done here. He is going to be dropped out here. But I want to say this is probably a despair. I can't tell if it's a despair water you just yet. There's attack rate goes out there. But oh my god, the additional damage is going to be rolling through. Big defense makes so much damage. And we do have a uh, an attack break on this unit, so it doesn't kill just yet. But look at all of that attack bar being gained there. Dakon Emotion looking for anything, grasping for air to try and come back here in this first match against Diligent. The Masha Neftis combo. Diligent said, I don't need AOE death break. I just need to remove one unit and your whole comp doesn't connect. So if you don't have the attack bar reduction from the Chumpunk, it becomes very difficult for Lufia to play. And with that, Diligent is carrying home the first win of the day. He is. Congratulations, Diligent, for round one victory. Diligent with one point on the board, but just as a reminder, it is a best of five. So Lufia has time to try to counter and change his playstyle a little bit so that he can adjust to what Diligent is bringing. 
that highly aggressive draft kind of fell apart. Like you were talking about, Seppi, the Masha Nefti's combo is just so hard to deal with. Guaranteed defense break into that skill, too. Sometimes it can just feel impossible to come back from. Very good point, Evan. And the thing was, the Volantis last pick, like Stoic said, was really strong and forced his hand. It kind of gave away that he was going to ban the Juno, but it was such a good pick that you had to get rid of it because it would disrupt the whole comp. But the thing was that he managed to do the same thing without the Volantis just single target choosing the right monster to remove from the field. That's right. I mean, that Light Assassin's Creed unit is just so insane. All the turns that it's gaining out there, it is so disruptive for anything. And on top of that, you got the Wajet just pumped up so much attack power as well. What a crazy, crazy unit. It was an awesome draft by Diligent, though. It was very, very solid. Very, very safe in my eyes as well. And you really got to see how fast he was. He saw that unit was the first unit to take that turn there. Wasn't the widget, it wasn't anything else there. It was that light Assassin's Creed unit. Safe while not lacking in damage, which can sometimes be a difficult balancing act, but Diligent seems to have it on lockdown. The Ivor really cycles a lot of turns, and between Wedge at, and also Masha has inerrant attack bar absorption in that skill too as well. So you'll just find that Diligent was taking way more turns than his opponent, leaving him in the dust. Let's see if Lufia can try to counter that Seppi in the next one. Evan, I'm gonna call it this. Ivor reminds me a lot of a unit that once a long time ago dominated the meta. It took turn one, it removed the beneficial effect and reduced attack bar, and it was Lauren. Yeah. It was a very interesting interaction that we haven't seen in a while, right? You guys remember how cool it was? Lauren turn one, would get the strip. The good old days, bar. as we call them. The Lauren, <laughs> the Lauren meta. That was crazy. Uh, that was all the way back in 2019. Though, were they though? <laughs> Oh, yeah, they were amazing. Those days at all. The, they were amazing. <laughs> Not for people that play Art of Rag, right? But <laughs> <laughs> so, so Stoic, let me ask you this. Yes. What should Lufia try to do in this next game to I, adjust? I love that question because this is one of those situations where we just are, this man is very, very fast. So it's not that you're going to sit there and be like, let me take his speed leads away. Let me pre-ban the Woodjack because that's what is going to get pre-banned as we get into this next round here. But, I mean, we're, we're talking about a total flip here. I think Luffy needs to build up another strategy, and it can't be a turn one strategy because I think right now, Diligent's way too fast. I think mm -hmm. what you have to do is, you know, Flip it. Let's see some of those turn two units out there. I'm a big fan of the Juno. I think the Juno is definitely something that can't be justified. But we're talking about those units that are able to cut. Maybe a Nem Trap that if, if maybe he's prepared something for Diligent here. But I do like to see maybe like a, a, a Balio. Those units that come out of nowhere. Yeah. They really turn things around. Get you a said it. Out there. I'm sorry. I you, knew read you, were gonna say no, I, I, you read my mind. You read my mind. Yeah, it was I really great. Need to say, I was looking at you thinking of Balio, and you <laughs> just said it. Belio. You got to pick it carefully, right? You can't pick it too right. early because we can see that Chunk Bun, the cigar coming out. But Stoic, that is perfect commentary. I'm just here for. Or, you know, comedic. No. <laughs> Taco Abelio. Yeah, yes. Abelio sounds like an incredible draft pick. And I think you called it right there, too, Stoic. I think the wedge ad is probably going to soak up the pre ban in the next one. I mean, we saw the stats pop up there. Diligent has picked that wedge at 45% of the time in his tournament yeah. run. And that, la that last 55%, that's when it's been pre banned. <laughs> so yeah. it wasn't on the table. Yeah, another thing that I think would be very, very interesting to see is uh, just tankier units in general because like Stoic talked about, the comp from Diligent is not only fast, but mid-range. It has a lot of sustain, a lot of ways to deal with that damage that Lufia brings early on. Game two in the first best of five for the World Finals. Let's get into it, guys, take it away. All right, guys, here we go. We're getting to round number two pre-bands from last time. We got the lower, we got the Vanessa. Those are now going to be available. New pre-bands getting locked in right here. Is it the Woodjet? Woo! Uh, I'm expecting it to be it, uh, Stoic, to be completely honest. But also, will we see a change from Diligent? Will we take out one of the LD units, or will he stay with a 33? Maybe the Oliver, Oliver pre-band. Maybe he takes out that Water Ryu in case that Lufia wants to draft it first again. Etna, very interesting. interesting. That is so. Th I feel that feels so targeted to see uh, uh, an Etna get pre out here by Diligent. That, that feels like homework to me, to be honest with you. It looks like he is going to be taking a 33 speed lead, or he thinks he's going to be taking a 33 mm -hmm. speed lead, and go with those out of the box fast units, Etna, Zabala, Segment, those really really quick uh, base speed units. Oh, I would love to see a Zabala right here. Maybe that's how you make up the gap. But also, like you said, maybe Lufia needs to take a step back and play a little bit tankier. Vanessa does that. It's a revive. It brings in some of the 
that sustain that we asked for and also another source of death break. I'll be honest with you, I'm looking at this draft and I feel like Diligence feels so comfortable with that beautifully predicted pre-ban there and he knew Lufia drafted mm -hmm. the 33 speedly, drafted the Han and I feel like this is exactly what Diligent was expecting to see. He knew that 33 was going to get locked in nice and early so he eliminated one of the units that he didn't want to have to deal mm -hmm. with and that was going to be an Ethna. I do think if Luffy, Luffy is going to commit to the, having these speed leads here, we're talking about those very fast units. Is it going to be a segment? Is it going to be a Zabal if he has one of those units here? What could it be? Yeah, the interesting thing too is that Diligent didn't get worried as much about this Han hitting the table because the TN Lang counters it so well. Now the Angiguki comes out and the monster that was missing from the first match that we talked about, Cigar, I think that is a great pick for this matchup. The question right now is the Pontos being locked in is an amazing pick, right? Not only the speed... Oh! He wants a faster correct, speed lead. Correct. Diligent needed to lock in a second speed lead here because I do think Water Ryu, if, if there was no speed lead being locked in there, Water Ryu was going to be the ban there because mm -hmm. he needed to get rid of the speed lead because then Lufia gets exactly what he was looking for. And that was 33 speed lead. He has his uh, Han there as well to combo up with the Dako and Imusha. And then this last pick, I don't know what this last pick could be with Lufia here, but it's a good thing Diligent did lock in a second speed lead. You know what I will say, Stoic? Uh, I... I don't know. I think there's one small difference. The Wedge is not here for Diligent this time. So if he brings a very fast speed unit like the Wunsa, he might have a very interesting advantage. The question right now is, does he trust that he can outspeed by banning the Tian Lang, or does he think he needs to ban one of the reset units? To be honest with you, I think he needs to ban out that that Oliver. I think mm -hmm. the 33 speed lead's got to get banned out here. Luffy is confident in his speeds. That's why he laid down that wound. So he's saying, I am getting turn one, but he can't let him have the 33 speed lead. No matter what, Dilch is going to have a speed lead. And, you know, just, he bends just, the shot. Yeah, no. Like I said, one of the yeah. two, one of the two <laughs> resets was going home. We got it, and it makes sense. Into it, game number two. Diligent versus Lufia. Who will take the first turn with the Ben and the Wunsa? It is this very fast Water Ryu that gets all strips. That is so beautiful. He got all the strips in. 33 season by no surprise, but that is a very fast Water Ryu. Look at all the additional damage. Laura absolutely devastating the field there. And now he gets to look at the most volatile unit out there. And it could be the Cigar. It could be that Han. He goes for the Cigar to get the reset there. Tian Lang has got something to say. He goes with the big skill, too. Look at the stuns. Look at the additional damage. Diligent commanding this round two. Let me tell something. There is a chance this Han procs out, <gasps> and he does! Oh. I call that the caster scars. <laughs> Can you get a skill three with the death break opening up for the extra damage that this Omgiuki will bring? I think he can take Two monsters Whoa. off the field right now. It's a big he opening. Another, he needs to set up another defense break. We need to look at a defense break going out onto the lore. He needs to land it. He lands it. Dark onimusha has got something to say right now. We need to see units disappear. And Luffy can definitely keep himself in tournament. Oh, that damage. Lang gets dropped here. This is incredible because now he unleashes a couple of his units. The only problem is that the Oliver will have an option to reset right now. And he needs, he needs to reduce the attack bar. Gets the reduced attack bar. And with that, he saves the Laura. He's got to be careful. I, I think he wants to go with that skill too. Does get it. A resist goes out in the Dark Onibusha. What a big proc. That Brock might have locked in the match, but there's still a very important monster on his side. The Dark Onimusha. Can he land the attack break? Because this looks like a non-stunning unit. He doesn't land the attack break. It's a 2v2, and the Oliver right now has the reset. He can take away the attack bar stone. He's got to keep pumping away at that Cigar. Cigar needs to get dropped here. But now, my question is, is this a despair water Ryu? Okay? There's the damage. We've got the no attack break, obviously not just yet, but that's yeah. what he has to do here. Push back attack bar. Get the attack breaks on this Dark Musha. Keep this unit back here. It's going to be violent proc. He needs to see these defense breaks. Does land one of these defense breaks. He needs to keep up with the attack bar. Push back. Reset this unit. Do not let him have a second skill. And Dillinger will be able to hold him back here. Yeah, I think this is a swift Water Ryu. That's why he hit it without being too afraid of it. But there's a big chance of procs with the Yomgyuki. He needs a proc to kill right here. Does oh, and proc. He does not proc there. And look at that. He can just go with that big additional damage. And Dillinger's going to be shutting it down in round two. That was close. That was like the best situation for an Ongyuki to be drafted. He loves thriving in situations where there's lots of stuns prevalent there, Seppi. Yeah, I really liked this draft from Lufia. The only big difference that I saw was that reduction. The Oliver was actually super clutch, Stoic. So maybe instead of banning that Chunk Bung, if he had banned the Sto the 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 Oliver, that could have changed the whole match because he would have removed the Laura earlier and would have been a 3v2. Yep, yep, definitely right there. There was also another situation. Laura went for a skill too. 
and the resist came out with the Daku Nimusha did not get stunned. <laughs> I was going to point that he out. He could have been singing a whole nother song, <laughs> though, if that had happened. If it stunned Ongiuki so that he woke up to get additional attack power, that could have been a complete game changer. But yeah. unfortunately, he got that Nair res chance, and so he resed it and stayed awake. That's the one time when you actually relent when something doesn't get stunned there. Yeah, it was definitely a closer game. So I like the adaptation. Still, he didn't do what we suggested, you know, bruisery, taking more damage and recovering. But I do think he made Diligence a little bit uncomfortable because he had to change his whole strat. He made him nervous. But I, I think we're set up for a really, really exciting third match here, though, because Lufia, that was definitely not a shutout, okay? I get it. Lufia did lose that match here. He's down two matches, which is really, really scary. And this will do a lot to your nerves, though, especially when you're playing live here. But keep in mind, that was definitely not a shutout kind of style match there. Luffy he really did hold on. I think he can still speak and test here going up against Diligent, even though Diligent, we know how fast this unit is here. I think he has to take that Water Ryu away, though. Oh, yeah, and this is going to be the most important decision that Luffy is going to be making in this entire tournament because Diligent is sitting at match point right now. Yes, let's do this. Back to the pre bands of match number one. Imagine which Diligent looked very strong. He takes the Water Ryu, just like you said, Stoic. Goes back now to the Wedge but this time it's an early Chunkpunk. He said he sounds uncomfortable against the Chunkpunk. He got it banned, but now there's an option of stealing that Oliver for himself. Yeah, so I think he took that Chung Pung in that, uh, uh, I believe it was the second match there where Luffy had took that Water Ryu away from him. That Chung Pung was actually the next unit that Luffy mm -hmm. was going to be drafting in this area. So you can see Luffy had taken up his time here. He does know that maybe he wasn't expecting to see a Chung Pung get drafted by Diligent here. So Diligent, again, that's that homework man. He's really as prepared for this guy here. And we see the Bella. So I do like this high volatility Finally here. coming now, out. Now I can't help but see two more Daku units coming out here. Is it going to be the Wounds and the Daku Nimusha? But we have another speed lead getting locked in by Diligent. Stoic, I love that he's doing that, but I would have loved even more seeing a Juno and an Oliver. Another speed lead that applies to everything, and we know that the Juno is very strong against three of the monsters that are on the field right here, and it's very strong against the Wedge and Chunkman that hit the field. So he's probably doing that and guaranteeing that he gets, whoa, that he has a must ban. He goes all dark units after that Water Ryu. I had a feeling that was going to be happening there. Like I said, I was actually expecting to see the Dak Onimusha there, but the Dak Onimusha not coming through, and we ended up getting this Dak Monkey King here. So Dak Monkey King, this is one of those things where it's like, what did Luffy prepare here? Is this going to be something that's going to be wild and it's going to blow us all the way here? We'll find out because... That's an interesting pick. I really like this pick. I think he's comfortable, actually, against these four. He can even ban the last pick from Diligent. This might be his strongest draft. And the question right now is, is this Monkey King on Swift or Violent? We remember that it's a very high base speed unit. So just like the Laura, you can just run in on Violent and do it like that. But he has a Wunsa. So maybe the Wunsa will get banned. And then on the other side, probably the Volantis. Those are the, the two kind of like most sought out units that we see on the field right now. I really hope that Daku Nimusha is going to be tuned right behind both of these strippers mm -hmm. here. This Wunsa, this Water Ryu, and it's going to be tailing them right behind there. But I do think the Volantis is probably going to get banned out. I love those bands. They were kind of on the nose. But I think that this might be Lufia's strongest draft. If everything is very well tuned, like if we see the Bella, the monkey going in, two of the removal, then you have a little bit of death break for the Water Ryu to hit on, and then the Han can come in and clean up. The only problem is if by any chance, the Wedge at cuts between that combo. If a Wedge at takes a turn, the whole team takes a turn, Stoic. That's right. Lufia really needs turn one here because this is going to be ride or die. Lufia needs to take this match here so he doesn't get thrilled by Diligent here. But let's find out. We have a very fast Fire Monkey King prepared. I like that. He has to go for the stun. Does he get it? No! Oh, no way. He does not get the stun. Chung Pung's got a second skill available right here. Doesn't get full team strip here, but Water is going to be coming anyways. Big skill, too. No despair. So can't tell if that's built up despair or swift just yet, but a lot of note fix can hit the field as well. Vanessa primed and ready to potentially get rid of that Bella. Oh, oh that is a lot of damage. So he needs a proc. Doesn't get it. This Han will leave the field, and our favorite is looking very, very strong after the Dark Monkey King didn't capitalize on the stun. Attack bar reduction, almost finishing this Water Ryu that will leave the field, and it will be only one monster. The Dark Monkey King, Diligent, takes it, 3-0. Diligent with the statement match to start out the World Finals of SWC 2023. A dominant 3-0 against Lufia. Diligent is the first to move forward to the semifinals. Stoic, what'd you think of that last match? I mean, I, I, I never ever want to say like I had a feeling this was going to happen here, but I think Lufia really did. He gave it his all there. 
go up against an absolute monster like Diligent. We know how fast Diligent is, and he proves it every single time. You get into these matches, and it's just wild to see how well tuned he is, how fast these units are, and how well his drafts are. The drafts have been just so clean. And you know it's a clean draft when your last pick is like, yeah, I can't, I can't. You just got to ban that last pick there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I did like the drafts as they progressed. I think that Lufia got a little bit stronger and more careful. The only problem was the rune quality different. He always got cut in between his monsters, and there was maybe one monster that is kind of like a very interesting pick into units that are just way faster than you whenever you're going to be disrupted that we didn't see here today yet, which is Hagen. I would have loved a Hagen from Lufia's side because he was very afraid of the Volantis, banned in a couple times. He had the Chungpung against him also, so a Hagen would have been very disruptive and making sure that he could just push attack bars and get his whole combo off. I was expecting a Hagen to come out in that second round or that, you know, the third round too when that Volantis was showing up, but like, you know, he didn't really get the opportunity. He went full dark on that last one too, which I thought was an admirable shift. I liked seeing getting max value out of that 30% speed lead from Han. Fortunately though, it just wasn't enough to keep up with Diligent there, Stone. Yeah, I do think that's why we didn't see a Hagen there because he does have probably like the way that he likes to tune his box there and that's why you know the draft came out that way because when we saw that dark that dark monkey king hit the field there I said we really want to see that Wunsa in front of that unit and we want that dark monkey king to be very very fast and what happened it was the it first was the unit on the king. field so that took well, the yeah. turn we knew it's a very fast unit there but if it, we saw that Wunsa and we saw that dark monkey king capitalize off we saw that combination happen you know we could have had a Lufia win we would wouldn't game would would have went into a game four and here's the highlights from that set that we just saw before, that dominant 3-0 from Diligent, showing why he is the favorite to take home the whole thing today. And this is the round where I, I say those were expeditious procs. I have to say Diligent already showed that he had won that game, and the proc from Masha there was just the icing on the cake to get us through it a little faster there. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah, totally agree. First match was very dominant. The second one uh, was very close, right, Stoic? It didn't look as close, but it was a very interesting match in which anything could have changed. The Amgyuki was always one step away from soloing. Yep, yeah, you're right. I mean, the second we saw that skill too, yeah, so this was, uh, oh no, this was that beautiful That was the time when like, Diligent was started sweating, Stoic, yeah. because Definitely. he saw the stun land on the Amgyuki and he was like, oh no, what have I done? Yep, that's right. I mean, Look at and that then damage. When Laura went out with that skill too, I was like, this is this is Luffy's chance there. Skill mm. two, 100%. That's going to stun that Daku Nimusha, and it just didn't happen. Yeah, if you see the attack bar on the Han going next, but that beautiful skill from the Oliver, reducing it to make sure that the Laura was going to survive, wow. and she got a proc and changed the whole game. So Oliver, you know what? The MVP of this match. Yep. Honestly, the proc, in my opinion, super relevant, whether he killed mm -hmm. the Han or not, because mm -hmm. I think with the Han drops, it was all yeah. about that Dakini Musha. If that Dakini Musha would have got stunned, we would have seen Oliver mm -hmm. dead, we would have seen Laura dead, and it would have just been that Water Ryu, and I think it would have been in a little bit of trouble, because he would have had to give attention to that uh, uh, the mm -hmm. cigar that still would have been alive at that time. Very good point. Very good points there. Right, and I saw that moment too. You you mentioned during the game, Seppi, that Moore very confidently attacked mm -hmm. the Ongyuki when he had the opportunity, which is telling that it's not on despair. Exactly. I think you prepare that perfectly. We see a lot of people still using the the more in either despair or violent, but more of these players have been using it in Swift because one, it guarantees that you don't stun anything, and the additional damage with the speed is crazy especially when you have such quick runes like Diligent does. What a first set to start out the bracket today. Again, Diligent is the first to move forward to the semifinals. We're going to find out who's going to meet him from the next pool of players in Lest and Takuzo. So Stoic, who do you favor here between the previous world champion Lest and the caster turned player Takuzo. I mean this this is a really really cool match I and mean, we were talking about a, a previous Summoner's War champion in Lest, someone who has just done so uh, like t tournaments is, is his realm. This is where Lest is just super familiar with. He plays lots of tournaments. This guy knows what to do here but Takuzo he has been casting lots of tournaments. This man knows the game so so well. I can't help but sit here and think like Takuzo if there was anybody out there he he can take down less though because he's got the brain power. He knows what he's doing. He's got that experience as well. Maybe not all that experience playing out here, but casting out here though he has. Yeah, the way we describe this, Evan, it just sounds like one of those extremely cool anime rivalries. You know, oh, yeah. the caster turn player, the guy that knows the strategy, really has studied the game and now he finally has his shot and then the other one, you know, the seasoned champ the one that is the favorite in this matchup, but we might be surprised.
我係 l e s t e r 其實個名都隨便改，有冇特別原因？咁肯定好開心啦，可以唔使錢又太過。最困難啊，其實都冇乜噶啦，冇抽到逼 V 已經好好噶啦，我覺得。太過喎，想睇下象嘅，不過聽講就睇唔到噶啦。大家加油咯！盡量唔好亂嚟啦，冷靜少少咯。Knows it's less, but certainly not least the previous world champion. Man, here he comes. Les, just happy that he doesn't have to fight Big V there, Seppi. Yeah, Evan, let's talk about something. We know we're not supposed to have favorites in here, but <laughs> all of you have been seeing me calling his name for a long time. He's been here before. People didn't believe he could make it back again, but he has a lot of unconventional picks, plays somewhat slow sometimes, pocket monsters that no one used, and even in the year that he won, he brought in Bellajul and Pra that no one was using. So we see right here the double pioneer, double art master. What do you expect to see from last today, Stoic? I expect to see that cigar. Lots and lots of cigar. Mm -hmm. We're definitely going to be getting a 33 speed lead, locking that in here. He's only showing a Chiwu here, but he played a lot of Chiwu before. And it was Chiwu cigar. That's that 24 speed lead. He doesn't choose to lock in that water Ryu. He goes with that instead. I right. Chiwu has been phenomenal. It's all that glancing that's been yeah. applying to the field here. It's been a very, very consistent unit for Les. He's been doing this throughout most of the, most of the seasons, but then also like the legendary tournaments into um, potentially even last year. I can't remember if we saw the, the, the Chiwu last year or not. Yeah, and let's not forget that his opponent also has something to say about that, right, Evan? Yeah, that's right. Takuzo, Takuzo, cast return player who's played the most matches out of anybody here today. Played the most sets in all these tournaments at 27 today. Very, very good. Let's hear a little bit about Takuzo. え、台湾に一緒にいたメンバーと、あと応援してくださった皆さんの力が本当に力になりました。え、自分らしく戦うことです。え、お互いベストを尽くしましょう。Welcome to the stage, Takuzo! Stoic, I think we've uh, fallen in love with Takuzo's play style and also his history with SWC. Yeah, we, we really have. I'm a big, big fan of this guy. I mean, him think similar as well. He is unwilling to give up, and I too am very unwilling to give up in my RTA matches. We see it all the time. Yeah, right. It, so it sounds like you give up like four turns in, but yes, sure. <laughs> Another thing we all love about Takuzo is that he said being true to oneself, to his own style, and this is what we see here. Very aggressive, turn one, the speed leads, the Etna, the Yanhong with very high base speeds, the incredible Jameer that we haven't seen today, and Stoic, a very well-known monster of yours, Nikki. 
Yep, that's right. I mean, so I one of the biggest things when it comes to people who play Jemire, they base their comps around Jemire a whole lot. You gotta be careful with this because a lot of things are very, very predictable. So you know the speed lead coming through, secondary speed lead, Jemire, we know what's happening here. So a lot of the time when you see the Jemire hit the full, uh, hit the field, it can't help be like one of those moments where the writing is on the wall. They know what you're trying to do and then they can draft accordingly like that. So being unpredictable, I think it is very, very important when it comes to, to the draft here because you can't let your opponent predict and draft accordingly. So he's gotta be careful with that. In my opinion, uh, I think Jemire still is a great unit. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, rose in popularity after seeing a, a rise in the pick rate of monsters that increase cooldown time. Exactly, Evan, and the thing is his opponent loves the Cigar and the Chunk Bunk, so the Jamire might be a very interesting unit to pick here. There's another thing that we didn't talk about when Les came up, which is why the Chiwu is so strong in his comp, is because he has a Kitian de Shang, a Light Monkey King, and those two units thrive together. So very careful, will we see a Takuzo going for turn one and trying to remove units or a more reactive play style to the less control. Let's find out. We're going into the pick fan phase of match two. Lest versus Takuzo. Here we go. Lest versus Takuzo. Our very first match right here. Pre-bans getting locked in right now. The Nikki comes out and I love that because the Nikki is not only a unit that brings in that multi-hit, the attack buff, but also the clans, the healing, the sustain, which is very strong against the units that Les likes to pick. Also, a lot of people ruining her on 100% res, right, Stoic? Yeah, that's right. I mean, it happens all the time, especially with the rune quality. These players out here in this tournament, these guys have incredible rune quality. So they're able to run stuff on maximum resistance, high stats, defense through the roof, the attack powers through the roof. There's a crap ton of HP where you don't know where it came from. <laughs> very good point. I, I am surprised. I don't think these guys have any rune that doesn't have a max innate because they get at 36% crit rate <laughs> just from the innate. I need basically a whole rune to get that amount, and it's a four slot. <laughs> yeah. Look at the unit that uh, Les is already trying to prioritize here, the Cigar. This is really is one of those units that he bases a lot of his comps here. Cigar is just such a solid unit for Les. It's something that he chooses to lock in a lot here. And I'm, I'm curious if Tuxo is going to take advantage of this going to the next match and not letting him take that, or maybe even potentially pre-banning it next time, because this is a very, very solid unit that you see him take all the time. That's what I was going to say. So telling. One unit is in play. One unit in the pick ban phase already and it is so telling what he's trying to do seems like we have a small admin pause we'll get more details on that and as soon as it's over we'll get right back into the game but it is gonna have to be carried out at the same way that it started even if we have to restart the match so that means that both Vanessa and Nikki are gonna have to be pre bans again there Seppi yeah they will and the cigar will have to appear again right and I love to call him the better Okeanos it's a monster everybody's the better yeah. Okeanos yeah, these yeah, days hey, right. hey, hey. <laughs> what other unit strips and resets that does that only well, Okeanos and, and segment and Chung Pung and you know strip hey, hey, hey. and then a reset. You no, know? no, no, no. But that's two skills in Doesn't the same matter. skill. You are wrong. better Okeanos. <laughs> Every unit is the better Okeanos <laughs> no, at this no, point no, today. No. Although actually, I'm a big. I shouldn't say that. I'm a big believer in Okeanos. Actually, yeah. I I really like him. Actually, another comparable comparable unit. Strip into lockdown. Veronica. Joe Gun too. He puts a unit in what? a scroll. Puts a unit in a scroll. It's the same thing as increasing their cooldown time. They're not even there. Just let him have it. Seth. Just let him have it. <laughs> what was the one that I said earlier? Oh, don't, yes, I, I the chat it. will take care the of it. <laughs> Heat him up, chat. The main point is that Okeanos has fallen a little bit from grace. I'd like to see a return for him, Seppi. You know what? And we, funnily enough, we saw him in the America's Prelim. It's that thing, like Stoic likes to say, there's monsters. They, they just... Regional monsters. Exactly. They yep. just have that identity. It's like whenever we went to uh, the, the very interesting, was it the Chinese qualifiers, we saw a lot of Gany. And Ganny disappeared. We haven't seen him since. Regional Interestingly favorites. enough, these reg regional monsters have the color of the region, right? Okay, oh, oh, red. Oh, wait, wait. Oh. I'm confused. So that tells me that tells me one thing is that the cigar was probably an accident, and likely the reason for the pause in the beginning. It was probably an accidental lock-in, and they needed to redo it. And the judges have said that it was a technical issue that got it locked in there. Probably. The we called an audible. I didn't know we could do that. <laughs> the, the, the interesting thing is seeing this monster that didn't have a speed lead and now does. So a big surprise, the big first surprise of the day, Stoic. Yep, that is quite interesting. So uh, we got an Oliver, we got a Wateru getting locked in here uh, by Takuzo. We've double speed lead already locked in here. Chandra, of course, having that 24 speed lead here for less. I'm curious to see, are we going to catch a uh, Cigar here? Or did Cigar get a second pre <laughs> 
Yeah, and, and the thing that I love to see is this Charlotte right here. One of the best attack bar reducers in the game also has a stun on the other skill. And then the segment, the high base speed, has that skill too that puts a lot of debuffs. So a lot of additional damage coming in from other monster right behind it can help. The Juno is a great counter to everything that's on the table, right? Yeah, the Juno is a great counter here, but I'm curious. Yes, we are. I was going to say, I think we're going to uh, uh, revert it here. Even though we locked in the double speed lead, we mm -hmm. had the, uh, the segment and the Charlotte and clearly showing less. Really wants that turn one. Takas just said, hey, I'm going to flip the switch. Goes Juno, goes Kaki, turn two. Yeah, and the interesting thing will be, does he pick a secondary speed lead or does he bring more sustain to the team? Because right now, it's everything on Chandra's shoulder and he does bring sustain. The Fang Gang! So Les is honestly doing the exact same thing here. We just went from like speed lead, turn one, and he goes, wait, I'm going to flip the switch too. We've got a Verde heal, probably triple revenge Verde. Let's be real. Of course, Feng Yen, excellent unit. It's got an incredible buff here. Very, very tough to remove off this field here. Tessarian, what a monster. El Presidente. The president is picked last right here. The monster that destroys all passives. Very interesting pick with the Oblivion, the Death Break. Right now, does that tell you that he leaves the Verde and the Feng on the field, or is this a bait? You can obviously ban the speed lead and just go for turn one, but it sounded like a bait. No, it was definitely a Tessarian ban there, having no no form of cleanse or mm. no, uh, 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 immunity to protect this unit from Tessarian. Tessarian had to be banned out here. But let's find out what's going to happen here as we get into our very first match here with Les and Takas of Sekhmet kicking things off for us. The Sekhmet can go for this, Oliver. Hits the increased cool time, <laughs> and now no one stuns. Gets countered on top of it, and the Charlotte will have a field day. She can do skill three, and she's protected by the will, so not even the counter. Oh, she goes for the stun. Interesting choice. Didn't even get a stun there on top of that Oliver there. We got a yeah. little bit of protection. Got the hug coming out here from Chandra. Chandra with skills available with that third skill. Did he choose to use it? He's going to be holding on to it. Yeah, he tried to play it a little bit safer. He doesn't go for it. The first wow, he's keeps still countering. Water. Uh, this is going to be an interesting game for the Juno if this bird continues to counter. Oh, and Whoa, she says, I can counter right myself. Also Bird of Hill. on revenge. <laughs> it's going to be this, uh, this Juno with the double despair stun as well. Stripping that hug right off the shallow. But we got Curse the Beautiful that can go out. I feel like he's trying to hold on to that just because of this kinky. He wants to see that immunity removed off to get that defense break on that unit. I agree, but I think he got a little bit greedy because now this Charlotte. Oh, oh no. She rocks. Wow. That is crazy. No well, defense break's going to be landing there either. We've got Verdi Hill pumping a little bit of damage into that Juno. Curse the Beautiful coming out here. We got that defense break that he was looking for on top of that Kinky as well. Primed and ready. He has to get rid of this Water Ryu. Yeah, can he get a sleep right here? A sleep would be huge. Doesn't get it. The Juno survive one more turn to tell the tale. He can kill the Water Ryu right now and gets a lot of damage. Yeah, that's looking really good right now. Remove that unit from the field. It looks like Oliver's going to be gone here. we got to be careful with the Juno. Juno's looking really, really low as well. Second kill available. Does get that stun across the field here. More damage coming out. Does remove that Juno here. It's going to be the Kinky against everyone. And this Death Break, the saving of the skills might have won him the game, Stoic. He went greedy, he waited for it, and he killed this Kinky. Yeah, there you go. We got Les taking down Toxo in round one. Les already one point toward his second world championship title with a question mark at the end. Let's see if he can repeat it in the best of five. He needs to do that two more times against Takuzo in order to move on to the semifinals. Evan, what a nail biter. I love this kind of game. It looked like Takuzo had it on lock in the beginning there, but Les was just so patient, Stoic. Yep, yep, he really was. He was very, very patient with the skills, and that was well played there. So he felt very, very comfortable. Uh, Les did take. He took a lot of damage out there. So, you know, Takuzo still has a chance there. He put a, put a good, good little hurt on, on Les, but he did handle it really, really well there, and uh, he did his job. He didn't lose any of his units in that match. It's true. I'm happy to announce that we've reached our first accumulated viewership reward, so we can look forward to seeing three of those engraved scrolls as well as some Rainbow Mon in our inboxes after the show today. So thank you to everybody for watching already. Be sure to share the tournament with folks so that way we can add on to those accumulated viewership totals. And I can be one step closer towards a Devilmon. <laughs> thank you all to chat.
great first game from Leston Takuzo. Takuzo is probably not shook just yet. He has plenty of time to adjust to this here, Stoic. Yep, that's correct. I mean, this is not someone who's going to be shook. I, don't, I think he's going to be perfectly fine. He knows he's going up against an absolute monster less. Trust me, he does know that. He's been casting for this man for a really, really long time. But uh, I do think he's still going to be safe here. Very I'm very true. curious to see what he's going to be bringing to the table here because we didn't get to see any of that, like, uh, uh, that, that, that stuff that he does prepare here. We saw, our, you know, I think more counterplay coming out of Takuzo going into that match there. We're, we're about to go into match number two here in this set. Now, Seppi, another reason why Takuzo should still feel more than comfortable, he's played the most matches out of anybody at this tournament. We mentioned that briefly earlier when he came on stage, but 27. He's been behind before, Evan. Like you said, it. he's gotten so much experience this year that I don't think this is going to shake him at all. And now for game two, Stoic, let's see if Takuzo once again goes for that counter play style, which Lest also fell into. I love how both of them adapted, you know? It didn't feel like they just had these five monsters in their mind, and they did it. And this time we see two LD units getting pre-banned. Yep. If, if you pre-ban a Julian, does that tell you that you're going for a CC kind of more, you know, control -y strats? It, it tells me he just really doesn't want to go up against that, that Julian. Julian <laughs> is just a wild unit that you got to keep that thing pre-banned here. But no surprise seeing a Yanhong getting pre-banned out there. 33 speed lead coming through with the Vanessa, and we have another 33 speed lead hitting the table, and that is Oliver in Praha for less. The signature unit. You know, uh, he says, I've used Praha before she was cool. She's kind of like the Gio to you. <laughs> you know, the Oliver to Ooh. you. But no, he swaps again for the Chandra and the Charlotte, the Cha-Cha-Cha. The Cha-Cha-Cha double. Now the Etna comes out. Very high base speed unit. Maybe we'll see the response with the segment right there if Takuzo doesn't lock herself before. Yep, let's see what happens. 33 speed lead with Anetha and Shizuka. I really, really like the Shizuka because now he has to prepare for that unit here because Shizuka able to bring a lot of volatility to the table here if Les isn't going to be monitoring that unit. Yeah, but now the segment, one reset comes out. Does he bring the second reset with Cigar or does he wait and brings in more sustain? Juno comes out very strong against the replication of the effects from the Shizuka and strong as well against this Etna. Yep, here we go. Sekhmet, Juno getting locked in for less. Two more picks here for Toxo. Toxo, I want to see him use up this time. Take your time here. Prepare for this man because with a little bit of counterplay here, Juno hitting the field here. <gasps> and we get to see Water Ryu and Nikki hit the field for Takuzo. I really like this comp, Stoic, like we talked about. This is a monster that puts a tech buff, hits multiple times with very strong artifacts, cleanses and heals the team, so very balanced comp. And now, once again, Avert the Hill that is not in triple revenge. Apparently he's in quadruple or quintuple revenge because he revenged a lot on game number one. <laughs> also on a, a bajillion percent crit rate as well, critting on water units, absolutely no problem. Yeah. And he's like, no, that is not happening again. <laughs> we get the Avert Hill pre -band, uh, uh, banned out here, and we've got Nikki getting banned. We have a 33 speed lead coming out for Toxo. Let's see if Toxo's able to really take control here, take that turn one with the other and do something. Never mind. It's a very fast segment. But she misses! Ooh. She misses, and now there's a big opening. He can go for the stun. No! Resisted. And it's on Violent. Yeah, what a cruel mistress right there. Like <laughs> Resist that nonsense there. But we get a little bit of additional damage coming out here. Charlotte is looking a bit low, though. Yeah, he can go with the skill three this time. I prefer that, but the thing is, you will get all of these things in your head because there's a Shizuka right there, so the stun will end up playing against you. Right now, he has to choose do I do that? Well, oh, best there you of go. both worlds. I think that has to happen. I think he has to go with that third skill yeah. protect his unit, get soul protect across the table as well. We get lots of negative effects out here. Let's see what There's happens. There's one though. problem because then the segment still has her reset, so she can steal some stuff if he doesn't wow. get rid of units. Look at that damage. He has to kill. And he does get the kill right there. Big second skills coming out there. Strips absolutely mm -hmm. everything. Is that a Juno or a Rika on the field? Yeah. I see so many dots. That is insane. Curse of Beautiful goes out there. It's going to be dropping the Ethan. Ethan's going to be coming back here. More additional damage going to be pumped in from this Juno, of course. We got that second skill going back to protect that Ethna. Try to get another revive out there. Oh, oh! Great stun on the segment. The Ethna lands the death break. Now the Juno doesn't have the strip, so the Ethna won't have a chance to kill someone. Does he go for this Chandra and guarantees that he's done it? That's what I like. That's or does right. he. Go risk it and go for the segment just to go for the kill. Oh, he is going to be going for the kill. I really wanted to see that go out. Oh. It's not going to matter because he gets the additional turn there. More damage coming out on the Shiner, but there's a lot of low units here. We're going to see a water you drop to all these. Maybe. Does he drop? He does drop. He does drop. He needs a proc. No proc from the Etna. Man. The Vanessa will go down. And with this, once again, Lust takes 
number two, the game. Last with an incredible game number two, putting him ahead of Takuzo, two points. Man, that segment did her best to throw the game at the start there, Stoic. Uh, I mean, uh, that's it's exactly what we were saying. Like, it, usually when that happens, that uh, segment goes out there, doesn't get the third skill, and like the match is already lost here. But not in this situation. I feel like Les was just super safe. You know, he brought a lot of just uh, comfort and uh, uh, kept his team alive on the field. So well Extremely. done, Les. Really hold on. Because clearly this is a little bit better here for Takuzo from that first round, getting into that second round. He was able to take more units here. So we went from not taking any units first round, taking two units down. Now, do we go into a third round where Takuzo actually beats Les this time? I think it's definitely possible. Now, here's the thing. I, uh, Les, Les did a great job with extremely safe picks, Stoic. I think you said it's so right. Now, my MVPs of that game, I think the Juno really shone through for Les. But, Seppi, the Etna was also an MVP. She did her best to try to win that game for Takazo. <laughs> yeah, she did. She got some very important procs. She dealt a lot of damage and removed a couple units, but it yeah. wasn't enough, you know? The Juno... In the end, a fire unit was too difficult to remove. Yep. Oh, yes, sir. We're going into game number three. Lest versus Takuzo. Lest at game point. Let's see what happens, guys. Round number three. Pre-bands from last time. We got the Julianne and Yan Hong. They are now available. New pre-bands getting locked in right here as we get into this Potentially final round here with Les Takuzo looking to keep himself alive. I hope not, Stoic. I hope we have more games in it. And Takuzo has been so close. This matches haven't been one-sided at all. Go back to Vanessa Preben and then the Nikki Preben. Les has made a decision. He's not going to play against this occult girl today. Yep, that's right. Pre-bands locked in. Vanessa, Nikki are uh, going to be the pre-bands. We get into this round number three. Charlotte, is Charlotte really going to be the first pick from Les? This is incredible. If he does that, uh, I can feel that this is going to change things in the meta. People are going to still okay, uh, start okay. to prioritize like, that. Whoa. Still crazy. Yeah, yeah, well, a, yeah, I'm so... Uh, now, He's testing now, the I waters. Look, I just want to look at Les and just see, see his reactions. Like, like, what's going on? The guy, He's guy deep cold. in the tank. Oh, right now. it's a yeah, flash. That's deep. That's same deep. as round one. <laughs> okay. Ends up being All same right. as round one. Yeah, look at look at look over. You can see him looking over there. So I, I have a feeling that uh, that that. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. Takuzo that's, that's says two two can play this game. Yeah. I'm going to flash some LD units, but don't <laughs> forget to pick the units that you actually want to pick. The Oliver coming out, 33% speed lead and stealing the Verda Hill. Look at that, Stoic. Yep, makes sense there. Definitely see. Uh, well, I, is this a switch? I can't imagine this is a triple revenge for being drafted this early. In my opinion, this has to be one of those times where bo a, a player prepares two Verda heals, one on Swift, one on triple revenge. Uh, that's that's got to be the situation when you're going to be drafting it that early here and only seeing a Chandra. So we've got a Julianne. We've got a... Uh, a a segment getting locked in here. Um, turn one, I mean, Les, Les wants it. That's that's what that segment's saying. And we saw how fast that segment was with a 33 speed on the one side and a 24 on the other. Yeah, very, very fast. She outsped the Etna. The thing was that it was a violent Etna. This is probably a swift segment. And now finally the Julianne comes out. He brings two sources of oblivion, but there's only one passive. And now the Wusa with immunity protecting the team, and there's no strip he can pick double immunity and it's over oh there's your Bella Bella Jewel. Jewel. yeah it goes double immunity it. and it's over it's the only units that are going to be bringing three turn immunity both of them on the field right here for Lest. I, I think it's over Stoic. this is a great <laughs> draft this is a great draft uh, you just banned the yon hong and you hug yourself because yeah. you drafted amazingly well Yep, that, I mean, that's that's kind of what that is. I mean, this is this is why early strippers are really, really great to bring to the table here, like a Water Ryu, uh, you know, may, may, maybe not a Chung Pung as, as a first pick here, but that's exactly what the situation is. It's just oh. a total, utter lack of strippers right now. 33 speed lead coming out for uh, Toxo. Even if Toxo does take turn one, it's turn one to no avail. It's going to be immunity for days. Yeah, I'm very sad this happened because Takuzo had been drafting so well, but now I think Les got on his mind a little bit too much. The Verde Hill kept getting pre-banned, oh, sorry, banned, and he had to pick it himself, but the Verde didn't really fit this comp, right? Definitely, exactly. A little bit of poke damage is going to be coming out here. The shield's going to be holding up really, really strong. This, this immunity's going to be holding up really, really, <laughs> really strong. Yeah, once the skill to from this segment comes out, a lot of damage will be dealt, my friend. I hope he uses, I was gonna say, I really hope he just uses the third skill anyways. Just like, give him a shot, please. Because that, that's rough, man. 
I don't think anyone wants to give shots <laughs> over here. And now the death break comes in. The glancing on the bird. Oh, Double glancing. Can he kill another water unit? And it's a 4v3. Yep, there it is. I mean, he doesn't have to use that third skill. He can use the third skill. A little bit of poke damage is going to go out onto that Oliver. We got the third skill getting that reset there on the Hearn. So there's no clans. Nice proc, but it's going to be really difficult to climb this mountain, Stoic. A lot of damage, a lot of protection, and remembering that the Velojul hasn't used his skill three yet. Yep, well, there's that skill two going out with the initial turn happening right there. A little bit of damage coming towards the Tessarian. More damage probably going towards that Tessarian, taking advantage of that defense break. Third skill's happening right there. This is what we're talking about, you know, not having a stripper. We went from three turn immunity to getting three turn immunity. And look at this, primed and ready, violent proccing Wusa. Wusa already has third skill ready. He's got a second skill for more damage. Just what a safe draft from Les. Yeah, Les showing once again He's one of the strongest drafters in this tournament. And you know what? Takuzo had been doing a great job, but the experience shows up right here, right? He got in his mind. The former world champ with the second 3-0 of the day, Lest, moves forward to meet Diligent in the first round of the semifinals later today. Guys, that was just an incredible draft from Lest. He did a super good job. I think Takuzo did have a couple good rounds ahead of him before that third one, but it was a little bit of an overreaction to a single passive unit being drafted there, Seppi. Yeah, very difficult to face a player that strong like Lest, unfazed, and the biggest thing for all of us, I don't even call the next thing a match, it's a treat. We're gonna have the two world champs facing each other and who will come out on top. Totally, completely agree. So, Stoic, you also mentioned that it was a completely safe draft earlier. Immunity, always. You know, always he had yeah. immunity in his back pocket that he wasn't even popping. Well, that, that, like I said, that's what happens when you don't bring any strippers to the field here. And then, and then like, why Water Ryu is just such a great first pick. Uh, you know, for many reasons, Water Ryu is such a great first pick here. Uh, but it could have just been absolutely anything. If, if we had seen, like, two single target uh, uh, strippers out there, I think that could have been justified. I think we could have had a match been. and could have, you know, got something rolling there. But that was the exact results there. Not so much, like, uh, Diligent, what an incredible draft. It was kind of more like Diligent, what a credible like reaction to, to what Tigers forgot to bring there, and that was the strip. It's kind of like when you bring uh, no multi-hitting units and all single target, and someone drops a like. It's like, ah, what are you gonna do? There's not I, much you can do I about think that. I think I think Les did a really really good job there. Not only in in his preparation and bringing th bringing multiple stacks of immunity to compensate for what Takuzo was bringing there. But also, I think that he really well managed what Takuzo brought in the field. Currently, I love the moment where he used his segment to reset the hurt, so that way he didn't have uh, the, the, the cleanse there, Seth. Very good note, Evan. He's not playing any games. Well, only one game, Summoner's War, and very seriously, he didn't give any shots, you know? Like you said, maybe he could have used a couple of immunities in there so someone could proc out, but he's like, I'm taking this very seriously. This game two might have been the closest thing Takuzo had to a win, right, Stoic? He really did. He went from that first round to not really killing anything, the second round to actually killing some stuff there. Takuzo showing that he's able to, you know, contend with, contend with less, but then just like the turn for the worst, to be honest with you, going into that round, just not bringing any strips there, not bringing, uh, you know, a great enough comp. Um, like, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe like some nerves kicked in there where he kind of lost himself there and was a little bit of reactive to, to what Les did to the table here. And just Les dropping in the Veladrol in that boost. The fact that he even had the Veladrol ruined up and prepared <laughs> really does blow me away, though. But hey, congratulations on Les. He's going to be moving forward. He's going to be playing one of the toughest opponents you will see Les play today. So we got it, guys. The matchup between the two previous world champs in the semifinals. Only one of them is going to move forward, and it's going to be crazy to see that go down. I got to tell you guys, looking back at those games, something that I absolutely love about having these players here in person is that you get to see their reactions to things live. Did you guys see Les Faced when he took the first kill in that game? He sat back and realized that he had won the game. It was really, it was really something. This next match, True Whale versus Sarah, and True Whale is another one of the favorites today, Seppi. Totally agree, Evan. The America's Cup champ. Very high rune quality, extensed monster box, but the big thing is, what does he have to say about himself? Okay, the true meaning of my in-game name, True Well. Um, I spent a good amount of money in this game, uh, so basically I called myself True Will. Uh, 
Uh, it was a great feeling. Uh, my first time making the World Finals. Uh, it was even a greater feeling when I made World Finals the second time. My strong point is my flexibility uh, in my draft skills uh, with the advantage of my rune sets and monster box. Uh, so my first opponent is Zara. Um, good luck and have fun. Champion, True Whale, coming to the stage. He's uh, one of my favorites to win today. Seppi, do you agree? Yeah, I agree with you, Evan. Uh, out of the eight players, we have two of the favorites that already confirmed that by winning 3-0, and this is probably the one, you know, right next to them. He's not only an America's Cup champion, he's been here before, and he's a legend tournament champion. Yeah, True Whale is one of the folks here who's looking to round out his collection of titles available in Summoner's War. He's got the legend title, America's Cup champ, and now he's after the champion of World Stoic. We've seen drafts similar to this. He's playing very much, he's drafting very much in the meta of the tournaments this season. Yep, that's right. I mean, anybody who has a lore in Wajet, you're going to see some of the similar units going to be popping out there, though. But do keep in mind, like, True Whale has so much more than that. I know that Wajet, and I know that lore is going to be, like, center stage for like a lot of these things a lot of these players that do have that stuff here and then of course the stuff that just dresses it so so well uh, but do keep in mind if he does choose to go and be very original with his draft he has that ability there's just so many things in there things that we don't even know about just hiding in there ready to come out there to the to the swc stage will we see them i think it'll depend on how well he is prepared for a specific player oh yeah let's see if he's prepared for his opponent sarah สวัสดีครับชื่อแซนนะครับในเกมชื่อเซล่าครับผมชื่อความหมายของชื่อจริงๆไม่ได้มีนะก็ตั้งขึ้นมาเฉยๆแล้วก็ใช้มาตลอดเลยครับรู้สึกยังไงบ้างที่ได้เข้ารอบเวิร์ลไฟนอลก็รู้สึกตื่นเต้นนะครับก็จริงๆมันเป็นความสนุกด้วยมันเป็นความท้าทายของเราว่าครั้งหนึ่งเราได้เข้าเวิร์ลไฟนอลเนาะอยากให้ได้แชมป์ด้วยคิดว่าจุดแข่งของเราคืออะไรผมว่าผมสามารถเล่นได้หลากหลายแบบครับสู้ได้ทุกทีมเลยอย่างนี้แล้วแข่งที่น่าจับตามองที่สุดจริงๆผมว่าทุกคนน่ากลัวหมดแต่ที่ผมจับตามองที่สุดก็คือทรูเวลที่เจอกันรอบแรกครับผมก็ทำให้เกมมันสนุกแล้วกันครับเกมนี้เป็นเกมที่ไม่ปกติมากนะครับเกมนี้เป็นเกมที่ไม่ปกติมากนะครับเกมนี้เป็นเกมที่ไม่ปกติมากนะครับเกมนี้เป็นเกมที่ไม่ปกติมากนะครับเกมนี้เป็นเกมที่ไม่ปกติมากนะครับเกมนี้เป็นเกมที่ไม่ปกติมากนะครับเกมนี้เป็นเกมที่ไม่ปกติมากนะครับเกมนี้เป็นเกมที่ไม่ปกติมากนะครับเกมนี้เป็นเกมที่ไม่ปกติมากนะครับเกมนี้เป็นเกมที่ไม่ปกติมากนะครับเกมนี้เป็นเกมที่ไม่ปกติมากนะครับเกมนี้เป็นเกมที่ไม่ปกติมากนะครับเกมนี้เป็นเกมที่ไม่ปกติมากนะครับเกมนี้เป็นเกมที่ไม่ปกติมากนะ Is that enough? And the preparation that he said that he did for beating True Whale. Oh, you know it, man. By far, the biggest support that he has right now is that crowd here today. And that will really help anything that he's going to be doing today. Even if he makes the wrong decision, it's going to feel like the right decision. But we'll find out later on here. Uh, Bella is quite interesting. I'm curious if we're going to be seeing some Bella action. And then the Raccoonie. There's a little bit of Raccoonie action. Might be coming to the table. Yeah. If we see the Raccoonie and the Miles, both 5-0, two units out of the Holy Trinity, right, Evan? That's right, yeah. I'd wager that we'd see a lot of them, especially considering when you look at the win rates. When both of those units were in play, yeah, no losses. No losses tallied for both Miles and Raccoonie, and I'm betting they've been picked together. They've been an icon for this season of RTA, working so well together. Raccoonie boosting speed and also adding a buff 
which works incredibly synergistically with Miles' passive there, Stoic. Yep. We'll see what happens. I'm very, very curious if, if Truel has prepared anything for that recruiting, knowing that is something that he might be re relying on to the table here. If you bring an extra uh, damage dealt on fire, you know, a lot of the units, anything that's going to be bringing like high volatility, high damage, does he have anything prepared for that? We'll find out, guys. Here we go. True Whale versus Zera in match three of the SWC World Finals. Here we go, pre-bands getting locked in right here in our very first match with Zera and True Whale. The big question is, Stoic, will we see True Whale picking very similarly to Diligent today? He has the same monsters, he likes to use a similar comp, or did he prepare something different for Zera, right? Is he comfortable against those units and is just gonna have his play style? We can see that Zera did his homework and pre-bans the wet jet. Yeah, very, very clean pre-ban uh, 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 pre there. We almost knew that wet jet. It's the wet jet, the lore. It might even go back and forth, these two units pre-banning them back and forth here. But I do like that Truel opt to get rid of that 33 speed lead, getting rid of that Vanessa. Sagar being drafted by Zara. Those are two combo units, Vanessa, Sagar. We see that very, very often, uh, even on the ladder as well. So great pre-ban coming out of Truel. Sagar's going to be the first pick here. Truel looking to lock in two units as first picks here. Yeah, the water you already expected. The thing, too, is we know that the Laura is going to hit the field, but will Truel will try to get the Chunk Punk to replace the Sagar because he likes to have some source of increased cool time right there. That was cute. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> we saw a water you. Now we're going to see him more. So very interesting. And I can't help but think like one Swift, one's a spare. I don't know. There's going to be something like that. But he opted to go with the more over the water Ryu. To be honest, I'm pretty sure the water Ryu was Swift in the America's Cup, but I don't know if it changed from there. Maybe he's like playing mind games with people. That's some serious mind games, to be honest with you. We've got Chandra, we've got Tian Lang getting dropped by Zara, we've got a Chung Pong and a Sekhmet being drafted by True Whale. True Whale still looking for that turn one with two very, very fast units. Laura, Sekhmet, let's see what Zara's gonna do to respond to the speed that True Whale has dropped on the field. Yeah, we talked about that, and I love the Camilla coming out. Very strong in the meta, the Vanessa's not there by her side, but the Juno is there, and it's also a strong unit against this. Will we see a secondary speed lead right here, or does he bring some type of sustain. I don't think Truel is in a position where he needs to draft that secondary speed lead. Zara has backed off. He's got uh, Tian Lang, Camilla, Juno. He doesn't care about the secondary speed lead, so he's not going to mm. be bringing in there. Masha, high volatility. You know that Juno is going to be let through because he's going to try and pump yeah. it with that Masha right there. Does that tell you this is a Camilla ban? He doesn't want to deal with that monster. It's very difficult, or he can also remove the high volatility unit that is the Tian Lang because there's a lot of attack bar gain. Yeah, I believe that is going to be a Camilla ban. I think that's too high high volatility like you said mm -hmm. there it's going to be very very tough for Truebill to get rid of so if there wasn't a Camilla in there I think that goes that goes rest to, to it goes to True Whale's comp here and he has the ability to take units out and not have to worry about anything Camilla stops that yeah yeah that was kind of like a very telling sign once he picked the Masha and the segment is taken out on the other side so the fastest unit is not on the field Zara wants to take turn one but this is a very fast more. And that is a very fast more. Probably Swift with that Laura going right up next to it as well. Keep in mind, there is no immunity on the side of Zara right now. This is going to be a lot of damage. Those artifacts hit very hard. Look wow. at that HP she oh, gets up, Rock. It's, it's built on violent. That is a very, very fast Laura. And no stuns, but only a slow is going to be landing on top of that TN lane. We have serious matter that's going to hit the field right here, looking to push back any attack bar. Anybody going to be resisting? So much additional damage. He can drop absolutely anything. Could be the Juno, could be the TN lane. Let's see what he goes for. Does go for the Juno, drops that unit here. He's primed and ready to throw an attack break. He's just going to bring more damage to the field. Look at that. Laura is going to be going next. He gets all of the attack bar stoic. It's so strong. With the Masha right now, he can even try to remove this monster off the wow. field. And to finish the job, the Chong Pong. Very dominating game number one from True Will. That is the most dominant that we've seen it yet. So this is a great third skill he can get. Keep in mind, this is Glance, though. Does not get the strip reset on top of that Masha. He needed absolutely anything to keep himself into the game, but it's just too far off right now. True Will just too healthy, and he's just lost too many units so quickly. The sleep, everything else is just, just insults at this point. Oh my god. Look at the damage from this, Laura. Now the more. Boom, 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 3.9K per hit on top of that death break. Drew Will taking game number one. And what a statement that game number one was. True Whale with a dominant performance. His entire team took at least two turns before Zara got his first move there, Seppi. Oh my god, what a very well-tuned comp. And the most impressive thing is what Stoic said. 
This is not a Swift Laura. It's a Vile Laura playing so closely Insane. to a Swift more. Well, it justifies putting the crazy rune quality on that unit because Laura is that good. It did receive that nerf, and it's it's less consistent when it comes to trying to get the strips onto the field here. But in the position where Water Ryu got all the strips anyways, so <laughs> it doesn't matter too much. You just get a ton of additional damage coming out of that Laura, and it was absolutely insane. Now, let's just keep in mind, that was a lot of turns that Truo got to take, and there wasn't a Wajet that is now on the field. That's a really and good that point. that is what is going to happen. If a Wajet were, was on the field, you take even more turns. Those were natural scarier. turns with the occasional proc in there. Adding a Wajet into the mix just makes it way scarier. So Zara's really got his work cut out for him in this next pick ban phase. I don't envy him going into round number two. Zara versus True Whale in match three. And we've been seeing something very interesting, Stoic, both diligent, and True Will have been spicing Amasha into this turn one comp to have some damage and guarantee they remove someone from the field. What do you think of that? A lot of the time you're seeing this Masha hit the field, it happens to be when that Juno's on the field. When Juno's mm -hmm. on the field, it's just like, what is that go-to unit that's going to be removing that unit from the field? It's it's Masha in response to the Juno. It's been mm. happening a lot. It happened uh, uh, in the previous regions as well. Uh, this is, this, is that really going to be the first pick from True Will? Uh, I wow. think it's a it's an important unit. If if he steals right now the cigar, that's going to be interesting. We know that the wedge jet will be available. We know he's comfortable. Oh, when a hay gang hits the field, now the Tian Lang on True Will's side becomes even more interesting. Yep, it really does. I mean, I am expecting to see a Tian Lang hit the field here for mm. True Will. Uh, no surprise seeing that water or the more the more he mm. likes the more and the Tian Lang could be hit the field. Specifically, I think that's a, more this that's time. A great take right now here. But keep in mind. So now that we have that Connell, we have that hay. He can go flip it, go turn two. We're going to see mm -hmm. some bruiser units. Camilla might come back to the field here. So that HP lead that that Fire and Bison does bring to the table makes your team extra thick. Yeah, the Camilla would be a great pick right here. Another turn one unit that kind of threatens that speed. But the thing is, the Etna was taken away. So True Will did his homework. He doesn't want to give too many options. Ooh. But wait, we got a surprise. Changing everything and bringing a Shizuka and another turn two unit. Yeah, Fire Puppeteer hitting the field here. Shizuka can be highly volatile, but keep in mind, Truel is kind of ready for seeing a Shizuka out here. We've got that Chung Punk, we have that Water Ryu, and he can drop in two more units. The Juno definitely states that he's letting that Shizuka through. That's a unit that he's going to be dealing with, and that's going to be a unit that if he doesn't let the Juno through, he's going to be resetting that unit anyway. So he's not, not too worried about the Shizuka. We know it's coming through. Yeah, we know he needed a double reset. He's still Ooh, thinking about look, look, it. Look, look at him, look at him, look at him. Yeah. I always look at I Every time that happens there, I go right to the cameras. Like, <laughs> What's happening, True? Does he look mad at that? Potentially. Uh, I don't know. I thought I saw a little bit of a head shake there. I think he preferred to see that uh, wind. Uh, the cigar? Uh, the, the, the cigar, because I agree with that. I think the cigar is a better pick than that, that segment. Yeah, and Zanizek comes out. The Dark Puppeteer is the one that has the very strong passive and gets immunity against attack bar decreasing effects. Yeah, definitely a troublesome unit there, but we'll see what happens here. Because look at this, we're all turn two right now. We're dropping a Fire Monkey King mm -hmm. in there. The Fire Monkey King's gonna be a problem, I think. Uh, I really, really like really the Fire Monkey King. The Fire Monkey yeah. King's not a problem anymore, so he's gonna be banning <laughs> that thing out there. Segment does get the ban, so even if that was a cigar, even if that was a segment, I think it doesn't matter too much. It was gonna get the ban mm -hmm. out there, so you know what, True Wilson, probably a little bit more comfortable knowing that's what happened. Yeah, it's a very good last pick. True Will doesn't want to go against it. Here we go. Can the more not get cut, but this Hay Gank. Oh. Reduces and doesn't because it gives attack bar to his dear friend Tian Lang that can now get a triple stun. Yeah, he can go for the stun. He can go for the defense break as well. Looks mm -hmm. like he's going to go directly Safe. after Hagen. Going to use that third skill instead of that second skill. Serious Matter is going to come out here. <gasps> Much resist, obviously, with the attack bar that's not going to be happening mm -hmm. because of the passive here of the fire Dak Puppeteer. I'm not even going to give a shot at that name. <laughs> and now the bomb goes on top of the monster that puts AOE death break in glancing. He doesn't want to deal with that. The Juno getting some damage on the Carno. Now he needs glancing and stuns, but stuns the one unit he doesn't want to stun. Yeah, he gets the glancing and the stun on top of the Juno. Juno does not care about that. I think we're going to see more despair stuns. He's going to go right into this uh, uh, Fire and Bison, and I think that's exactly what this Teen Link's going to be doing as well. So big skill, too. Gets a nice little stun right there, too. He needs a big proc with a Shizuka. This can change the match right now. Putting oh. bombs on the whole team, but doesn't get it. He continues to reduce the Juno. Now he can risk it or not, because if he stuns her, 
he can give her a speed buff. He doesn't risk it, goes for the Tian Lang, and now he has the opening of the game. If he doesn't kill the Sam Bison, ah, oh, that's too much damage. I almost think he has to go with the skill, too. I think that would have been really nice potential. Get that kill, any despair stuns, not going to happen out there. Now we get everything under the sun's going to be landing on the other side of the field. I'm sure Juno doesn't care too much about that, though. Yeah, he needs a lot of damage, and he's lacking some of it. You know, the Hagen doesn't contribute a lot. The only unit that dealt a lot of damage is gone. He does have some bombs and can see if he can bring a couple units down with it. Ooh, nice little resist there. He's going to be using that second skill to bring back Fire and Bison. Fire and Bison primed to red with the third skill. I think he has to use these skills right here. Going to try and get a full team stun here on top of True Will. True Will, the only unit gets stunned up again is going to be that Juno. Juno's going to be healing up the team. Yeah, that hurts so much because wow. the damage that the bomb dealt is now recovered. Is the passive up on that Water Ryu a little bit more mm -hmm. as well? We'll find out here when that bomb does go off here. A little bit of poke damage coming towards that Tian Lang. Tian Lang's going to be ready to get rid of this unit here. I think he's going to be going after. Oh, he goes after the Stock Puppet here instead of the Hate Game. Yeah, good stun on it. But the problem is, how do you get rid of this Juno later on? Even with water units, the Juno hits too hard. The skill one, the additional damage. The Chunk Punk finally gets his skill and... Now, there's still two turns for skill three from the Shizuka. Yeah, but that's a ton of damage right there. We've got a second skill happening right there, and that drops it. True Whale taking round number two. And what a comfortable round two it was, guys. True Whale looking absolutely confident up there. He is ready to move forward. Are we going to see another 3-0 in a match three oh at God. the finals? Yeah. That's unheard of. We yeah. might get three 3-0s three in a row. I want to compliment Zara, though, for being creative and bringing a couple of different units. Zenny you know, was a cool yeah. cool choice. It was really nice. You know, you got to wait for him to death the turn so that way he can remove the inability effects from the team, but I thought it was a nice little piece of tech against what yeah. could have been a lot of AoE stun potential. Yeah. So that was really cute. Yeah, exactly. I really did like the bombs out there. I thought it we were getting a little bit of value out there, but I think this is one of those situations where I would love, like, if you're going to do that, I would love to see the Shizuka come out, extra bomb damage, extra attack, power, extra attack. really exactly. capitalize on that. But keep in mind, there was some of those negative effects out there. I thought the Juno was in a perfect situation where it's like, yeah, he's going to be running with that strategy, but Juno didn't care one bit and ended oh. up playing as a great unit for, uh, uh, for True Will. Seppi, wasn't that just heartbreaking when you saw the Juno heal up the team and all that bomb damage was just gone? Yeah, it was gone, man. It was a great pick. And I think another important thing was the rune difference and the speed lead, right? We saw a more attacking into a hay gang and not getting cut. The whole team Wild. stayed behind. So we saw the difference in those attack bars. That was super, super key. So maybe next time he can try to get that speed lead to play closer and not guarantee. It's kind of going to help his team a little bit to cut in and disrupt the opponent. Let's see if Zara can disrupt True Whale in this third game. True Whale sitting at match point, ready to move forward to the semifinals. Let's get into it. Take it away, guys. Oh, here we go, guys. Match number three, Zara versus True Whale. Pre-bans from last time. That lore and the Athena are pre band They are now available to go in here. New pre-bans getting locked in right here. It is going to be the Wajet. We knew this unit was going to get the pre band And again, that Vanessa hitting the field for that combination. Vanessa Cigar. Let's see if that is going to be the first pick that Zara does choose to lock in. That Cigar. Very good point, Stoic. Now, will he try to steal the Water Ryu? You know, the Moor has been so strong for True Will. Yeah. He doesn't. He yeah. doesn't steal it. He goes for the Cigar. I think it's okay. Sometimes when you haven't used the unit a lot, you don't want to change your whole comp for it but it would have been very nice to take that comfort pick away from True Whale. Yeah, I mean, look at what True Whale's doing right now. I really do like the more over the water, Ryu, might mm -hmm. I add, and the Tian Lang. <laughs> I think the Tian Lang's too perfect that he does drop that in there, takes that away from Zara, not letting him have that unit here. And I mean, I'm very, very curious. I think this is where Zara brings something that we haven't seen today. This is where we need to change things. This is in a 3-0 situation here. I think this is where you put a foot down here and you really bring something that True Whale's not prepared for. Very good point. Oh, yeah, and on, you asked for is, the max. This is what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about. 24 speed lead. Max a million. High volatility. <laughs> I like this unit a whole lot. Flashing the Zenisec. Oh, yeah. yeah. Got, he's got one of those things, too. He probably has even more with that. But I do like the Gianna. I think this is a great unit to be dropping into the field. Keep in mind that we've seen the Nemesis Gianna. This has been a very popular thing where Gianna has fallen down that tier list mm -hmm. where it's not one of those top tier units, so it's not holding those like crazy violent sets, those crazy swift sets. People have yeah. been putting this unit on a double Nem. It's crazy when something falls out of the meta where it goes, you're double Nem now. You know what I would love? A Heigang right now, so it's not a last pick Heigang by True Whale, forcing, keeping this segment with the outspeed. So a Heigang, and then, yes! There it is. He does it, and a speed lead. 
This is a very strong draft with Zara. Now he has damage. Now he has double speed lead. Now he guarantees that he has some disruption in here. The Juno is still a huge issue, but he has to choose right now. Do I ban the speed lead or do I ban the Juno? I think he has to ban out that Juno. Mm -hmm. He does ban out the Juno. Maximilian the speed lead, but of course we still have a Jemire speed lead coming to the table. Mm -hmm. uh, so 24 speed leads for both players here. Does Truel outspeed? Because more than likely we're expecting to see the second take yeah. turn one. Keep in mind, a potential nemesis Gianna. She looks slower. The question right now is does he reset the Cigar or the Gianna? Goes for the Gianna and hits it. And it looks like it's Nemesis because she gained attack bar. Yep, uh, it is a Nemesis Gianna. So let's see what happens with the skill two here. Ops to go with the skill one. So much damage coming at this Gianna. Is it going to be enough attack bar that he's going to gain? It doesn't no even way. matter. It's so crazy. Oh, uh, get the glancing right here, very important, but still reduces a lot of attack bar. Right now he has the one opening, but the segment goes ahead of the Jameer. This is actually really good for him because he can cleanse it, even if it's thrown. Yeah, has to go with the curse of beautiful. He's got to do it anyways. Obviously, the third skill is going to be popping out here, but he has to try and get more of that additional damage. Opt to go with the second skill anyways, but I feel like he had to go with the cleanse there because we've got a big skill too. Cigar is the unit that would be going next here, but it's going to get a ton of damage from this Tian Lang. Opt to go with just a skill one. He gets a little bit greedy. I do like the choice. He is one unit Resist. down and resisted. Hard wow. so much because now he can do it again. The one question is, can he finally hit it? It's like Cigar as a segment <laughs> with the Jemire here. We're going for number two here. Does he get? Oh, oh my oh God, God, resist no. it again. That's, Hit the death break, that's please. That's rough, man. Yeah, give him something. Yeah, he got the death break. Yeah, yeah, boy, we got some. Oh, no. I mean, no, that's great. We got the, yeah. uh, the despair stunts happening here, getting a little bit of grace coming back to you. We got mm -hmm. third skill, primed and ready. Chooses to go after the Jemire. Can the Jemire crit and kill? Almost. Lots Almost. of damage. Yeah, I do think he can take out that Chung Kong. He's got to stay focused on one of these units here because mm. we are in a position where you've got to take units out. Yeah, he keeps going for the Panda. Very well played. Now he can remove the Chung and then go for another unit. The Jameer is going to be super important. So any procs coming from him are going to be huge or a proc from the Cigar right now to get Whoa! skill three. Oh, he's trying to keep himself in this match. You're looking really good for Zera right now, really holding on here. And the Despair Stuns are going to be welcome if you can go after the segment and stop this unit here. Not going to happen, no. But we're going to get a little bit more attack break. I think you should spread the wealth here. we got the attack break sitting on top of the Jameer, but it looks like Drew wants to remove the Jameer from the field. The Jameer with the big proc, and now we'll have skill three. Can he provoke this segment to guarantee that the Jameer gets the skills back to his whole team? No, he guarantees the kill. But now, this is a big problem. There's an opening for the segment. She can even go skill three or skill two. She does it. Oh, no no stuns on the other side. The cleanse. Here. He has to cleanse himself here. This is really nice with third skill available. Looking for the reset on top of the TN lane. Gets a provoke on top of the no TN lane as well. We have a reset is available. I think he can take out a unit. That might be the option here to go for that. I think he has to, if he's going to take something out, uh, it, mm. I would have said to Jemire, but it looks like he needed to take a unit. He then. needs a stun. And Whoa! gets a stun from oh, no the way. Brock. Glancing. Glancing. Lang. We do have glancing out here, but it is going to be Ooh. enough there. Get yeah. that defense break. Drops the Jemire. Zara was really trying to hold on right there. Curse of Beautiful does land. No skills going to be available. Beautiful despair stun is going to be happening. Segment trying to get the attack break on top of this Hagen. A little bit of damage. We just need lots of despair stuns, lots of attack break. Get, this is really, really tough right there. Nothing you can do about it. True well. Taking down Zera in round three for a third 3-0. With a tense final game in that set, guys. True Whale moves forward. Another 3-0. Stoic, you called this was the third 3-0 of the day. This is unprecedented. This I I haven't seen this happen at the SWC World Finals before. No, it, this, it's wild. It's wild. You know, I was expecting to spend lots of time here in Bangkok, Thailand. Why are we making these tournaments so fast, Evan? <laughs> I have no idea, but True Whale is trying to get this done really quick, and that one was a nail-biter, Seppi. Evan, I'll tell you something. It is not a great day to be an underdog. No, all the not. favorites. It's all, not. <laughs> all the favorites are dominating. And this match, we got to give it to Zara. The draft was really strong. The way he played was incredible. He got a couple resists in there, but in the end, he was so close to beating the America's Cup champion, but he didn't have enough damage. The Hagen, even though a very important and interesting pick, kind of 
falls through, right? It doesn't offer a lot there in the end. You're praying for some of the stuns. And then the Tianlang brought out of the stun and finished a unit. Oh, yeah. And I got to give kudos to Zera, too, for playing it out. Even when he lost that Gianna early, I mean, those are the things. That's what comes with a double nemesis Gianna. You know, she comes with a little less HP, a little less survivability in lieu of hopefully getting that turn at the start. But he didn't tilt. He didn't leave, he played it out, and even towards the end when Hei Gang was the only one looking down the barrel of a Sekhmet and a Tian Lang, he stuck around to see if Hei Gang could pull it through. And he almost did. And so I'm glad I'm glad he stuck uh, stuck through it. We had a lot it. of despair stuns come out at the end right there, we and did. that was honestly what was like keeping him in that match there. If we had seen more despair stuns, you know, again, I love saying it, we might have been singing a different tune. Going into round number four, it would have been absolutely insane to see that there, but hey. You know, it, it was still a really, really good showing for Zara. He held his own there up against a monster like True Whale, and, and it was great. It was a great performance. It was awesome to see uh, the Thai representatives here. Totally. And you know, something that's really funny, the dichotomy of True Whale. Going into a tournament, True Whale tends to skew to the nervous side. You know, he's a little more anxious, and I know that there's a lot of weight in being one of the favorites. But then when he's actually up there playing the games, Man, he looked so confident. He looked like he was just resting easy there, Seppi. Yeah, one of the most consistent and secure pickers in the world. Look at this comp, guys. The turn one, so much damage. The Masha pick to counter the Juno like you talked about, Stoic. And finally, the Chung Bong that has been preferred instead of the Cigar. We've seen the opposite happen before, and now he has swapped back. I kind of like that, you know? Uh, maybe he changed some runes, put the best set on Chang Pung this time, and he's like, if anyone, everyone's picking Cigar, I'll have the other one with my best set, and I'll give him preference. Yeah, well, if we talk about players that are going to be playing a lot of Cigar here, uh, Big V, Lest, uh, uh, Diligence, um, I, I can't remember Pink Roy does play a lot of Cigar, but I do think he does play a lot of Cigar. I think he opts to play more Chung Pung than Cigar uh, just because of uh, uh, the players that he'll be encountering today. Even Lufia and Zara are also Cigar players, so very interesting change. We'll see right now if he keeps this consistency against other play styles, right? He knew that he was faster. He knew that he had the runes and the monster box. And an interesting thing was he started picking the Tian Lang a little bit earlier to avoid giving it away to his opponent. Yeah, and I think that was a great decision for, uh, 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 for, for Trubal to take the Tian Lang as early as it did. But I think one of the bigger things is I would have liked to see Zara take that watery or that more away from him because I feel yeah. like it was just such a problem unit where he was bringing so much additional damage. It was so fast. It really was like the, uh, the facilitator for a lot of True Whale's victories there. True Whale did a great job. Amazing pick ban phases, amazing execution, and so much tempo in that last game. And just like that, we've got three, three O's at our back, and we're at the south side of the bracket right now. We're about to watch Pink Roid versus Big V, two huge contenders to round out our quarterfinals there, Seppi. These are two of the most uh, favored players to win the whole thing. Yeah, this might be the first round's most unexpected game. We don't know what's going to happen. We'll finally get a 3-2. These two players definitely rune-wise and box-wise are way closer than the other matchups. And I don't think that even though Pinkroyd right here is one of the favorites to win the tournament between them, I don't think we have a clear, clear favorite. Both I agree. have won the regionals before. So we have a former America's Cup champion, current number two, and a two-time EU Cup champ in Pinkroyd. My name is Pink Void, and the name originated from Dark Void because I started the game and I named myself Dark Void. But it doesn't really have any meaning because I was like 14 years old. And then my god mate changed it to Pink Void because he wanted to tag after it and he thought Pink Void sounded better. My first impression after making it to the World Finals was being really happy to go on a trip again and to see all the players. Mm, my strengths are that I have a lot of experience in tournaments, I think. It's already my third time in the World Finals, so I think I've got a lot of experience to not get nervous. My message in the first match to Big V is just to have fun and enjoy the moment.
the Europe Cup champion, multiple time winner, Pink Roy's coming on the stage. Here he comes. One of the favorites to win the tournament today, Stone. A little bit extra in that Pink Roy up. I don't know if you heard that, but I, I think that's like another vote for Pink Roy if I, you know, if I hear, hear a name like that before. Oh yeah, I'm real <laughs> excited. He does have a ton of tournament experience there, Seppi. He's been on these stages multiple times now, and he's trying to see if this could be the one where he walks away with the title. Evan, as I like to call him, the Summoner's War Prodigy. Since he's a very young age, he's been in the big stage. He's been playing different play styles, learning a lot, and is probably one of the best counter pickers today. He's someone that is not afraid to change the strategy mid-draft and slap an Antares in your face, bring on a Leo, his super powerful Tian Lang, so for sure he has prepared something for Big V. The big question right now will be Stoic if he's going to try to outspeed a notoriously fast Big V or if he will play a more turn two reactive strategy. You know, I can't help but think that he's going to be playing turn two against Big V. Big V just known to be so, so fast. Multiple sets, 230 plus. This guy is an absolute animal that he's got to go up against. So I feel like speed contesting is probably not the idea. Unless, of course, you're looking at a draft where, you know, Big V not choosing to go with uh, turn one, but that's going to be really tough to not see coming out of this man right here. Hello 我的家人我的老婆的支持还有我游戏里的朋友的支持像来斯特像麦珍蒂就是我的符文比较好大家享受比赛吧 Last, 像Mike Dream Team。Here he comes to meet his opponent, it's Big V! If anybody can take down Pink Floyd, Big V can do it here, Stark. Yep, that's right, I mean, Big V, we've seen him perform so, so well. He is an America's Cup champion. He has been to this, sta uh, this kind of stage before. He's very, very experienced, he's a great drafter. Again, like he said it himself, he knows his rune quality is incredible. Oh yeah, he knows his way around a world tournament stage here, Seppi. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about his play style? It, it's a very unpredictable and varied play style, uh, Evan. I think that's what makes him so strong. He can flip the script on you super quickly. He has very fast units like we talked about, multiple swift sets, but he also has extremely powerful Vio units like the Nikki, like the Annabelle, the Cigar, and then some pocket picks, some LD units that we might see here today. The question is, will his Nikki ever get any type of reset <laughs> or debuff because she has been unbeaten, my friend. The 100% resist Nikki gave us a show at the America's Cup. Oh yeah, that res, it shows off for him more than it does for other players for sure. And something that definitely left an impression in all of us was the double occult girl. I'd have to say that double occult girl gameplay that he showed off at the America's Cup Stoic was actually some of my favorite, and we even did it on stream together it once. It was so inspirational that I tried doing it myself, and I wish I looked as good as Big <laughs> V did. Here we go, everybody. Pink Roid versus Big V, last game of the quarterfinals. We're getting into it right now. And here we go, guys. Pre-bands getting locked in right here for our very first match with Pink Roid versus Big V. Big V with the first pick. All I'm hoping, Stoic, is this is a very long 3-2. I want a lot of <laughs> gameplay from these two players. And right now, Pink Roid looking very secure and pre-banning the Laura. On Big V's side, the Hagen, he says, I don't want to be cut. I'm going turn one, and you're not going to stop me. What are we expecting? Is that that 
What are you, the Oliver, the Vanessa, which unit are we wanting to see? It's going to be a turn one unit. It could be like the cigar. There it is, mm -hmm. the cigar getting drafted by Big V. Locking that in here. Maybe not locking that in here. Oh, taking the Sean away from Pink Roid. Look at this man doing his homework. Taking away the Sean. Thinking about it, Pink Roid right now is like, wait, should I just take my deal on Lang this early? But no, Whoa. he steals the Chiwu and Escher. So he's saying, I'm going to play turn he's one. speed contest. Yeah, I know you are fast. I'm going to speed check you. I believe that's full commitment, though. There's no way that you're going to bring mm -hmm. the Escher and not off to go with a turn two. So we'll see what happens there. Moore's going to hit the field, locking in a 24 speed lead. The very fast segment's going to get locked in by Big V. Pink Roid, I do believe he's committed. He's going in for uh, a turn one competition. I would like to see an Aetna right here. If you're going turn one you need another unit that can guarantee you know a contest the kitian da sheng another very high base speed unit but generally built on bio so he'll need either some oh. speed lead at the end or something different but he goes with the julianne so yeah. damage sustain very good into everyone here but the sean you know the sean is really strong against the julianne still it is. Well, the Ethna's going to be taken by the other side of the field there, and we do get two speed leads locked in. Oliver and Moore are going to be the speed leads here. Obviously, there's the speed lead for Oliver, and we have very fast units here. Sekhmet, Ethna. We're looking at turn one, big V right now. That Julian does to me say that Pink Roy did opt to go for a turn two play style. Yeah, can I say something? I think right now he can't go back and pick a speed lead. I would love to see a Verda Hill, uh, you know, something very reactionary, different, or a Juno, that's great, and then Ben out that Sean. The Sean brings so much damage to the table. We know that the Aetna does the same. Oh, yes, he knows. Yes. Look at the smile. Where is it? I'm looking for that smile on Pink Roy. He loves drafting this unit here. Now, keep in mind, I believe this Antares is built with zero speed. Uh, who needs speed when you take turns all of the time? <laughs> who needs speed when you can have RNG? <laughs> yes, sir. The question right now is, does he remove the Sean or the Water Ryu? Those are probably the two units. Oh, look at that. Sean. He's like, nope, that's not happening. <laughs> he respects it, my friend. I love the respect. Right now, we will see, do the Etna and the segment go together, or do they get cut by the Escher? Here we oh, go. Perfect. They don't get cut. He's looking at a reset here, potentially going out onto that Escher, drop that. Or the, uh, the, the the Light Monkey King does land that reset as well. Primed and ready. We can go second skill. Drops the second skill, gets a couple defense breaks out there. Third skill, primed and ready. Goes right for that Escher. Looking for the stun there. Does get that stun as well. Additional damage popping out there. Gets one kill. Everyone's looking really low. What a great start coming out of Big V. I got to tell you something. This is speed check. Did not work for sure. And now he needs to guarantee some damage. Doesn't get the glancing oh, on Oliver, wow. and that might have been a big problem because now he can even reset the Julian. He goes for the attack bar, takes one out, and now resets the Julian. Yep. Very well done. Oof, man, oh. that's enough to drop that Julian right there. Big V looking so strong, taking round one away from Pink Roid. Uh, uh, if I could summarize this match number one into a phrase, it would be. Speed check failed. Yeah, speed check failed, yeah. Tried to pull him over for speeding. Didn't work, unfortunately. <laughs> He's like, I ain't stopping, Evan. <laughs> and that start looks so impressive from a distance. Looking at it mile high, it's like, wow, Pinkroyd Pink Roid actually was able to take down a unit super fast. Good for him. But unfortunately, Big V had the comeback units. That Oliver did wonders for him, Stone. Yeah, it really did. I mean, I, I didn't like, when I saw the Julian drop in there, I really didn't like the Julian. I feel like he had full commitment right there and needed to go with that there. Uh, you know, if we saw the Antares go through, you know, maybe Antares could have caused the absolute chaos there. We know how good that Antares is with uh, 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 Pink Roid. So maybe a first pick next time. First pick Antares. Going <laughs> that is quite the here. call we'll out. Oh, first God, pick no. Antares Please. is almost Please, like a no. first pick Douglas. Almost like a <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's a call out, but do we like the call out? I not a good idea. Out. Not a good idea. I do agree with the Julian being a little bit early, and we asked for that high base speed unit or the Etna, speed right? Yep. But but he didn't do that, so he led the Etna to his opponent. It's not only about you having it, but taking it away. But if he's not going to speed contest, he has a lot of options. We know that the Tian Lang is over there. We know he has very tanky runes. Maybe even the cigar. You know, it's a unit that generally is built on a lot of HP, a lot of defense. Yeah. So let's see if Pink Roy ad adapts to this game number two. And the interesting thing with Big V is that the Sean number one pick is so mysterious. It can let you go anywhere. It basically. can. It can go anywhere. He could yep. just be. He could be your damage. He could be your control. He mm -hmm. could kind of flex into either of those two play styles. He favors that start more than the other. But like he can easily transition into one of the other.
Also, Pinkroyd learned that the Etna and the Sekhmet play very close together, like you called out in that game there, Seppi. Here we go. Round two, Pinkroyd versus Big V. And let's get into it, guys. We've got our pre-bands from last time. Hagen and Laura are now available. New pre-bands getting locked in here. Keep in mind, Pinkroyd does have first pick. Very, very good point. The first pick might mean he's going to steal one of those speed leads, or he can take the cigar away. Yeah, either taking the cigar, maybe even lock it in the Sean. Let's see how bad that pink road wants that Sean. Maybe Tess takes that right here. Maybe even an Antares first pick. Yeah, just <laughs> throwing it out of there. Throwing it out there. Ooh, the Tian Lang wow. is pre banned and the Sekhmet is pre banned Now, does that mean I take the Etna away and I'm going to still play the speed game? Is he not satisfied? Let's see, Pinkroyd, is he going to opt to go with the turn one or not? It would be a speed lead if he does choose to go. Hey Gang is going to hit the field here. Now, with the Hey Gang first pick here, he's opt to go. He can go Bruiser, he can go turn two, and he kind of do whatever he wants here with that as the first pick. That's a very good point, Stoic. I love that pick because it gives him flexibility, and that's what he needs. You don't want to show your hand with a player like Big V, and he knows that you're speed contesting. He's going to check you, and you're not going to be able to go through. The Cigar shows up. The Laura that was pre banned now is on the field, and he knows he doesn't need to put that speed lead yet, and the Etna finally that we asked for her last match is being taken away by Pink Roy. Yep, definitely. Hasn't locked in a speed lead just yet, but he doesn't have to. In my opinion, no speed leads being shown by either one of these players right here. We don't even really need it at this point, but Ethna's going to get locked in there. This is going to be an Oliver. He does lock in a 33 speed lead here. So now, in my opinion, he's positioned to put, potentially put himself at a turn one play. Big V is going to respond and take his own speed lead here in this round. Yeah, do you think a Water Ryu might show here, or does he go with something a little bit different? The, the Vanessa coming out. Oh, Oh, a oh, little bit different. Good, yeah. The Sonia, very strong unit. She can definitely remove any of these units from the field. May maybe not the Oliver if it's very tanky, but the other ones so probably. We have a super fast team right now mm -hmm. because we already know how fast that Laura is and how fast that Cigar is as well. And that Sonya is hitting this table, and it's going to be a very fast unit. Pinkroid, he's giving up turn one. We've got Fire Monk King. We've got a Juno hitting the field, and I'm expecting to see maybe another speed lead coming out of Big V. You know what I was going to say? I would have loved, instead of that Juno, Arika. I think Arika would be super strong in this matchup, but the Juno does something similar. So we'll see if Big V goes with that or he brings more damage to the table because, he, like you said, he basically has turn one locked in. I, I think I'd prefer to see the Connell. If he brought out like a Connell out there, mm -hmm. high volatility, stunning everything up, you have that option if you wanted to go with the HP lead, really tank up your units because right now Big V says, I'm bringing speed, I'm bringing damage. He wants to move yeah. something as soon as possible. Masha hit the field. Why? Juno. That <laughs> <laughs> Very good point. Uh, now there's an interesting option. Uh, he can remove the Sonya and guarantee he has some sort of comeback potential in here. But also, the Masha becomes a late game problem, right? It's not only about removing the Juno early. It's something that withstands a lot of damage. And Pig Roy says, I want turn one. Yep. He's going to be banning out that 33 speed lead. No speed. That's kind of why I thought a speed lead was going to be hitting the field with the big V. But, hey, that's not what happens here. 33 speed lead coming out of Pink Roy. Ethna is going to be taking turn one here, looking to control that Laura and that Sonya. Here we go. Skill number two lands the death break. Wow, she can go for the kill break. on the Sonya, and no. she's gone. There it is. So that's actually the way that Pink Roy really needed to stat this match. Your beautiful spare stun hitting the field on top of that Masha as well. Keep that unit controlled because it can bring a lot of damage out here. Skill two is going to be coming out here on top of the Masha, looking to get attack bar reset here. And defense break is going to be landing with the initial turn, looking for an early dismount. I really like Pink Roy's ban. Very, very strong. He guarantees he post bans the Sonia, and now lots of damage. Proc from the Masha. This might change the game. He can go for this Etna and try to at least reduce that attack bar, but the glancing is a problem, and she glances. Yeah, a little bit of damage coming through there. Not just enough there. Second skill looking to drop this uh, uh, Masha from the field. Needs to land the revokes on top of the Oliver to stop this unit from using any skills. Doesn't have any skills up anyways. Second skill needs to land any stuns across the board. Only the Etna is going to get stunned up. Very good point. Right now, the thing is, even if you manage to kill a couple units, how do you get rid of this Fire Monkey King? He has so much sustain. The death break, you know, the recovery. It's going to be a really hard 3-2 for Big V, and it looks like a tie. Yeah, like we said, that Fire Monkey King was definitely going to be a problem for him, and I really wish we saw uh, uh, additional speed lead coming out of Big V. I think Big V really wanted that when he had these two big units, like a Scar and a Laura, was not able to take advantage of those units there because Pink Lord got that early stat on him there. So defense break's going to be landing on top of that lore, and that's definitely going to be it for Big V. Yeah, Pink Roy looking very confident. Resist the reset, but it doesn't matter at this point because this Fire Monkey King is just unstoppable. The stacks, the damage, beautiful pick into that whole composition. And like you said, he guaranteed he had turn one. 
Yes, he did. Round two, going to Pinkroid this time. Pinkroid doing what was seemingly impossible and taking us to a 1-1 situation for the first time at the SWC 2023 World Finals with a great showing and an immaculate start and close to that round there, Seppi. One of the most important things that he did here, and we talked about, is he put a first pick in Gang that doesn't give you a lot of information, right? On Loved the first it. match, he slapped the Chiwu and the Eshir, and that told Big V what he was trying to do. And it was too hard to back off then. But right now, he kept his options open, and that paid off. Yep. So I really like the Masha. I had no problem with Masha being in the last pick for Big V to wrap up his draft there, but I do think it needed to be another speed lead, because I think if you're going to drop in those units, that Laura, that cigar, he said, hey, I need to go turn one. But he lost the speed lead. That got banned out there, and I think he really needed it. Yeah, that's All a right. good point. Or he could have banned the speed lead on the other side or the Etna, right? But I, I think he, he was thinking – uh, maybe he doesn't ban my speed lead. Maybe that's the only explanation. That, that could have been it. Maybe he thought something else was so threatening that yeah. it wouldn't make, you know, and unfortunately the Sonya ended up being a bit of a dead pick right at the start. Pinkroid was able to dispatch that so effectively right at the get-go, meaning putting, putting uh, Big V at a three to four monster deficit right on turn one yeah. there, Stoic. Well, that like, Sonya became a dead pick all just because he, just, he didn't take turn one. If yeah. he had taken turn one, he would have been able to exactly. utilize that Sonya, exactly. but he just didn't have it, man. And that that's kind of like why, like, yeah, the Masha wasn't terrible, but he wasn't able to, his comp was ruined. Sonya not being viable, the other two not being viable, but hey, we've got another round coming in here, round number three. And look at this beautiful stadium where SWC 2023 is happening right now, Stoic. What do you expect? Is Big V going back to the double speed lead? Turn one, I'm going to destroy you. Or is Pink Roy going to change his strat and not going turn one this time? Well, when you see Hey Gang and the Prey Band coming from Big mm -hmm. V, I can't help but look at that and say, this man wants to go turn one, not get interrupted yeah. here. So obviously, Laura's going to be one of the units that it will be banned out by Pink Roy because it's one of those high volatility turn one units because he knows Big V 100% is going to be going turn one here. So Sean, once again, being drafted by Big V. I love what Pink Roy's doing right yeah. here. We got the Vanessa, we've got the Cigar, taking those units away from Big V. I think this is excellent play. If you're going to speed contest, start taking those units. That is two units that, honestly, I could have seen Big V taking those right here in this situation right now if Pink Red had went a different route. Very good point, Stoic, and reminding players, younger players at home that don't have a lot of experience, the Cigar is so strong in here because he brings that attack bar reduction, the reset, the beneficial effect removal, and the Vanessa, the 33% speed lead with the revive, the death break, also a strip. Right now, Big V taking away that Chiwu is very interesting. Does that tell Pink Roy, you can go with a Netna because now I have two fire units? I think he goes into the turn one unit and mm -hmm. another speed lead as well. I mean, uh, I, and then the Juno, interesting. I mean, the, like I said, Juno's not bad. It also is showing that he can turn things around here and go <gasps> turn two, and he is going to be doing that. I the Juno, the Camilla hits the I field I like here. the Camilla. You know what? When the Camilla hits the field, because last time what he did was he went middle of the road. He got the Kitian de Sheng and the Julian, and that is a little bit more difficult. Right now, he went with two bruiser units, the Nikki coming out to heal block, very, very strong against these two units, also a lot of damage. We'll see if Pinkroy locks down a third bruiser unit at the end, and Big V Ooh. with a double occult girl. The Annabelle bringing the heal, the cleanse, the slow, the AOE death break. Very strong unit. Yep, so I do like this. Now, this is actually the big V that I was trying to emulate myself here. Where you, where you have that Chiwu, you have that segment able to reset and really control your, your your opponent here. And we do know how well that these two occult girls are tuned together and how well they're going to work together as well. So we'll see what happens when it comes to Pinkroid. Pinkroid is in a position where oh, <gasps> we're, we're going to be taking the very interesting pick. That tells you that he's probably going to bend one of the damage units. He doesn't care about the turn one. Is it the Sean? Is it the Nikki? Oh, the thing is, it's so much healing with the double Coke girl, yeah, right? I don't think he cares about the speed lead. She was going to be let through here. Uh -huh. Could be that Sekhmet to stop, you know, if he thinks that's going to be a problem for his Vanessa or his Cigar here. So I wouldn't be surprised, but it is, I think, the Sean or one of those occult girls. Yeah. It is be, it's the Sean. We agree. The Vanessa's been on the other side. He wants to guarantee that there's no revive, that he removes a unit, and they're done. Turn one will probably go to Big V, but let's see if this Camilla that has no skin, notably, can do something to Big V's comp. Oh, that is so sad. It's just the vanilla Camilla. <laughs> Here we go. 
Does he land it? The glancing might be important. He doesn't do it. He gets the damage. Do they land? The death oh, break comes man. in. It's a lot of defense breaks. It's going to be a lot here. of damage. A we'll lot see. of damage. We know this to be so much damage. Keep in mind. Let's just look at look at these HP bars. Try to take a picture in your mind right now and see what's going to be happening in this match. Holy cow. Under 50% with almost everything except that Juno landing heal blocks on top of that cigar as well. So keep in mind that's phenomenal to see that. A lot of damage coming towards that uh, uh, Suiki as well. But notably, no kills, Ooh. and the stun comes out. This Camilla is going to be very, very dangerous. He can go for the freeze, gets the freeze. Suiki with the AoE damage coming out, remembering that this monster gets more dangerous the more the game goes by. Lots of damage from the Chiwi. Still no crit on the Camilla. He needs to remove this Nikki and gets the Provoke, Stoic. Yeah, bit of pro and additional turn as well. Looking for a secondary Provoke on this uh, 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 Annabelle. Doesn't land it right there, though. Curse of Beautiful is going to be going out here. And I mean, it's just going to be a little bit more healing, but the heal blocks are just so, so important to be landing those things here. Big V definitely on the back ropes with the units right now, but he needs to see some additional turns, some cleansing with those skill twos out of both those Occult Girls and see what happens. Is Stoic, if this Camilla kills and freezes, oh, she didn't freeze the Annabelle. The Annabelle can save the segment right now, but I don't think there's anything you can do to kill this Camilla. Correct. I, I think that that was an amazing pick, and the game was over once you went through. Yep. What needed to happen there is after we watched those Akalkos go off and really put everything under that 50% there, we needed to see additional turns, healing himself up there, and it just didn't happen there. So yeah. you can't really rely on the Violent Prox to save you in that situation. I know I don't rely on the Violent Prox to save myself in that situation there, mm -hmm. but you know what? It was just too much. The Juno, the Camilla, very, very oppressive units there with so much sustain happening on this field where everything that Big V tried drafting is landing negative effects. Yeah, I would have liked Big V to not have been the Vanessa because he knew he had the first turn, right? He didn't need to ban the 33, so banning the Camilla could have given him a better chance. The Suiki is easier to remove, and right now, Big Roy takes game number three. Yeah, super clean round three victory. Great safe draft and execution from Pink Roy, putting him at match point in the final set of the quarterfinals here. I loved those picks. The Camilla was such a great choice there, Seppi, and at the same time, it was incredible to see him do it. All those monsters were raw, no skins, just as they come out of the scroll. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe that's like a luck thing. Like, I've actually heard that before where they just go, everything reverts back to default skins there because it just seems lucky where they're in their natural ha their nat habitat, their natural state. I'll take natural you know, habitat. <laughs> <laughs> but you know maybe, what? Maybe it's a luck thing. I've heard that about Ontar Antares, and my Antares has a skin. And, and he never, never, takes, a turn. never yeah. takes a turn. That's so funny, man. Yeah, what a great game from Pink Roy. The Camilla was awesome. I love the Sweaky pick. It was just so safe because what Big V was presenting was a ton of AoE damage right at the start. And what Pink Roy did to respond to that is make sure that he could tank it and withstand and bring that game into the mid to late game where he was more comfortable playing that. Very good point, Evan. And I also think, like we talked about, the draft was really strong. He banned the right unit, and then Big V on the other side, he kind of wanted to guarantee turn one, but he already had turn one, so he didn't need to ban the Vanessa. Maybe he makes some adjustments for the next one, and he doesn't go as deep and gets trapped into a bruiser comp. We talked about it game one, right, Stoic? Yep. We wanted to see the bruisers from Pink Royd, and he has done it very effectively. Yep, that's right. It's, it's that Hay Gang first pick. I really like that Hay Gang first pick, really keeping things open where, you know, you could choose to go turn one, turn two, or whatever. But I, I really like that he is choosing not to speed contest with, uh, with Big V. Uh, I think that's a really big thing. And then I think Big V's problem right now is not committing. You know yeah, I mean? not committing. Yeah, because I think I think you guys brought up a really good point. He knew he was going to take turn one. Did he really need to ban the Vanessa? Could he have banned something else? Because, I mean, there were a couple units in play that proved to be bigger threats than that Vanessa would have been if it had made it into the game, even even considering the 33% speed lead. Let's see if Pink Roid can carry it home or if Big V can get one more point on the table to stay safe. We are going into what could be the last game of this set in Pink Roid versus Big V. Take it away, guys. Here we go, guys. Match point, Pink, uh, Pink Roid. And Big V looking to stay alive as our final quarterfinals match right here. We've got our pre-bands from last time, Hey Gang and that uh, uh, Light Cold Girl. And pre-bands getting locked in right here. Yeah, Stoic. And right now, Pink Roid is going to be in his comfort zone. The Hey Gang will be available. He can pick that first, and he can then 
have some flexibility in the draft and do something similar. The Nikki being pre banned the Tian Lang being pre banned very strong because Tian Lang with Hey Gang, we know those those names rhyme and they also go well together. So with the Nikki actually being a pre banned right now, I think Pinkroid's gonna go down the route of Bruiser. I I don't think he's gonna speed contest. I think that's a fake fake 33 speed lead. It's a real 33 speed lead. But it can I think flex. It's fake. It can flex. <laughs> it's a real <laughs> thing. <laughs> Confirmed. Uh, let's see if the Hagen's gonna appear. Now the Laura, oh, boom, yep. there it is, the Hagen's response. Scar. And there's gonna be two bruisers to wrap up Pinkroid's draft here. And I yeah. think he doesn't wanna see an Annabelle Nikki right here. I think this is brilliant by Pinkroid. Ooh, I actually like the Aetna more than that cigar because it's speed contest, and Correct. like you said, it doesn't give away, it gives him more options. I can go speed lead at the end, or I can go double bruiser and trap you into a longer game that you're not gonna be able to withstand. That's right, because the positioning right now is saying, Vanessa with an Ethna. This man wants turn one. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's what's going to happen here. I'm pretty sure Pinkroid's going to go with two Bruiser units to wrap up his draft here. We're getting a Kinky and we're getting a Sean. So I was actually hoping to see this, and Big V is reacting. And I really like that he brought this Kinky here because he too is kind of like changing things. And Pinkroid's been, you know, put my foot in my mouth right now, and he's drafting a Sonya instead of a, a Bruiser unit. Very, very interesting, but that means that he needs another speed lead right here to guarantee. Otherwise, it's very, very dangerous. He's going to let through this Water Ryu for sure because now he has multiple counters to it. But how do you deal with this Kinky? Wow, he went all the way down to zero and the, just barely locked in that yeah. unit. Volant is being locked in by Big V. I think that's got to be a ban here. That's a... Pink, Pink Road's in a bit of a dangerous situation right now. Is Big V going to ban Hey Gang right here? But the, the, the danger, or does he just ban the speed lead? I think he the speed lead. Oh, but I don't know. I don't know if I like that. I actually like Pink Royd's draft more because if he does that and the more goes first and he bans one of the strips, he's in a good place because it's very difficult for something. He banned one of the strips. Wow, the Hagen ban, yeah. He's telling confident. You, I'm telling you, I prefer that. I prefer that. Banning the, the Vanessa would be, uh, I don't know, dangerous. Does the Laura outspeed the Ethna? That's what we're about to find yeah. out here. And the it Ethna doesn't. is going to be outspeeding it right doesn't. here. Third skill is coming out here looking to lock it down. Does not get the stun, though. Second skill primed and ready. Look for the kill. Ooh, Does whoa. kill the Sean. The Sean is gone, and here we go. Getting some strip. Oof. It doesn't strip, and the monkey will have a very strong lockdown. The only thing that he needs is to, oh, right now, he doesn't have the Vanessa. Oh, no, no way. With a big skill, too, coming from the Kinky. Kinky's going to be dealing a whole lot of damage here. Of course, we've got the Vanessa passive. Her skill is going to be bringing back that Sonya. Sonya's going to be attacked, but primed and ready to do a lot of damage right here. Lore's going to be taking a not as much damage as I thought it was going to be He taken. needs to get rid of the Edna and the Monkey. The Monkey first because he has all skills and he can control the Kinky. He tries. Oh, needs a sleep. It. No, doesn't go for it. This might be the opening. The Pink Freud. Pink Freud was waiting for. Gets the sleep. This gives you time to, you know, work on one unit at a time and get the skill back on Sonya and the revive on Vanessa. Ooh, no additional turns gonna be popping out there. Big skill two is happening right now with the passive down. Whoa, Pink Roid! Looks like he's gonna be potentially taking this match already. Nice he's little excited. landing on top of the kinky. Looking for a defense break. Does get resisted. A little bit more damage coming out here. Trying to keep this unit back here. Oh, oh my god! Skill. I told you! That. The slow is so important. More additional damage, more damage coming from that Sonya. No reset coming from the Vanessa. More damage. Look at that. He's got that second skill. Primed and ready. Pink Roid! Pink with Roid! With the round four victory. And taking down Big V. Incredible. What wow. a task. And he did it. He got so excited when he realized that he was taking that game. Great job to Pinkroid. What a draft. What an execution. We oh, called great. it, Evan. He got into his head. Last match, he bent the Vanessa, and that was the wrong band. This time, he should have bent the Vanessa, <laughs> and he didn't. And that was the wrong choice. <laughs> no. So I, I got to tell you. Pink Roy did an amazing job in the draft, outdrafted him in the last two matches. The first two were very close, you know, very totally. well played by both players. But right here, he showed his preparation. He showed the mind games. And like you said, Stoic, he didn't give away his strategy yes. too early. Yes, Stoic, that was a great call too because mm -hmm. you were saying that he could go two brews at the end and what Pink Roy so successfully did is put himself in a position where he could go either way. He was like, I could take turn one or I could go bruise. He did such a great job. I love the shift to the Etna because she, sh she can commits to both.
playstyle. She can eyes either flex, you know? She could be either flex. Go for it, Stoke. Yeah, I mean, you're right. That's exactly what happened there. That Hey Gang, absolutely insane to bring that there. And I love that playstyle. So if Pinkroy is going to be going up against other turn one players, I think it's just so, so, so nice to drop in that Hey Gang as first pick and then just draft accordingly there. Now, I did like that. Uh, uh, Big V reacted and brought that Kinky in there because I think that was yeah. kind of the play there. But oh, I think yeah. he should have been double Bruiser in that situation instead of, I can't remember what that other unit was that he drafted with that Kinky, uh, but I would have preferred to see that. I like the Kinky, and then that last pick could have been maybe, uh, you know, a Balio or something to stop that Sonya because I that Sonya was going that. off. Oh, yeah, the Sonya the Sonya went crazy and did exactly what she was meant to do right at the start. She had, she had the ignore defense skill to take down a unit right away. Everybody who's watching at home, we got our first coupon code of the day. It's right at the bottom of your screen. Make sure to write that down. If you're on Android, you can go into the event section and redeem that coupon code. Or if you're on iOS, you can use one of the handy links that our lovely mods have put in the chat for us today. They're taking care of us. Good luck on those first five mystical scrolls, and be sure to stick around because there's more codes where that came from. And just as a reminder, we also have that accumulated viewership total that we're working towards. The more the merrier in this stream. More people watching, the closer we get to better rewards down the line, like a Devilmon, Elemental Scrolls of our choice, etc. It's a lot on the line today, and also SWC emblems that you can exchange in the shop. So a lot more rewards where these came from. So stick around. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from that last set that we just watched, guys. Pinkroid versus Big V. That was a big one. That was a big matchup at the end of the quarterfinals. Yep, it was. I mean, that was some of the most exciting matches that we got to see was a big uh, Big V versus Pink Floyd. It's exactly what we wanted to see here to wrap up our quarterfinals here with excellent play coming from both these players here. Big V did come out pretty strong there. I mean, we saw some Julianne, and I did not like that. It's funny, when it came to a draft, Pink Floyd dropped down on the field. I'm like, I don't know. I just don't feel good about it, and I was right. I mean, P Big V did his job, came in there, wiped the floor with Pink V. Uh, uh, Pink V. Pink V. Wow. Uh, Pink Royd in that match there. But then you want to know what happened is we watched someone just learn and evolve after that because he just handled a, a Big V right after that. Yeah, he adapted super well, Stoic. And one of the biggest things, too, is he understood not only using his strengths, but being humble and not trying to fully speed check a player that is faster than you. So he did super well. Match two, the fire monkey was too much. Match three was the Camilla that didn't get banned. The Vanessa got banned instead, and it came back to bite Big E very strongly. And then on the last match, like you said, the kinky pick was very, very strong, but, but he didn't take into account the post ban, the Sonya ignore defense, and he trusted that he was gonna be able to outspeed, but very difficult against two monsters that have very high base speed, the Etna and the Sonya. I think this goes back to what I was saying before, it's just not committing. So when we saw that Kinky come out there, he was committing to like, a, well, half committing, to going with like a bruiser route and then playing it through Pinker, because if we had seen Kinky, another bruiser, a Balio wrapping up the draft there, I think he would have been in such a better position to where he would have handled the Sonya and the Sonya wouldn't have sniped something out like it did. And let me tell something, the unsung hero of this match was Kitiyanda Shank, because without him, he couldn't have killed the Kinky because there would be no CC, and we know that Kinky would have been countering, death-breaking, having an opening, and killing a lot of low HP units. So as a Kitian Sheng player myself, I use that against Kinky's a lot. I love how reactive Pinkroid is. This really is someone who goes up there and he enjoys these tournaments. You can really, really tell in his face that he's just so happy to get those victories and to play these matches. And just even to be here, like he had said in his intro videos. Right? Oh, yeah. He's such an expressive player. Like, when he knew the match was his right before taking down the Kinky, like, his the, the look on his face was absolutely gold. And we'll see how he t handles being in the semifinals because he's moving forward to meet True Whale. So he's got, uh, he's got another tough match ahead of him there, Seppi. Yeah, Evan, and let me tell you something, no surprises today yet. All the favorites have won. Now we're going to have the two world champs facing each other, and we're going to have the EU champ facing the America's Cup champ. What are these matchups, man? This is, a, <laughs> this, again, this is the most stacked bracket that we've seen in an SWC World Finals, possibly to date. And some of our most exciting matches are coming up next. So we have a lot to look forward to today. And I already feel like I've been spoiled, especially with that last one. It was such a pleasure to watch Pinkroid play. Big V2. I love seeing him at the America's Cup. And the double occult girl stoic never gets old. Yeah, it does. It never gets old. It does get a little old when it doesn't work out, though. So it's kind of sad to see that happen. <laughs> Wait, you just contradicted <laughs> yourself. It never gets old. It does get a little bit old. But it doesn't. That's how Stoic talks about his RTA all the time. When we were playing RTA before this, man.
he politely didn't disagree with you, and then he did. And then he's like, <laughs> and I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> he specifically dislikes playing. But yeah, I, I totally agree. And and Big V's style is super exciting, right? He's a player that goes for turn one. He's very aggressive, likes to remove units very quickly. The thing was, Pinkroyd was prepared. He adapted. He learned from his mistakes early on, and now he's going to be facing a big wall between him and that finals, True Will. Oh yeah, and you mentioned earlier too, we got the two world finalists up against each other, Diligent versus Les. It's gonna be absolutely wild. I can't wait to see these two fight each other. I, and they have, they played against each other before, so they know this matchup, they they know what to do. I, mean, I, I think it gets even more entertaining because when we're looking at Diligent, we're looking at Les, we're looking at two world champions going up against each other. And then of course, tr uh, True Will and Pink V, so it's like we have our European Cup champion, we have our America's Cup champion, and then we have world champions going head to head in that match number one it really is this is the most exciting cool. we couldn't have written it any better guys no honestly we couldn't have couldn't have asked for more it's gonna be great i'm really looking forward to what's coming guys i, I know that my predictions are still set i i think i i i have an idea for who's gonna take it Seppi, do you feel comfortable sharing who you think is gonna take the whole uh, thing i will not i will I wait feeling. for people at the end but i have gotten a hundred percent of the predictions right so far so you know what oh yeah I forgot. You have. I have. You're the one person <laughs> whose bracket hasn't been upset each time. That's actually wild. What about you guys at home? Tell us in chat. Our community managers will tell us in a little bit. And big shout out to them. You know, give them some love in chat. You probably have. Come to us, Moke, over there. Motion. Send them big hugs from us. They do a lot of beautiful work. They do. They absolutely do. And make sure to get that code that was dropped in chat. And now, guys, going on from here, all these players have already won a slice of the prize pool. So there's a lot there's a lot at stake at the end here. There's the title, and now they're fighting for $100,000. There's so much on the line, and that means that the games are going to be even more intense. And that's why I'm glad that we're doing it in person live, because I love seeing these players react to difficult situations. So, like, I, what match are you looking forward to the most there, Stuck? I mean, diligent last. That, that's, that, that's it. It's, we're watching we're world champions go head-to-head -head right now, and it's not even in the final. It's it's so exciting to see that, uh, you know, so many people. Those those are like the, those are the two top dogs that everyone would expect to just be like these these are the guys that win it. But they got to play each other. So only one of them can go to the final. It's my favorite match so far. Oh yeah, Seppi. Uh, I I agree. That is a gorgeous matchup. It's like the Lakers and the Celtics. You yeah. know, Messi versus Ronaldo is the two experienced guys that really know each other. Big rivalry as well. We know that in that matchup, big view. Even though he's not going to be there, he's going to be rooting for his friend Les. And then at the bottom bracket, is going to be super exciting to see two other guys that want to have a shot at that title, oh, yeah. right? Uh, uh, we talked about it. The collection of trophies for True Will, that's the only one missing. That's it. That's it. Yeah. After that, he's got everything. He's got everything that the Summoner's War title world has to offer. He will have the Legend title, America's Cup champ, and then World champ. Yeah, and for Pinkroyd, he's been here before. He's finished second place. He's gotten he's that so closely, close. right? So right now, he's like, I want that shot again. Yeah, and these players, they also have some time in between. We've got a break right before we go into the semifinals, too. They could actually change some things around, you know. They've got oh. some time. Stoic, like, they could they could mess with their, their monster boxes and kind of reroute some Correct. stuff. Correct. That's a lot of stuff that happens here. They'll change oh, yeah. up even the priority of their units, shifting things up more uh, uh, to closer to where they're drafted, just to help out with their time and, like, what they want to potentially bring there. You know, especially when it comes to these tournaments, a lot of that happens here where they're utilizing little things that that's been introduced to the game to help players, you know, strategize what they want to bring here. But there's always a little bit of out of changing because obviously damage dealt on specific elements uh, elements mm -hmm. is a uh, very very that's a necessity when you know someone's gonna be playing if someone's a big favorite of playing a deck unit or a light unit where they're gonna be bringing damage dealt on light damage dealt on deck because this person's known for bringing yep. something of that you know you, you, sometimes that happens with like Molongs where you see that Molong yeah. come out and you're like oh interesting he's going with the Molong well that's because that's additional damage based on said element that they knew yeah. it was gonna be happening in there so we'll see what happens because it could be a lot of interesting things here interesting strategies with players like these these are the best of the best right here all regions coming together this is it yeah that's a really good point stoic i would not be surprised if true will put a bunch of additional damage on light we know that pink Royd has the tian oh, yeah. lang uh -huh. the sean <laughs> you know he could he could move a few <laughs> yeah. of those things around actually speaking of monsters do you have an mvp monster of the day so far seppi so far, uh, I I think that the most oppressive unit has been Tian Lang is is the unit that kind of changes the playstyle. But if we have to say someone that's been 
the one that's been the difference maker and very dominating. I'm going to actually say Chung Pung. I think Chung Pung has surprised us. Has so surprised us. The yeah. unit I would go with, and it, it just feel I feel like white bread when I say this, yeah. and, and it's more. It's the the water Ryu as well. It's that 24 speed. It's that strip. It that's that additional damage. The attack breaker. He brings so much to the table, and he's such a perfect first pick. Am I going Bruiser? Am I going Turn One? Turn One more than likely, but you can go Turn Two, and it's still not that bad. But more lost all of its matches in this last one. So Big Roy showed us how to counter more. It's with the Sonya. It's with the Edna. I was, so Edna's I want to see. Favorite. I want to Edna's see True Whale bringing that more or or Water Ryu. That's a cool thing about swapping runes that you talked about. Maybe you'll have both of them and swap around between <laughs> the water uh, and the Water Ryu. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd say that my MVP monster is probably Etna. Yeah. Super fast base speed, like we saw in the last round. There can fit either play style. If you want to go turn one, obviously you can. With with that high base speed, or she can kind of fit into the bruise playstyle with lasting value. She can punish units that are off will with a defense break early, Good cycle point. back to do the third skill. Like all of her cooldown times are, are one turn less than they seem because of that too. I think that she's probably my favorite. Yeah. You know something I'm going to say? The Masha has surprised me. The Masha has been doing super well. Uh, it's been a pocket pick. Very effective, like you called it, Stoic, against the Juno. Also with a lot of sustained damage, right? It's a, it's a monster. It can be a little bit tanky, but deals a lot of damage. Very volatile. So, yeah. I know. Bruiser yeah. in its own realm, being able to knock off its beast and then mm -hmm. still be there in the match there. To pro always built on violent, to just violent proc with massive damage when it's when it's dismounted. So, what's been, bringing a ton of value. What's been a little surprising to me is that we haven't seen a, a lot of Miles or Cooney today, actually. Like, in the grand scheme of things, there hasn't been a great opportunity. We where haven't I'm seen like, a Miles. Oh, I, 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 I've been all like, oh, I would love a Miles there today, or I, I'd love a Rakuni here. You know, so I haven't seen something like that in a little while. So, you know, there just hasn't been a proper moment where we pick picks of the, the Holy Trinity where we pick components of it. Yeah, it's great. Everybody, quarterfinals are wrapping up. We're going to be going to the semis in just a second. Stick with us. We're going to break. We'll see you in a little bit. Congratulations to all the four winners to go through the semi-finals. And next, I would like to invite everyone to enjoy the highlights of the quarter-finals. And then I'll be back once again to start the journey of the semi-finals. And in the next I'll be back once again to start the journey of the semi ของควอเตอร์ไฟนอลว่าเป็นอย่างไรกันบ้างและจะกลับมาในช่วงหน้าครับของการเริ่มต้นเปิดฉากกับเซมิไฟนอลครับตอนนี้เชิญชมได้เลยครับ
ุดยิ่งใหญ่ครับของ SWC 2023ในรอบของเซมิไฟนอลส์นะครับตอนนี้4คนสุดท้ายนี้จะต้องฟาดฟันกันนะครับในการชิงตั๋ว2ใบสุดท้ายเพื่อเข้าสู่ในรอบแกรนด์ไฟนอลแต่ว่านอกเหนือจากนี้ครับใครที่มาในวันนี้นะครับมีโอกาสจริงๆครับที่จะมีโอกาสลุ้นรับของรางวัลต่างๆแต่ว่าจะต้องอยู่จนจบงานเท่านั้นนะครับถึงจะมีสิทธิ์ในการที่จะลุ้นรับได้เพราะฉะนั้นนะครับตอนนี้นะครับเดี๋ยวขอส่งหน้าที่ต่อให้กับหลักของแคสเตอร์ได้เลยครับผมเอสดีวีซีทวีทวีทรีเวิลด์ฟินอลส์มายเนมอิสสติลเอเวนและผมยังอยู่กับสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติลและสติล The champions facing each other. We have four champions over here, guys. We're going to see a lot of different drafts. Let's see if they have prepared for each other. I don't think there were any surprises in the first one, so they might have been very well prepared for this next matchup. You said it, Seppi. It's a bad day to be an underdog. The predictions yeah. have held true so far. And everything that happens here is it's now we're getting into the thick of it. These are the best games yet. The semifinals is absolutely stacked. We're starting off with a huge one in Diligent versus Less. These are both previous world champions. Only one can come out on top and move on to the finals. Notably, everybody here is already winning a part of the prize pool, but there's still the $100,000 left to be claimed, as well as the title. Now, going into this next one, Seppi, you are a big fan of Blessed. Yeah, I think I'm actually an outlier right here because the majority of people are trusting Diligent to win this. But I think that Les and him have a very interesting matchup. I think that Les is a very strong drafter. He can prepare very well for that Laura wedge that knows how to play comfortably around yeah. it. But Diligent always has a very big box, the runes. He adapts very well his draft. So you know what? For me, is a coin toss. What about you, sir? Yep. I mean, this is the one that everyone's looking forward to. This is the the biggest match that we'll have, minus of course our grand final, Diligent versus Les. It's a tough one. You know, we watch Diligent, you know, have a fantastic match up against uh, up against Lufia. We watch Les have a fantastic match up against Ta uh, Takuzo. But you know what? I want to see that discomfort, uh, that uh, the comfort disappear. We're going to see that discomfort in the draft where things aren't going to be as clean as most players want. Here to try to get his second world champion title. It hasn't been long, Evan. He won it in 2021, so if he gets it right now in 2023, there'll only be one year away. On the other hand, Blessed won it a while back. It's been right? 2019. We got the 2019 world champ versus the 2021 world champ here, Stoic. Yep, that's right. I mean, like I said, it's the one to watch. This is not the one that you leave to use the bathroom and to get an extra popcorn or a drink. Like, sit down! Watch this match. This is where it's at, man. Yeah, you're not going to want to blink after this match starts. And right now, it appears that Diligent set in the wrong place. Diligence opponent, previous world champion, it's Lest. Can he get a second world champ title after his 2019 win? The only other one here looking for a repeat, Stoic. That is true, looking for a repeat. I mean, it's both players looking for a repeat for sure. Uh, but Lest, I mean, this guy, he's primed, he's ready. We'll find out. I'm, I'm very, very uh, uh, curious how these two are going to be drafting because like I said, they were very comfortable with their previous matches. I want to see that discomfort get thrown right out the window as we get into this one. What's going to happen? Is there going to be speed uh, speed contest? Are we looking to see some quick bruises right out the gate? Uh, I don't know. I really don't. 
Yeah, I think that the coolest thing about this, Evan, is even though we guarantee that one former world champ goes to the final, we don't know if a former world champ will win it all, and it would be the first time ever. We've only had different world champions so far in all of these six, seven previous years, right? Oh, yeah, I think you're correct, and these two are going to... These, this is the match that's going to make them sweat a little bit more. This is a big challenge. Who's going to move forward to defend their title up against the, the other in the finals? Against either True Whale or Pinkroyd. Right now, these two have each other to look at. they got to take down one or the other. Diligent, looking very focused. Lest as well. They've been here before. I think that the composure, you know, the, the seriousness in which they take these games will be something very interesting to see. Can one of them kind of like take the lead and win one or two games and shake up, you know, their preparation? That's going to be a big factor, early tempo on this one. Because you got to do the psychological warfare, especially when both opponents are so evenly matched. I think that these two are, are a match made in heaven for the first for the first set in the semifinals. Yeah, I'm very interested to see if Les will continue with that Chandra, you know, speed lead into the Charlotte, the segment. Very interesting because it's a strong comp against that turn one from Diligent, right? It It is. I think it is. Uh, I think that, that Chandra makes that... Um the positioning where you go from turn one and then you opt to go for Bruiser, I think that's where that Chandra really is shining here. Um, that might not be the case going up against Diligent, but if Diligent does choose to go that route where he goes turn one, swaps to turn two, if, uh, if Les sees that and he thinks that's what's going to be happening, I think that's where we're going to see that Chandra come in. Oh, and look at this beautiful crowd, this Evan. huge audience live in Bangkok, Thailand. This is such a cool thing to see all these Summoner's War fans coming together to watch our favorite game and even more outside. There's an exterior section to this with even more people. It's an overflow area, there's a wait list to get in. It's awesome, it's a huge huge show. I love being a part of it, seeing the community come together. They said there was a wait list of 300 people, <gasps> over 300 people on yeah. that wait list to get in. It's so crazy, the hype there is around Summoner's War here in Bangkok, Thailand. Yeah, you know what? I to do outside too. You know what, I feel very lucky that we got in. I can't believe we Imagine got it. How we did we it. land this <laughs> ticket? How did we get it? That's crazy. Yeah, and there's lots of photo ops out there too and games you can play as well as a store, uh, a pop-up store out there too. So that's a, there's a lot for people to, to interact with while they're here at the show. And going into it, everybody better find their seats. Better shut up and sit down. Diligent versus Lest coming up here in a second. This is the one to watch. And I'm really curious if the Chandra is going to make a reappearance like we were talking about. There's been a lot of faith put on put in that monster where he's even been taken over the Cigar. And I thought that Cigar would probably be the priority pick today, Seth. Very good point, Evan. And you know what? Who would have thought? I know one person that couldn't have imagined this. Ciara. Ciara never thought Ciara that Chandra <laughs> <She's crying. She's laughs> would have been crying. picked over her oh, in an SWC World Finals. You know, we lived to witness this. This tells me the balance patch is the impact you know, in changes in the game oh, yeah. is so amazing. And how the players and the community themselves, they start building these units and kind of creating a wave of change. I love seeing you that. You know who else has made me feel like that today, Stoic? Is the Camilla picks. The Camilla <laughs> yeah. picks. I'm oh, like, wow. I love What an age to be alive. Wait, yeah. Wasn't that your first Nat 5? It was my second Nat 5. Second Nat my five. first one was Jameer. My first one <laughs> nice. was Jameer. I got him way back in the day before he cleansed, which was really cool. Yeah, I remember years of asking for Camilla to finally be a thing. And the fact that it is so good right now and people are bringing it in these bruiser routes where you go from turn one, swapping to turn two and being like, yeah, Camilla's going to be great here. I, I absolutely love that. It's a unit that I really wanted to come into light and it's finally here. What about yours, Stoic? Who was your first Nat 5 in the game? My, uh, oh no, my first Nat 5 was Ciara. Ciara, oh, <laughs> wow. Great Nat 5, tell us in chat, which one was yours? Prime first pick in RTA it was, for years. It and was. now she hasn't been seen. I mean, that's, it's such a bummer. Her sisters have gotten priority over her. All of a sudden she finds herself at the bottom of the, the five oracles actually. Well, I mean, I, I think, I know the nerfs came out, the balance patches do a lot here, but I think what happens is there's so many viable units that come into the table, that, uh, that have come into the meta. And uh, what, what's going on here is like, everyone's tired of her being the best daughter. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, we're that's done. Exactly. You know, the it, we haven't seen him in tournament play this season, but Smicer has kind of taken a, a role of what Ciara was doing. But at the same time, it's like he's got the stun there, which yes. is a much more reliable debuff than the dot. The but no speed lead, though. No speed it's lead, different. but something's got to give. It's yep. different. I will say, you know what? Maybe a lot of people in chat have the same first nap five that I did. Veramos. 
the first <laughs> no yeah. jokes, jokes aside, it was a Gandy. Gandy. I Gandy was Gandy. very I was, gonna say, I was about to meet you there. It was a Gandy. It wasn't right. normal Gandy. It was extra broken Gandy oh, that could man. ventilate himself. Gandy. Strip first. Gandy, Gandy in the wild strip. west. Brock, like, who allowed that, right? Imagine that nowadays. No, no, I can't imagine that now because that's insane. <laughs> I got to revisit that series on YouTube, the Just How Broken Was This Monster. The yeah. first episode was on Ganymede for a good reason. He was double reset in one monster. He was, <laughs> he was a whole team, but as one monster. Yeah, that's uh, one of my favorite times. I'm glad I got to see that. I'm glad I got to see 2017 RTA. I got to say it was a different time. 2023 SWC is a totally different ball game, and I got to say I like the way that the meta has kind of evolved. I actually like it. I like it more now, for sure. And I like that Double Reset has kind of found a new home in things like Cigar and Oliver. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in the minority. I love watching Oliver play. I'm, I'm a degenerate. I love Oliver. <laughs> I absolutely do. Stoic. I, oh. Do you like uh, cigar? Do you like the other I am. I was I actually said? a big fan. So uh, a lot of things that I say, like uh, I was, I was a pioneer at a time where I brought these units in, and cigar was actually one of those units that I brought in before he was good. Might I add? So I devil fully, pull, fully when I pulled him when he was brand new, fully devil bond him, brought him into ATA, got absolutely smoked. But I said, <laughs> I okay. I, <laughs> Win or lose, it doesn't matter. I said this unit will be insane. One there day. were a few of these that you did. There yeah, I, I want to say Stoic is what we like <laughs> to call <laughs> a summoner's war hipster. Dreamer. Oh, yeah. hipster. Yeah. He look likes at, to look say at the evidence. Uh, uh, Dom uh, Dominic. Dominic Yo. Evan. Dominic he has a, a T-shirt that says. Every Summoner's War monster that you like, I liked three years ago. Three years ago. I liked it before. It was cool. Way before they were cool. Oliver was the other one, actually. You kind of Oliver were, a, was that you as were well. a front runner for Oliver back in the day when yep. it was like an attack. Before Speed League, League or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I think it was. You know what? Who's your favorite cooldown increase, you know, reset unit in the game? Let's get that out there. I, I bet that you guys will never guess mine. Oki. I mean, it's the nope. one that I really want. It can't yeah. be Oki. Yeah, it can't be Oki. Yeah. Yeah. My, mine personally is the Zabala. I want it so Zabala, bad. Zabala, nice. A That's a cool unit. one. I, I think mine's Cigar, but I'm kind of like living vicariously through people right now because okay. I don't have one. Is yours Gany? Nice. Not at all. You. It, it is the unit that gave me my first Special League G1. Ashir. It is not. It, Ashir doesn't reset. It's a unit that resets. Whoops. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Who could it be? Oh, look, look, Walkers. Look, look, look Walker. The light bounty hunter. <laughs> Walkers, bro. Stun and reset, baby. Let's go. Check it out. Go Walkers. to the collection. Were you doing a full light? Yeah, full yeah, light. That was the one where you were doing a full It was light. Escher. So you were, Escher was part of the team. So good job. To, it was to Escher, credit, Walker. He, does reduce his, he reduces his cooldown, his own cooldown time. He doesn't cool increase cooldown time, but he does reduce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He reduces his own. If he kills. If, if he kills. kills. Yeah. If he kills. If, if, if there is a massacre when he uses massacre, then he reduces <laughs> his own cooldown time. Yeah. We're in an age where there's an abundance of increased cooldown time effects. You know, we got Oliver, we got Chung Pung, we got everything. It's one of my favorite ways to play the game. I'm curious to see how Lest and Diligent are going to bring this together. I, I'd like to see a more bruiser play style. That's just kind of like what I enjoy seeing. You like? What are you expecting to see out of this one here, Seppi? Uh, I think first match will be really understanding what the direction is going to be, so I don't pr I don't expect a lot of changes, you know. I Speed expect Diligent both players. Yeah, to go with, with a classic Laura Wedjet if he has them available. Uh, maybe he'll spice in that Volantis last pick, you know. It's a very interesting unit to bring, and then last I think we'll stick to what he's been using, but after the first match, if we see a very big disparity between game styles, I can definitely see Les going to some of his, you know, high trust units like the Praha, like the Kitian de Shang, the Vela Jewel, and play into that resistance, you know, gameplay if he gets to ban some of those units that give the big advantage to Diligent, like the Wedge. Oh, that would be incredible. We're gonna see how this plays out. Diligent versus Les on the grand final stage right now. We're going into the best of five, the first of the semifinals bracket. Here we go, this is round one. Guys, take it away. Here we go, guys. Our first semifinal match between Diligent and Lest. Let's get into it. Pre-bans getting locked in right here. Lest with the first pick. Ooh, I really like the pre-ban on the Avor. That strong unit, very, very fast, gains attack bar. You know, some could say that it's a better ragdoll. Some people are saying that ragdoll is not as good as it used to. I still think... No, you Brandia, please. Like, no. Brand... Like, no. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, Cow yeah, Gaming. Yeah, 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 Cow Gaming. Yeah. We see this rivalry goes, you know, back. Eleanor. Nope. 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 What is he doing? Looking for units. Is it going to be the Chandra? Is it not? Is it the Cigar? 
seven, second, six, four. Oh, it is the Charlotte, is my the dear Charlotte. friend. You want to know what this is? I'm starting to see a trend here. This is a mind game, and what he's trying to do is take the time away from Diligent. Diligent, choose not to flash units. He goes right in with his game plan here. <laughs> I think that's a mind game. Whoa, Zabala. Oh, thinking about it. Oh, he uh, yep. Diligent, Diligent does not like nope. that. Diligent is not he entertained doesn't by like this. I'm telling you right now, this is a mind game. Lest already knows what he wants to pick. Yeah, oh, he, he knows. Like, it's the cigar. It was Zabala. It was Zabala. Yeah, I really, yeah, like, I really like the triple element. He keeps himself element neutral. Now let's see if Diligent brings the Laura or the Wedjet. So far we haven't seen it. We know this is a very fast more, the very fast segment. So two strong units. Turn one. The Masha coming out. I don't know if you want to double fire, you know, this early. I think that's dangerous. The Shizuka is way better. Yeah, Shizuka Juno. Oh. Juno, but he doesn't bring Shizuka Juno. I like that. This is more bruiser playstyle, so what we're seeing is already adaptation, Stoic. I'm impressed that Wedge at Laura did not come out. Uh, I, I feel like this, uh, not impressed here. What I think is happening right now is he does, it, both players are trying to not be predictable. And mm -hmm. I think if we saw the Widget Laura come out there, you, you can't help but quickly respond with like, oh, Widget Laura, I know mm -hmm. what I'm doing. <gasps> so what we're seeing is some very interesting wow. ads right now. Well, Chow and lock Ra. it in. Stark, I'm just <laughs> saying one thing. I understand that they want to adapt, but I think Lest has a way stronger draft right now. I think he baited Diligent into a double fire pick very early on. And I think he can just ban that last pick, yeah, take the Sonya out, and not deal with that. And if the Chow gets through, this is a Chow solo, my friend. This is, this is definitely a Chow solo. I think Chow needs to get banned out here. I'd be fine with the additional damage, the additional strip coming out of this mm -hmm. floor. I think this is still okay here if he chooses yeah. to lock that in. Maybe he even wants to ban the Sekhmet or the Speed Lead right now. You yeah, know? Chow is a massive problem, and I think that has to go here. Yeah, Chow is unkillable in this situation if the more goes away. Even, right? And then the thing is, if you don't have the reset, how do you deal with the Praha? So that's why the Praha pick is really good, too. So we talked about less changing into this more reactive playstyle. Yep. The respect on the Chow. You had to. Perfect. Yep. Incredible. Yeah. Like we said, that last pick was definitely going to get banned out here. 33 speed lead coming out for less. 24 speed lead for Diligent. Here we go, guys. This is round number one. Diligent last. Let's get into this thing right here. Zibala taking turn one. Woo! A fast Zibala that gets triple freeze and outspeeds a segment. Really like that choice. Reset on the Juno. He can't even strip right now. And he can try to get this strip on her. Resisted. Expected. He can still go for it. Goes for the increase and doesn't even put glancing to help out the... <laughs> the the other unit. Charlotte's this is crazy. So Not at all there. So we end up using that third skill, freezing everybody on the other side of the field here. And I think right now Vanessa probably has to stay that focus as the unit you want to get rid of first here. And beautiful attack break is going to go out in that unit. More attention is going to be towards this uh, Vanessa. If Praha Prox right here is a great moment to get, you know, the strip, she doesn't get it. The Vanessa is taking damage and now he can give cooldowns back. The question is, does he prioritize the more or the segment? Yeah, I think you keep pumping up the more. The more is a lot of your damage right now. I do think you should have used that skill, though. I agree. I, I don't think you should be holding on to that. That's that, like, mini semi-ventilate uh, that you kind of have yeah. with that second skill. you got to utilize that, but mm -hmm. we'll see what happens. We had all of our skills up with the segment, so it definitely mm -hmm. should have gone into the more. Yeah. Um, Curse of the Beautiful, I almost feel like it has to go out there. Get more stuff onto the field for your, your uh, Shizuka when you get that skill up there. I agree with you. Even though he got the reset right here, he could have, you know, put Curse of the Beautiful, and it kind of does the same job because you put the heal block... I think he was very afraid of that speed buff and, you know, regaining the tempo. Yep. You know what? Moore had skills up, so now he's yeah. going to take that skill. Now too. he's going to give it back. He does go right back into that more though. Let's see what happens mm -hmm. here. He's taking his time. Puts it on the segment, interestingly enough. I agree with the more choice. Tries to go for the reset. Doesn't get it. The more will punish this Vanessa. The Vanessa might be gone right here, to be honest, because if you land the death break, the damage there coming from the Juno is done. He can even be greedy right here. Kills her. The Praha needs a proc. Does not get the proc. Diligent dominating on this game number one. The Chow Ban was really good. The Chow Ban was really good, but I knew that Shizuka was definitely going to be a problem here. The segment very, very good. Nice little despair stun going out on top of that Shizuka, though. You see the additional damage ripping through that Praha. This is definitely going to be it for less in this very first yeah. round here, but well done by both players. Now, I, I do think there was a lot of mind games being played in that first round. That draft was very, very interesting. Yeah. Let, let me call something out, though. The Charlotte, this is the second match. She doesn't get anything going. 
So she needs some procs. She needs maybe more accuracy because she didn't land glancing yet. She's been reducing the attack bar, gaining attack bar, but no glancing. So dominating performance from Diligent and removing all heroes without losing any monsters. Yeah, well done, Diligent. That was a very, very clean match for him there. Diligent with the round one win, putting him one step closer towards reclaiming that world champion title over Lest. What a game. And also, I got to give it to Lest for the creativity. I love seeing the Chow because it was an excellent pick there, Stein. Yep. Like I said, I thought these two players are going to bring a lot of interesting things to the table here. They really want to throw each other off. Like, if you're drafting Laura Widget, I can't help but think, like, yeah, both these players are going to be super prepared for something that they're normally going to be seeing there. Whether Lest is going to be going with, like, a Vanessa first pick speed lead into a cigar. Like, yeah, that's that normal stuff. Like, yeah, he knows what's going to be happening there. And I think Lest tried to really throw him off. Same thing when he tried flashing units. I'm telling you, right now the strategy behind that is he's flashing units to be like oh now i want you to waste time be like oh you think that's funny i'm gonna go out of my way start flashing units haha and then go back to drafting but he just lost five seconds maybe even 10 seconds trying to find something extra funny like i don't know i think but it I actually think up, I, I agree i think that was the intent but it, what ended up happening was that it, i think it might have even hurt him a little bit in time because you're thinking I about think so. tapping those monsters untapping them and in reality you got to find what you're looking for i i loved the chow pick though because why yeah. can't chow exist in a world where camilla where juno where things that also auto plunge themselves can do big, big damage exists. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I, I don't think it hurt him at all because the draft was very strong. I just think that diligent, like rune wise in there, he he looked very tanky because we saw him taking the back foot with the first turn and CC coming out of Lest, and he he drafted very strongly, but. Diligent was unfazed, and he brought it back, you know? So we're going to see if Les is bringing his best rune units, if he's going to swap strategy again, because Diligent is looking super consistent today. Yep, he really, really is. It was very, very clean by him. Obviously, we're going to see the pre-bands lock in here. To no surprise to see Laura in the pre-band, and also that Vanessa. I knew that Vanessa was going to make it into the pre-band here, because I am expecting to see Les go down with what well, would have been a, a, a cigar first pick here. Yeah. But, of course, Diligent looking to take that, that uh, Curse the Beautiful, Curse the Beautiful, the segment <laughs> there, and lock that unit in there. Wow. He, curse the beautiful eyes. He? He's thinking <laughs> about it. He's thinking about it. He goes with the nefties. Oh, wow. He really takes Curse of the Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> nope. I ain't oh. falling for that. I ain't falling for that. The flashing. He's thinking. I ain't falling for showing. that. There's no Vanessa Mian coming. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, Zyra's Mian. Zyra's Mian. There, there yeah. you go. Something the a little bit more in that wheelhouse. Like, you know what? It wasn't a world that those two units are being drafted. I prefer the Chandra right here because the Chandra brings some sustain. And like you talked about, it brings flexibility into going bruiser later on as well. So I like that he went yes. back to his original yes. picks. The thing is that Diligent stole the segment. He knows that he outspeeds with his Zabala, and now he gets the Juno. I really like that change. Yep. I, I think both players are, are fine. I love the wheelhouse that they're, they're throwing yeah. their drafts in right now. I think this is phenomenal. Uh, Diligent with double speed lead. He's already got the segment in there. He's demanding mm -hmm. that he takes turn one right now. And I think Les is going to take this fifth pick. Is going to be something totally on the bruiser side of things right now. Because yeah. I think Diligent has committed. <laughs> and... You know what? I don't mind this. I yeah. really don't. But that, that he has to go double Wait. bruiser. You don't go one bruiser. You go double bruiser in, uh, in this route. He's thinking... I, I I don't know. I prefer the monkey in this case. I prefer the monkey. I really like the A4 pick. He's really trying to get that turn one. Now Lest has to choose. Do I completely back off and just pick a bruiser? Camilla looks super strong in here, to be honest. I really like a Camilla last pick. Oh, Pheromote, my first nap five. We talked about him <laughs> today. It's like we called its name. We whispered it into the ears of the Summoner's War Gods. I think the Veramos is fine. I don't think this is like a phenomenal game-breaking game, game -breaking pick here. Um, I, I think he's letting the segment through. Doesn't want to see the Curse of Beautiful. The Nephew yeah. is going to be let through as well. All right, so I think you need to bend the monkey. a little bit better. Now they start naming the units. The Veramos yeah. gets better and better as they name all oh, those Oh, is incredible. Yeah. We get love the 24 that speed lead's going to be gone. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. wait. Let's talk about something. How do you kill this fire monkey king? I have a very big problem with this. I would have preferred banning the monkey king and leaving the Eivor. I am super scared yeah, of this unit. It's that same situation where it's like, what are you mm -hmm. going to do about that Camilla in those matches that we had uh, previous year? So what are you going to do about this fire monkey king where you don't have a defense break to offer right now? You can't stun this thing up with any of your <gasps> units here. No he goes for the death here. break. Does he doesn't death care. Break. He doesn't even go for the reset. He's going with everything. He wants to get killed. The Juno counters. Yeah, that's a wow. really, really nice counter there. But uh, I, I was going to say yes to go for the second skill there. Pray that he gets any uh, despair stuns. Not that what can happen here right he now. He can try to kill the Veramos. This is too dangerous. Yeah, well, look who's going to be going next there. That Fire Monkey King's is yeah. primed and ready. Oh, oh great, Brock. Well, you can't stun up that Fire Monkey yeah. King. Fire Monkey King still has. And oh, not even reduced. Yeah. Uh, um, 
on this Veramos, though. He needs a proc from the Veramos. No oh, proc. Not going to happen. Oof. Fire oof. Monkey looking for a defense break to land on top of this Veramos here. Big Ooh. damage. It's staying alive right now. He can go for that big skill, too. Keep mind, he is glancing. Oh. There's the additional turn. Big stuns going out on top of the segment and that more. This is starting to look dangerous for Diligent, my friend Stoic. But now, I don't know, still, how do you kill this monkey? Yeah, the Fire Monkey in that uh, uh, segment. Like, they're still looking really healthy right now. That's a beautiful stun. He's got to he's lock that in there so that he's free to use more skills with this mm -hmm. Neptus and that uh, uh, segment as well. He kills it. Very good choice. You don't want to risk it. And now with a proc right here, he can get the skills back. Look at this Charlotte showing off what she didn't do in the last game. Now he can go for the stun. Doesn't get it, but no skills on the segment. Is going to be Fire Monkey against the world. It is. I do think he has to keep going after this Charlotte. Charlotte's that main unit he's mm -hmm. got to get rid of. I know I know the uh, 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 Zabal is going to be going next here, but he needs that defense break. If he gets a proc, it would have been absolutely insane. He probably would have cleaned up that unit right there. Uh, but Fire Monkey, man, he's going to be getting too much turns, and he really needs this Charlotte to shake off that defense break just like that. The Charlotte has been magnificent. Extra turns, pushing attack bars. Now it's going to be everyone against the Monkey King. He wants to leave even this Nefty's there because he wants to try to sleep and get the wow. extra turn. Do you see that gameplay? Beautiful call from Les. This is impressive. Yeah, nice glancing too. That glancing is really going to keep that back. The slow, everything laying on top of that Fire Monkey King is so perfect. That's exactly what he needs to keep this unit back and stop being like super, super oppressive. So this is how you deal with the Fire Monkey King. We have plenty of damage when it comes to this Juno Ooh. as well, pumping in the damage. Wait. The second skill, I don't think it's going to be healing. It's going to heal. I don't think it really is going to be that. Wait, much. wait. This is a dangerous game. If he doesn't kill it this turn, he I has... I, I think Juno is totally fine. Uh, Juno's looking to pump in more damage. Oh, he does I don't know. He has the I don't skill. know. He's got a Defense violent, break though. Rock. He has oh, the violent. he didn't this violent. still not going to be enough here. Juno should still be able yeah. to finish right there. Yeah. All right. Ooh. Last. <laughs> Taking second round from Diligent. Wow. What a close game. I just want to openly say that I love both of these players. This has been an amazing game. Both strong drafts. A little detail story. An extra proc from that monkey could have really complicated things. I think things. he should have gone for Juno on that previous turn. I yeah. was going to say something. When he hit the Charlotte instead, yeah. he should have banked on the proc and gone for the defense break on the Juno then. I it, think the Charlotte needed to go because yeah. that's the slows, that's the glancing, that's the stuff oh, holding that unit back element. there. Though. You got it. The Juno is the huge solo potential at the end. You gain the HP with the second with the second skill, and then you hope for the proc, and he got it. But I, think, he had his I, I think he played it right. Though. I think he played I, it right. I, I, yeah. I played close. it right as well. What I was afraid of was when he gave the turn to the Moor early on in the game. He used yes. the AoE, yes. gave the turn to the Moor, and then he reduced it and made it so that Varamo slipped it, behind the That monkey. I agree with you. That was a little bit tough. To, I actually yeah. thought that that was going to be the throw of the game at that point. Yeah. But uh, that was that was he took it back. He took it back. Yeah. I, I, you know, it was a little bit of a misstep. That's a very good call. And let me tell you something. Varamos performed better than expected. So he well. just kept hanging yes, yes, on, he right? Yes. Hanging on. Healy, he got a double stun out there. It was a very good pick. This is probably a super tanky Varamos to take that much punishment from it, one of the best, if not the best, more in the world. Totally. And this is probably my favorite state for a match at the World Finals. Both players at one and one. Nobody's at match point yet. They can still feel each other out and get inside each other's heads. Guys, take it away for this set number three. Yep, new pre bands getting locked in. Light Eivor and that Zabala. Diligent not want to play against that Zabala once again. Less with the first pick here. I think he might be going with that Vanessa first pick here. He really wants to keep it open. Vanessa, great for turn two, great for turn one. I think that's what Les goes with. I'm going to call something the segment. I it's, mm. That's why I said it, because he's been stealing the segment from him, and he wants to have the trio, the Charlotte and the Chandra. Well, let's see what happens here, because I don't think Diligent is in a position where he he takes a Charlotte or a Chandra as well. No, 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 I, no. I yeah. think I think Widget would be totally fine if Diligent go down that. But once again, talking about like your predictability there. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna bring a bunch of stuff that you know Les knows for a fact is gonna be hitting the field here. But I do like we're locking in a 24 speed lead. I think that's great. If you, especially if you're gonna be playing a Laura, let's get a speed lead locked in there. There's the Chandra. There's that Charlotte coming back oh. out. Uh, I mean, if he went for the double speed lead, I think that's totally fair. I would wait. Oh my God. Wait. Is he just flashing? It's gonna be the Charlotte. He's just playing mind games. Yeah, the no, Robo. He's still, he's gonna, I think whoa. he's going to keep flashing units all Wait, wait, wait. The Robo is sure actually that. interesting, but the Charlotte has been super strong in the matchup, even against the Fire Monkey. Now the question is, does Diligent just back off and go full 
bruiser or he locks in that wedge at another turn one unit. The Etna is open still, a very strong unit in here. Uh, the Moor has That's been a, a one of the best crowd Moore, favorite. Well, like well yeah. ruined Moors out there right now is Diligence. Mm. Uh, oh, so I think that's preemptive. Uh, I, I think Masha is great, but I do think that might be a little preemptive thinking like Juno is coming know. out there because there's a Neftis on I like board. a light monkey last pick right here, please, sir. I would like to order that because I think Chiwu is super strong in this matchup. The protection from Shizuka as well, very good because We've there's... We've a band on 33 speed. Yeah. That's what's happening right now. Interesting. There's only one strong strip right now so if diligent uh, doesn't pick another yeah yep. <laughs> another very strong strip no i really like the more i think the more is just too good in diligence i agree this is a big damage unit here um if it's built on despair i don't know if he's got yeah. two in there despair and a, uh, a swift one there I um, but i think we, it's probably the swift one and yeah. i think he's very very consistent with bringing that um, I do like that Lest had taken a second speed lead because it definitely shows mm -hmm. that he was willing to contest. Moore does get the ban. Sekman gets the ban. 33 speed lead coming out for Diligent. I think Lest takes turn one if this is a Violora because I don't know that Lest looks very swift heavy and called it. Turn one gets the reduce. The Mosh is not reduced, but there's not a lot to do. You can well, only go for this monster. Uh, taking units away is, is is pretty large, though, if you're able to do that. So obviously, skill three coming through, getting glancing across the field right now, push up those attack bar. We get that defend to protect, protect that uh, uh, Chiwu. Yeah, he needed a stun right here. Didn't get the stun, but he can protect his team and just guarantee. I that think he, he uses skill three. Yeah, he needs to use it. And now he can even try to go for the kill right there. And he has an opening for the stun. Stun on Beautiful the Laura. Stun, the Laura is the man. strip, and she can't do anything right now. Yeah, stuns across the board was insane. So even mm -hmm. this initial turn really isn't going to help Diligent out too much there because it's just going to be damage going into the Charlotte right now. <gasps> so he didn't have a response for this Shizuka. The Shizuka was too mm -hmm. good. There was just nothing I to do wanted the Shizuka ban. That's the thing, but he wanted turn one, so he banned the segment. Yeah, two turn sleep. Not much you can do about that. More sleep's going to be... Oh, no sleep's going to be happening right here. This is uh, heavily in less control right oh. now with a stun going out onto that Laura as well. Very, very well played. The outspeed. We called it the Laura on Violent. That's one of the disadvantages of it and he knew that the more was swift and very quick that's why he banned it now he has his opening his chance can he get the reset misses the attack bar but gets the increased cool time oh, oh my god it's not going to matter too much with the sleeps going out like that on top of the laura there no additional turns going to coming out of the masha shizuka does have some skills up though you can see that aoe coming out there we do have skill two available i think he throws this onto the shallot to get to make uh, make sure he has all of his skills up chooses to put it yeah the, the charlotte table. already has the skills now because she procced with asleep so that's oh. why he goes for the chiwu because he wants to get the kill and eliminate and now the charlotte comes in to finish off diligent and giving game number three Great to last round three now at match point everything is on diligent right now to get that next point on the board otherwise less is about to send him home what a game what a start knew he wanted to go for turn one there second yeah evan i loved his strategy banning the swift unit guaranteed that he has turned one a very fast chiwu and perfectly speed tuned with a charlotte so well done and i love the way that he juggled the the skill cooldown time reductions over there he perfect he had this second side game that he was playing to make sure that he always had some form of control going there stuck yep yeah he really did i mean like you said i think shizuka probably should have been the band there was like what yeah. a great unit to keep things just super super oppressive against diligent there and the shallot played her role man she really did a lot of sleeps call it luck call it whatever you want Lots the shallot was a very very solid Absolutely. unit that third skill pushing up attack bar and glancing everybody glancing is healing Right, Lancing Evan. is healing. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Damage not taken. That's health not lost. And that sounds like healing to me. I got to tell you, Charlotte's incredible. Light take. Careful. That is a copyrighted <laughs> phrase. If you say it, you got to pay royalties to, okay? it's an equation. to this man. It's an equation that appears at the bottom of the screen that shows it. You know, it's less than or equal to healing. It's basically how it yeah. is. That was great. So much crowd control on every skill. Chiwu, first thing. Two turn sleep. Charlotte, yeah. sleep. Chandra. And one stunned. of the things that I love about Chiwu is that now with the glancing, it's kind of a unit that brings that extra thing that he didn't have before, right? He had the pushback. He had a lot of damage, but now the glancing just makes him so much powerful. Let's see if they adapt Stoic and go into this game number four of Diligent versus Last. Yeah, so uh, we've got pre-bans out here. Laura and uh, the Vanessa getting pre-banned. Diligent with the first pick. 
Uh, what, what, I don't think Diligent is in a position where he's trying to take something away from Les. I think Les is making himself, I love the way he's drafting right now, because Les is very unpredictable. That segment, though, like, uh, like you were, uh, pointing out before, I think segment's really, really crazy. Yeah. That he's, like, um, uh, prioritizing this unit. It's, it's been doing a phenomenal job for both mm -hmm. these players here, so... Uh, the fact that segment's being taken and that's one going back and forth makes a lot yeah. of sense here. I do think this is just more mind games. I think he's really trying to bait Diligent and wasting his time here with like what he's picking out here. Yeah. I really hope this will eventually stop, but whatever. Doesn't matter here. <laughs> Chandra, Charlotte. It's working. All I got to yeah. say, I wouldn't stop it. It's working, and I do think that the segment is a priority unit because they know that that's the highest speed on both sides. Right now, Les will have to even go for a Zabala, you know, to try to compete with these two very fast swift units now diligence a little bit more comfortable the question is will he finally bring the wedge at or no oh a chunk bung appearing not a cigar i like that by the way it would have been working if diligent played along he refused to play along so it's not working <laughs> uh, sure uh, so we've got the more we've got the chunk bung getting locked in by diligent we've got zibala and kinky so we got a little bit off to for for turn 2 i think kinky is a great pick right here um, we'll see what happens with Diligent, how he's going to respond, because maybe at this time is where we also see a response where Diligent swaps to a turn two play style as well and not going to go full, full uh, turn one. Yeah, I think you, you have to bring something that can't remove that kinky from the field. Otherwise, it's going to become super dangerous. Uh, let's see if he brings a last pick that does that. The, the is great because it protects your team. Uh, there's not a lot of strip on that side, and you have to bend that Pontos. Yeah, the Juno's so good. The Juno is an excellent yeah. pick here. I even think the Juno might Juno's be getting banned. Uh, Juno's base. getting banned. Pontos needs to get banned because if he doesn't ban the Pontos, the game's over. Like, how do you get through that? We'll find out. Maybe it could be a, a speed lead reset with the Zabala as well, you know, not having to worry about that Pontos. But um, but the Will, how yeah. do you reset something with Will? There's no no strip on that side. There's only the Juno. Yeah, let's see what yeah. happens. Yeah, Jun Juno's got to go, though. Juno's like, it's, done. It's very, very obvious. Yeah, Juno's, Juno's a ban. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, but the thing is then Last gets his ideal team. I, I think he, he kind of put Diligent in the corner, and Diligent did the same to him. Both they have one ban. And oh, the Pontos wow. go. <gasps> I think that leaving that Pontos might have locked him in. That is a very dangerous monster to live in here. He can make your team withstand that kinky and now protect him. Well, that's a very, very fast Zabala <laughs> taking advantage of that Sekhmet. We got those freezes landing out there as mm -hmm. well. Curse of Beautiful is going to have no value except, you know, I think he just goes with skill one. Get that length yeah. of silence going out there on Zabala. Doesn't get the silence, does get the attack rate on him, though. We've got Glancing hitting the field once again with additional turn. Looking for some stuns there. Only get the stun on top of the Neptus. Yeah, this is not going to matter when the Pontos takes a turn. Uh, that's why the unit is so strong. He's trying to get as much damage as possible, but the Pontos will bring everyone back up. Great pick. The invincibility is there, and now there's no strip. So he bought himself a couple of turns. Can he do enough damage? Can he speed tune his, his team correctly to get the death break, you know, the damage, and remove a couple monsters from the field? Yeah, I'm curious if all those attacks at that water where you were showing that he want that's what he wants mm -hmm. to select there. Uh, we'll find out, but uh, we got an attack rate potentially going out onto the Shala. I think Shala is a unit that you really have to worry about there. Looks like he wanted to get the attack rate while he had the invincibility yeah. on top of that. Good Kinky, point. So that was definitely a good play right there. Yeah, he needs the second skill into the death break. So right now, he's probably going to do it. Yes, sir. The death break comes on. That is great. Now he can have the more hit AOE if people don't proc out of this death break. Yeah, we have that silence available here. But, man, this Kinky is going to be a big problem mm -hmm. right now. It is. He doesn't hit AOE. He keeps going. Ooh, oh, he got out man. of the death break. We called it. That is so dangerous. He needs the segment to stay alive. She doesn't to land the Curse of the Beautiful. The last has one foot and the door keeps hitting. Not enough damage because the death break is not there anymore. Yeah, Kinky super oppressive right now. That, mm -hmm. that honestly what looks like what's going to take this match here for less. So more damage is going to be coming out there. He throws down the skill two and the skill two, you know, Gonna protect his Pontos for just a little bit on that return right there, but yeah. I mean he's got to drop the uh, he's got to drop units. It's, yeah. it's so important to take lives right now, and he is. He takes that Chandra down here. Any additional turns might put Diligent in a grave right now if uh, yeah. Les gets any. Yeah, I gotta tell you that proc from the Kinky really changed this game, and Les right now has a big chance to finish the game. Otherwise, he needs a huge proc from the Pontos to put in that invincibility. Yeah, no! That is. locks it down. And with that, Les will be going to the final. Yep, oh my it. god! Les!
the champion of 2019, back again to make a play for 2023. Takes the win against Diligent to move forward to the finals. Bless right here. I got to tell you, mind games work, my friend. <laughs> the, the speed lead. The, the way that he directs his pick and ban is so dangerous. Even right now with the Pontos, to be honest, I thought he was against the wall. He did get a little bit lucky with the proc from the Kinky because that would have been a lot of damage coming out. But you know? some of it was so well calculated. I love yeah. the way that he uses Chandra to create effect too. He puts the defense on the Kinky so that way when they, they revenge together, mm -hmm. he's got the strip from skill one on Chandra to remove the invincibility off the Pontos. Mm -hmm. Super cool little synergy there and I like seeing him using that Chandra with the newly buffed to have the 24% speed lead as well as the Charlotte, which has been pretty impressive today. That's start. right. I don't think RNG had anything to do with that. I think it, it really did came down to the draft, and it was nothing that Diligent really could do about that. I think the Kinky was a brilliant last, uh, brilliant pick coming out for, for Les, and I really do like that Chandra. I feel like that Chandra is that really safe like first pick where you're not really showing or, or saying too much. They're kind of like when we saw Hey Gang get first pick there. You're not really saying like, hey, I'm doing this. Chandra's really good. Man, it might inspire me to play a little bit of Chandra. Oh, oh, oh I'm feeling yeah. inspired too, man. I'm, I'm really enjoying watching him play and now he's got the first seat in the finals matchup good for him man yeah very very exciting now we're gonna see who's going to join him is it gonna be true will the america's cup pink champion Roy. or pink Roy? How's it the EU cup champion. You get the, yeah how's it hey how's your uh, your bracket looking right now? well uh how are your predictions untouched my I dear friend <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to say i called this three months ago when in the Chinese qualifier, I said, not only is he going to win this thing, but we'll see him in the World Finals in the last match. Yeah. This man is a very strong drafter. You know, everyone here uh, obviously is an incredible, they're all incredible players, but right now Les is showing the variety, the uniqueness. He's the guy that's bringing the, the monsters that no one else is using, so totally. that gives you an edge. Picking the chow, remember? Got banned, it got banned, but he picked it, and that was pretty incredible. Here we go, the highlights of the set that we just watched, Gilligan versus Les, with Les taking it 3-1. Why don't you guys walk us through what we're seeing? Yeah, game one was a very interesting one. We saw the Juno kind of shine. Once you remove a couple units, it's impossible for you to kill that Juno. So, diligent, very, very strong, first game, and we see an interesting thing. Shizuka was only picked a couple times here, and she won both matches. And we'd expect them to pick her more, but, yep. you know, she, she didn't appear as much. And then game number two, this one came down to the wire, right, Stoic? This, it really did. I this mean, monkey. It, it, too, too close, too close, to be honest. <laughs> like, I, I feel like at any time we could have watched the, the Fire Monkey King really take that match there. Like, Fire Monkey King on Violent just really is super, super crazy. If you watch a skill, a skill one stunning into a skill two, gaining so much health and just the passive alone, the buff to the Fire Monkey King is absolutely insane. It, it's like the, it's a 300 speed you know, Fire Monkey King, is like what it feels like. Yeah, it does feel like that, and it hits like a truck. He needed the proc there to kind of try to get some more damage and remove that Juno, but he didn't get it. And then this match was the Shizuka Masterclass. Can you tell us why is that monster so strong? I mean, it's, like I said, when it goes and it applies everything under the sun with that third skill, but the second skill, like I said, it feels like a Ventilate. It's not a Ventilate, yeah. but it it's feels a mini like a Ventilate. Gany. Yeah, a mini, mini Gany with that second skill there. And it's like if you don't have anything to uh, reset it or keep it back from doing what it does, because no, there's no unit in this game that does what Shizuka does. It's mm. so crazy. Functions a lot like an LD in F5. People people compare it to because it doesn't even check. It doesn't even check mm. to see if you're at elemental disadvantage with somebody. It doesn't care if you glance. You know, it'll just do. She what doesn't it's care doing. about your feelings either. She doesn't care about your feelings, <laughs> which is funny because neither does Gany. Neither yeah. does Gany. So and, and, and neither does my grandmother. So no, you know, no. Very strong sad. things right here. It's a little sad. Maybe we'll nerf that. Who knows? <laughs> True Whale versus Pinkroid is the next match coming up in the semifinals. Our next best of five. True Whale, one of the favorites to win this whole thing, up against Pinkroid. These two players are at the top of the predictions. The winners for the America's Cup and the Europe Cup respectively. Here's our first. the stage true whale looking to make a play for the finals and take down pinkroid he's trying to finish out all the titles available in summoners war and today could be the day he's wearing his medal from the america's cup it looks like is he it looks like it that's what it looked like to me he showed oh. something oh it's something in his hand i don't know what it is it's like uh 
something yellow. I have no idea. Oh, uh, the fidget cube. <laughs> oh, for real? I thought it was going to be a stress ball. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's the sa same thing. In, yeah. in a way, it, it, it absolutely is. These are some pretty impressive stats for True Whale here, Stoic. It really is. Well, I mean, this is an impressive person. Like, let, let's be real. Like, we've seen what he's capable of doing. So to see these stats are, are to no surprise. Now, just like Diligent Less, you know. <laughs> comes True Wales opponent, the Europe Cup champion, trying to make a play for the title of world champion. It's Pinkroyd. Evan, and not a normal EU Cup champion. Three times. He's got the three peat. The dominance. You know, someone that has grabbed that region by the neck and said, I am your representative. He's here once again to try to get that elusive world title. Yeah, he's gotten here so many times and just hasn't managed to clutch it out at the end. Today may be the day, but again, this is the most stacked bracket we've ever seen, so this is quite the challenge. Right now, this is the most important set of the whole tournament for him. Pinkroyd versus True Whale. Take a look at his most pick here, Seppi. Yeah, interestingly enough, we don't see the Tian Lang right there. We don't see uh, also a unit that he's been favoring lately. That is the Sonya been used today very very well so we might see those to try to fight that very fast play style from true well and also dietna that was here indeed we have the segment that's been appearing a lot stoic what do you want to see from this player uh i i, I want to see what do i want to see I don't know, maybe that Raccoonie, maybe that, that Zero Speed Antares is a first pick. <laughs> Love the, year, the Zero Speed Antares, as God intended. You know, that, no speed on that monster. We bank on the RNG, you know. It'll, it'll get there eventually. You know what's interesting about Antares? Uh, it, it is an RNG unit, but in some situations, you are guaranteed to get a lot of turns because when your opponent lacks the damage to remove it, you're just there, you know. He's just going to eat you alive, so we'll see. I think he'll, he'll wait for that opportunity to pick it. First pick would be amazing for us, but I don't know how good that would <laughs> go for him. <laughs> yeah, we'll find out as we enter our very first match between True Will and Pink right here in the semifinals. Let's see a game five, guys, right? I would love to see that right now, to be honest. I, I, frankly, I, I, I'm rooting for the America's region. This is yeah. our chance. Let's it, do this. It, is game five going to be extinct? Extinct? You know, like we haven't seen it today. It the ever-elusive <laughs> game five. I've heard tell. Oh, congratulations to everybody. We just reached our second accumulated viewership reward, which means in addition to the scrolls and Rainbow Mon that we got earlier, now we're also getting two legendary six-star runes in a reap. Thank you to everybody for watching. Oh, thank you for that reap. I can feel the trip roll coming my way already. Well, here we go, guys. We've got our pre-bands here. Laura and a Vanessa, the pre-bands. Pinkroy choosing to lock in a Chibu first pick. This is quite interesting. Yeah, very unique. Interesting it is. Let's see if True Will sticks to his guns and gets the Water Ryu very strong against the Chibu already. It's a monster that generally, you know, doesn't get that glancing because of the element of advantage. Also gets a turn immediately after, and the Wedge Ed is right there. But we talked about those high base speed units. Segment, Etna. Oh, I love that change. I, do, I just love the Water Ryu. There's that Water Ryu. Does he <gasps> hops for the it's Water not the Ryu, more. it's so not the more. Is this a despair what? unit? I don't know, maybe. What? Like, or did he swap them to play mind games on us? Oh my god, this is he like more mind game stuff right here. He absolutely could have. Pinkroyd taking his sweet time. He went down in the first pick right now. He's really looking at these two units. Will an Etna come out? Will a uh, Cigar, you know, the Tian Lang is already here. Great counter against the Water Ryu. I, I think he's going to transition. Yeah, there it is. I, I, I think I'm going to transition to turn two. Now I hate the Chibu, to be honest. <laughs> like, I, I think don't, that's the wrong. Well, speed I'll tell you something. When you're, when you're if, he, a bruiser. if he picks a Kitian de Shang in his next phase, that explains a lot of the Chibu. That's what he might be thinking. Interesting that he's going with the Shan here, taking a route that um, uh, uh, Big V took here. Mm hmm. And it did not go too well, but he goes Sean <laughs> and Nikki. Nikki, a very strong unit right here. I oh, really like the Shizuka with I only one reset on the table. Uh, does he lock down the monkey, or does he bring something else that's bruisery that can deal with these four? 
I really like that Shizuka. That's a very, mm -hmm. very troublesome unit. Annabelle's going to be hitting the field here. I actually really like the Annabelle. Very yep. water heavy. Can't help but see like a win unit coming out here that's going to get banned is the fifth pick here with True Will. Yeah, I think it looks comfortable if he picks the Annabelle to play against these four. Juno is great as well, but I, I think that maybe the the Sean now versus the Juno when the Sean versus the Annabelle, I think he's a little bit stronger versus the Juno. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I, right? I do agree with that. But I do like Pink Road opening up his draft here, mm -hmm. going with, you know, two water and two fire instead of going with three water yeah. there. Uh, yeah, th I mean, it's it's Juno. Like, can you signal a Juno going through or what with a, with a Masha yeah. last pick? You know? You, you know what? I think that either Sean or Masha ban is fine here, to be honest. Sean's or the ban. Yeah, or if he wants to ban the speed lead, though, he, that might be something that might surprise us, Stoic. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. I do think the Sean's going to get banned yeah. out here. I think this Shizuka is too <gasps> good, but it looks like Camilla's going to get the ban, and Nikki's going to get the ban as well. I don't know. He took out the 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 sustain, so that's an interesting choice. I like that. I do agree with you that the Sean is very dangerous in this matchup, but he has the Shizuka still. He has the Tion Link. The damage was removed. The main source of damage is not here anymore. Does he get the reset on turn one on the Shizuka? Yeah, gets he it. He does get it. That's super, super important there. He needs to even get this strip right here on top of the He doesn't get that as well, so it's not completely clean on this field here. Big skill two going out there. Ooh. No stun's going to be happening, though. We are primed and ready with a massive skill two. He can throw this right into the Juno, opening up Curse of the Beautiful. Yeah. This. Oh, oh man. This, That's some big damage, dude. This is very dangerous. Opens up the whole game for himself. Now he can just go little by little, taking one at a time. And the thing is, he has two units that can kill the Juno. That's why we wanted to see either the Masha or the Shangon. So far, Tian Lang. He goes for Curse of Beautiful anyways. Yeah. He, yeah. Everything's really, really healthy right now. Heal yeah. is going to be landing on this field. There's the additional turn. He's going to shake that defense break. That's the not Juno, what The Juno's see. dead because the Sean is going to send her to oblivion in the next turn. Oh, you are right. He does take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. There's that squall coming out here. Juno will get smashed with this. Oh, oh no Mr. way! Crit. a revenge despair stun. The wait, odds. wait, wait. What happened? Wait. What's? I want to take it a look. It was because of the speed buff. So Juno was faster. Yeah, so I know, but but e even with that, I, I wouldn't run a low crit Sean in this level. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, but Ooh, even with that, you can still have the crit resisted on resisted the reset yeah. going out onto Shizuka as well. I still think he still keeps going into that Juno, but not yeah. going to happen there. This is going to be a dismounted Masha. Uh, Stoic, this might have turned the match, to be completely honest. Like, it, right now, if you remove the Sean from the field, this Juno suddenly becomes super dangerous. Well, you still have to be very careful with the, the violent procking of Masha, because Masha does have that ability to take Juno out. Juno's yeah. not that healthy right now, so he yeah. does have to. That is the correct target to go after. Oh! First skill, he could put it into either one of these units, but I do think he should be going after this Juno. This Juno might be built on Nemesis, so I wouldn't hit yeah. that unit just yet. Reset probably stays on this Tian Lang with the skill too, or maybe even going back to Shizuka. Shizuka, yeah. Reset already, but I think, yeah, he's coming right back to that unit. This has to go into the Juno. Can it crit he's kill? remove that unit from the field here. Oh. Choosing to not go after, we oh. do have a skill too. So maybe the Water Ryu is going to be enough to take out the Juno, but this has got to drop the Tian Lang. Tian Lang is going to be dropping here. Okay, I, I think he still got it. The reset on the Shizuka was very strong, and like you said, the Juno's too low. She has to go for the Hail Mary, misses the stun on the Masha, and that looks like game one for Truewell, even with the miss crit. Oh, Ooh, counter. Go for that. Gets counter oh. right here. Does get that squad. Put that into the Shizuka. We're not worried yeah, about yeah, that yeah. Juno right now. <laughs> the Juno's <laughs> gone right now. Uh, oh, man. Oh, whoa. That is, uh, you know, some interesting uh, skill choice right there. Just go for skill one. Kills it. The Shizuka is almost fully reset. Not a lot Ooh, for her to do. do. We, crit what? we do yeah. finally crit water. True whale. <laughs> Taking round one from Pink Road. Masha almost forgot that she has Elemental King. She <laughs> almost ran, she was, oh, wait, I'm supposed to crit on water. My bad. Let, <laughs> let me go. do it again. Yeah, let me try that one more time. Wow, True Whale taking round one up against Pink Roid. Almost slipped through his fingers a couple times there, but you know what? He took it in the end, and that's yeah. a win for the Americas region. Super close match right there, though, Like to be honest. like they, There really could have been a lot of things to happen right there. We could have saw a crazy amount of Despair Stuns coming out of Juno, but when you see a Juno Revenge Despair Stun, it's just like jaw-dropping to see that even happen right there. That's just yeah. like, 
crazy, crazy RNG that even that even like came to terms there. Yeah. I just want to bring something out there. He's his best boy, Tian Lang, disappointed and did not strip, did not stun, did not stun, oh, didn't do point, anything. Point, yeah. For me, that was a key thing in the match. When that didn't happen, I think True Will kind of like I saw him breathing and he was like, okay. I got this I've under got control. I got a window, exactly. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was the cue that he had that breathing room. You know, it, True Whale was able to kind of take control of the game after that. Tian Lang really didn't put in a whole lot of effort to win that game. Uh, I, I did like seeing the Masha. The Masha did great. I love that unit. Masha and the Sean, I think you couldn't have left both of them side by side because it's oh too much God. damage to remove the Juno. And you, you gave a good call about the speed buff on the Juno not making the auto crit, but I'm as a poor man Sean user, aka Taor, my Taor <laughs> still has 80% crit rate because I'm super afraid of that. That's actually a really good tech to run, and not a lot of people run that tech. Most people kind of go low crit rate. And I like what you said. It's like when you're here at the World Finals of SWC, you want to make sure that you have that advantage, even if you're lower on speed than mm. your opponent, because you're more likely to be lower on speed here than anywhere else. But still worked out. You still know? worked out. Still worked Gr great out. Great picks. A lot of damage coming out from True Whale on this first game. Yep, that's Stoic. right. Well, we're getting into round number two right here between Pinkroid and True Whale. Pre-bans with the got the widget and that light a monkey king getting a pre band in this match with True Whale with the first pick here. Two very strong drafters. We can't say much about the first match. Let's see how they adapt. True Will will get the Laura, not the Water Ryu. Interesting. That leaves an opening. It definitely does leave an opening. I do think you should take units that, you know, Pinkroid has an opportunity mm -hmm. of taking and not that Laura, because I think the Laura, you know, uh, not that the Laura is a bad pick by any means there, but I don't think Laura needs to happen. We have seen this before. Vanessa, Cigar, these are excellent first picks here. I agree with you. I really like it. Very consistent. Now he puts 33% on his side with the Oliver and a Carno. Okay. You know, what's scary about this Oliver, for a person who loves to jo uh, loves to draft an Antares, you are justifying that Antares right now, taking that <laughs> Oliver. Good point. Uh, I like the Masha coming out of Pinkroid right now. And I got to tell you something. The Fire and Bison is a monster that I used to love a lot. I think he's very inconsistent nowadays. Uh, we saw True Will lose a game using him in the America's Cup. So I don't know how well he can perform, but I do love the Kinky coming out and maybe some sort of some source of sustain, uh, something that can bring all oh, beautiful, a Praha. Yep, I, I Amazing really like picks. I think the Praha is a very, very good unit. No immunity on the side of Pinkroid right now. So because of that lack of immunity, Oliver does look super dangerous right now. But I think what he's doing is he's trying to set up a defense break. We're looking at a Vanessa-Masha combination going somewhere. Mm -hmm. If those two units make it through, I want to say the Vanessa is going to be that fast to go right behind the Vanessa. That's a good point. You know what I really like right now? A Camilla. A Camilla is an interesting unit that can deal with a lot of stuff, but it's probably going to get banned or the reset is going to get banned. Oh, not, it, interesting. I think that's okay. Is he going to just ban the Hay Gang and go right in? Kinky. That's oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. On his side. But I mean, on, on True Will's side, I don't know. This Hay Gang is dangerous. It's very difficult. Oh, he bans the Robo. He got the bait. I know. I wasn't expecting uh, any of these uh, these, these bans coming mm -hmm. out here. So, so when Robo gets the ban, the Fire and Bison is going to get the ban as well. 33 speed leads for both these players here. Is the Cigar faster than that Laura? Interesting, yeah. Interesting. Let's see. The, the Laura takes no. tur turn one, but there's a Hay Gang, my friend. Even if you do it, the Hay Gang will probably cut. Let's see if it happens. Yes, sir. The full team strip. Here. Yeah, Vanessa I don't know. Is in front. Hay Gang is going to be in front of them. Uh, Let's see where this match is. Cigar be goes in. Right Cigar is getting full team reset attack bar reduction as uh, well. We've got a lore that's potentially going to get this. Oh my God. He oof. opens it up. There it is. I oof. said he was going to get the defense break yeah. on top of that Oliver, and that's the unit that he wants to. Does that's, it pop? That's, but he procs anyways. Yeah, that's why you ban that Hay Gang. He needs a proc. No proc on the Oliver. The, the Praha is reset. You can keep controlling this, Oliver. This Masha has so much damage, it's going to be Kinky versus the world, Stoic. Yeah, I think this is a violent Kinky. This is not mm -hmm. a despair one, so I think he still goes with the skill, too. Looks like he really wants to keep pushing for the defense breaks. It's yep. very, very fair, especially when you've got Praha who's able to do a little bit of damage, too. He needs a proc right now from the Oliver. No proc again. The luck is not on his side on this one. If there's one proc from Cigar, though, this might be a lock. Doesn't get it. He can remove a unit from the field and not risk it. Yeah, Masha is crazy right now. Big damage is going to be coming out on that. Uh, on the wow. elemental king with Masha once again. Crazy. That was a bit risky, but it worked. Crazy that even happened. So there's the additional turns coming out of the kinky. 
it's not going to be that impactful right now with how far ahead uh, Pinkroyd is right now. But I will tell you something. The one stun is removed. This might be a kinky solo. I really like True Whale's choice of removing the unit that had despair because right now, oh every time God. he uses something, he counters. He counters the whole time. How do you stop this, Kinky? Yeah, th there's no way. He needed to dismount oh. right there. He needed to get yeah. that dismount, and Vanessa's oh. got to go. So the death break. Oh, oh, the I'm turn. telling you. This needs to be a I'm telling you. He, to go into the Vanessa. he doesn't care. He doesn't there's care. There's the defense break, oh. though. He's got to take out the Vanessa. Oh, my God. The can oh. Oh, oh, that was huge. He can big, kill. Oh, pink oh pink my God. For the endure. Skill two, sir. Skill the two. Endure. Get the endure. The endure. Oh. Wow. Holy oh cow. Oh, my God. By the grace of God, Truel gets a round two victory. This is one of my favorite matches. His targeting Stoic. Removing the despair unit was on point. Bankroy did an amazing job on the draft. He thought about everything except the kinky yeah. <laughs> everything except the kinky i wanted to say something to the pick fan phase but i didn't want it to be like the caster's curse where the masha perfectly yeah. takes advantage of the kinky well. in the game so it's not worth it it's not worth it <laughs> I what did, a great game. i did think the masha was going to take advantage of the kinky though and it just didn't happen that, yeah. that's so crazy to see it come out like that because i thought Pink Roy had it in the bag, to be honest with that yeah. entire time. I, I, I agree with you. Dude, it was very close. The Kinky was such an amazing point of, of foresight from True Whale. That was amazing. I impeccable choice. I got to say, I love the way the Pink Roy actually operated during the game, especially when he was like, you know what? I'm a little ahead. I could risk going <laughs> element disadvantage <laughs> right now with the Masha and oh, aiming wow. at the Raha. That was so cool. And he was and he was rewarded for it. The double oh crit on God. water. Love it. I thought, you know, that's territory for Masha and Vern. Only yeah. those two units can do it. It was great to see. Here we go, guys. We are going into what could be the last round of this semifinal set between True Whale and Pink Roid, with True Whale sitting at that point. That point. There's been a lot of 3-0s right now uh, today. This would be insane if that's what's happening here, but we'll yeah. find out, guys. Pre-bans. Here we are again. Laura and Vanessa once again getting pre banned Pink Roid does have first pick here. Yeah, I love that you brought up that, Evan. Masha, the spiritual successor of Perna. Doesn't care what your color is. It's going to crit on you. Pink Roid right here with pick number one. Segment comes out. Backs against the wall. Let's see if he can truly show his colors and take a game back to pressure True Whale. Yep, so there's that widget and ah, oh, the Chunk Punk. I mean, again, like it has, we haven't seen the cigar coming out of True Whale. I do think whatever that cigar was, it's a Chunk Punk now. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the Tian Lang coming out, very strong unit. Didn't perform very well in game number one, but he brings it. I think you can try to bring something to bait out more control, maybe a cigar or something like that, and then you slap the bruiser, right? You bring on the fire monkey. Maybe you bring on if there's not enough reset a Shizuka. Let's see what True Will responds with. <gasps> Stop. It, it's almost like he's no from, way. The, uh, from the Americas region. It's <laughs> almost like he's listening to our calls. No way. The Water Ryu and the Oki. Uh, Oki says, please hold my beer. I am still better than Cigar. Yep, yep. I, you know, I was going to say, this, that, that Fire Pure Vanilla comes out there. <laughs> so many people are drafting this unit. I just Why do you hate it I so much? You I don't understand. It's, it's Jackson, Jackson at home. At home. Jackson Not everyone at home. has Jackson, my friend. you well, got to understand that. Well, we've got Jackson at I, home. I, you don't I need Jackson. Dislike for this we've got unit. Jackson at home. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> I, I think Jackson is a phenomenal unit, but just because he has the... the <laughs> the, the, the both attack bar gain, attack bar pushback inside is passive. And, and this this right here just has one. It has one version. Of it. I, oh I, I, I don't like it. I sure, know. sure. It's like, like it. you know, the, the, the carnal, the M bison, the fire version comes out right here. I really like the draft from True Whale, but also Pink Roy brought out what? some interesting what? units to, to deal with the, uh, the reset, the attack bar. Gain. It's going to be really interesting to see if he lets everyone through or if he bans this Tian Lan. I think he bans the Tian Lan. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it, it looks like it because he has the Water Ryu, he has the Okeanos, he has the Wedget, a lot of attack bar gain. Even the M Bison gains attack bar on skill number two. Oh, <gasps> bans out the No! Okey ban? What? Wait, Oki ban? What? Oki ban? I am not expect. I was not expecting this. Where are we? One of the resets is gone, my friends. We're going into... Game number three, match point for oh, True Whale, that's Stoic. interesting. It really is interesting here. Well, we got a second skill coming out here looking for a full team strip. Does not get that strip on top of the Sean. 
with Jet looking to boost up that team here. The resist, very important on the Sean, my friend. Yep. Right now, he needs to reduce Serious attack bars. Matter. Yeah, I think you can't, you can't risk it. He risks it. Whoa, nothing. He goes for the third Ooh. skill, though. Let's for the damage. For the skill to push back the attack. Yeah. Button. No, often to go for third skill. He's going yeah. all in here. Yeah, because he knows the stun is coming out from the Sean, right? So he needs to use it. Right now, he can go for the strip on the Chunk Punk. Yes, sir. Get resisted. resisted. Oh, what? wow. What? Miss, what happened? Where are the stuns? What is this Sean doing? Oh, my God. Big Roy not getting any activations right here. Yeah, not looking good at all. I mean, we've said this before. If Segment doesn't do what she needs to do in the first round, that's, that's like the, the biggest mm -hmm. throw when Segment's not able to do that. Not looking good at all for Pinkroyd right now. Not landing skills is, is very, very difficult to have to deal with. Attack bar pushback is available with this first skill here. Probably going towards the highest attack bar. Opt yeah. to go for uh, uh, Sean here. You need the skill too, the Curse of the Beautiful. Don't risk it right now. Yes, sir. He gets it out. No Important glance. Only defense break is going to be landing on top of that Fire and Bison, though. Which is the tankiest unit, right? You wanted that on the Chunk Bung or on the wedge jet, but he doesn't get that. Now he's forced to reset that chunk punk or the wedge jet. Both of them will have skill soon. Yep, looking to get a provoke on top of that Tian Lang does not get it here. Maybe a potential despair then if this is a despair version, because we know it's mm -hmm. not the more, this is the water Ryu. Yeah. Let's see if he chooses to go. He does go for that attack break though on top of the Tian Lang. So we can't tell if this thing is on despair yet. So no confirmation on that. We do have third skill available. Yeah, I think you should go and throw that onto the Wajet. Off to go for the fire and bison Ooh, though. I don't know. I don't know. The the Chung Pung has skills right now, but he has two fire units, so he's not that worried. He needs to remove units from the field right now. It's starting to get really dangerous. One important proc from yeah. the Tian Lang. This Kinda might nice. be bringing it back. The the reduced attack bar, but he has a glancing, and there's two he fire still units. Has to go for it. Yeah. He does have to go for it still, though. Nice little revenge, though, to get a little bit of sustain out of that first skill here. I think he, too, has got to go for second skill. Keep pushing that, uh, that the damage out there, and he does. The units are looking really, really low mm -hmm. right now. I don't think he has to go and get the provoke onto that fire unit. No one cares. Yeah, he's probably going for the Sean right now because the Sean has skills. Glancing, very important. Hit the unit that has the death break. Yes, sir. Get it down, but the wedge it now. The reset didn't come on, and this is a very, very important moment for Pinkroy. He needs the Tian Lang to work, Stoic. Yeah, he's got second skill. He's, gonna, he's got to use it. Uh-huh. Oh, oh finally! Stun. That's really, really big right now. Finally. Back going out top of the Sean here, though. A little bit of damage. We do get an additional turn, and he needs to provoke this this mm -hmm. shot. I know it's attack broke, but it's still it's really important that he lands that provoke. Oh, land that provoke here. No, not enough damage. Finally, the vanilla getting the shields, the heal. This is the opening for the segment, and oh, Big Roy takes number three. Yep. That might have been the longest game that we've seen today. I'm sitting there and I'm looking at how deep we are in the mid to late game and all the intricacies, the pro weighing the pros and cons, all the risk assessment of every move made. It felt like that was a game of inches and Pink Floyd came out on top. Man, and I'm sorry, Stoic. I love you, but I got to say it. The pure vanilla was the MVP of the match. Keep it in there. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I agree with you that Jackson is 35 times better than her. But in this specific <laughs> match, when you don't have oh a Jackson, she was incredible. The heals, the shield, the sustain. Otherwise, we know how strong the artifacts on the side of True Whale are. He just gets you super down, and she kept bringing them up, you know, little by little. So in this specific in match. In this very specific match. <laughs> she did a yeah. good job. She did an yeah. okay job. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, not get, let's not get carried away. So it's not like, it's like, she was all right. She was all right. Still Jackson at home. That's so funny, man. What a great game. And I'm telling you, like, that 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 mid-game, I really like seeing the, the back and forth between the two players. The big swing felt like the Tian Lang skill too stoic when he mm. finally got some stuns. I felt like I hadn't seen yeah. that today. Yeah. Yeah, Trua had a fantastic opener in that match, though. He really yeah. did. He did. These two players are giving us a show, guys. Like, there's, we can nitpick all we want, look at little details. Maybe this should have been man. Maybe this should have been attacked. But both of them have been extremely consistent, reliable, and really smart at That's picking right. and banning. And Truewell still at match point. Pre bans from last time. Lauren Vanessa now available as we get into round number uh, four. You know, let's see what happens right here. Pre bans Nikki. In the light monkeying, I was not expecting to see these two get banned. I agree with you. It surprised me, but this is match point. No games can be played here. Pinkroyd needs a win to give us our first game five of the day.
Yeah, so I'm actually expecting Pink Road to go heavy into turn one right now, because I think he was expecting Nikki to be one of those turn two units that Truel likes to bring there, and um, I like that. So we're expecting to see uh, a, a turn one Pink Road right now, because he's stopping the turn Ooh, two power with the Nikki. He went with the segment instead of the cigar. So we've been seeing a lot of prioritization around this segment, not only in this matchup, but also in the Diligent versus Lest. Interesting, because that puts you on double fire, and it gives an opportunity for True Will to exploit that. I think Pink Road's ready for this. I think Pink Road purposely went with the Vanessa mm -hmm. segment uh, with the ban on top of the Nikki, forcing, he's forcing the Widget and the Lore. Yes. He's someone who knows he knows what to do. He's, I would he's gonna love... Be, he's going to oh, be very comfortable in this match. I would love a Water Ryu steal right now. How strong is Water Ryu into this and taking it away? But you know what? The, the hey Gang does kind of like a similar job in this. Oh, or Water Ryu or hey Gang. We don't know. Uh, I think the you need Sean, the second speed lead, though. Oh, well... <laughs> If you have the well, it depends, right? If you have the Hay Gang, in my opinion, you need second speed lead because you already you already have a segment in your shot. Mm -hmm. Like, why not why not go with a second speed? I think the water Watery would have been great. I, l I agree with you. I, I would have loved it, but this guy is up there and I'm not, so he probably knows what he's doing. <laughs> I love this. Let's see if True Will right now brings something that can guarantee that he doesn't need to bend the segment because the segment looks very threatening. I, I think he either goes with 33 speed lead or he brings out that water water Ryu. Water Ryu. Water Ryu is great. With the Chung Pong as uh, well, though. Does this tell you, though, that he's banning the Hay Gang instead, then? Unless yep. the segment through, 100%, right? 100% yeah. with the ban on the Hay Gang, though. So now, that means Pink Roid's free to bring. Look at he's thinking about it. He knows. He knows the Hay Gang's going to get banned. He needs out. Bruiser. He knows he, what he's doing. Yeah, he needs a Bruiser right here. Or he can oh, bring I think it's too the late. Tian Lang. Well, the no, Tian it's, Lang. Not, it's not too late. It's not <gasps> too late. Wait, no, but then if he bans the. Okay, I like that pick because if he bans the Hagen, he has two units yep. that move ahead. <gasps> no. What an animal. I actually, uh, I don't know. I think the Hagen had to go either way. I think this is going to be very dangerous. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Let's see how powerful this Hay Gang is going to be here as we get into match number four with True Will and Pinkroid. Of course, Watery is going to be kicking things off with us, going with a big skill, too. I love that you said kicking things because he does kick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> Vietna's going to cut in and is going to have a big opportunity to change things right here. The Laura cuts before, so he has to dump the stun and gets Get it. Oh! Bucky Brooks! Gets the additional turn. He's got to go with the skill three. I, think uh, he's I don't be, know. He needs to get the immunity off both these units there because the fire and bison will be going next there and with the chunk punk. But the Sean can stun there. right now. And he gets the triple stun. Oh my god. He can reset right now. This bison and gets it. Yes. Beautiful play. Pinkroid celebrating right now. He's looking really, really yeah. comfortable right now. You can tell that he feels mm -hmm. okay with the situation right now. Provoke needs to land on top of that uh, Ethna. Does yeah. get it. That's a lot of damage coming towards the Ethna too. I think that was a small misplay right there. He should have used the stun instead of the strip with uh, Laura. And now he can reset the other unit. No! Resisted. resisted. Needs a defense break to be landing here. Serious Matter is going to be coming out. Ooh. This is really, really important. I know there's glancing, but let's see what happens. He has to use that skill there. Gets the attack bar pushback on top of that Ethna. Stop that unit right now. Because things are looking really, really good for, for True Will. Yeah, I think that He's gotta reset. He's kill on top of this Ethna. He's got to keep pushing away at this. It's lowest unit. Take lives. It's getting really close right there. Fire and Bison is going to be primed to take that unit out. Yeah, he has to, but that missed reset is the game changer. Correct. The Chung Punk got the push. He gets oh, a proc, man. and Drew Well is taking a commanding lead. I think he's got a confirmed kill yeah. on top of that Ethna. you got to kill and the Ethna. There Edna. it is. He gets that second skill, pushing up his attack bar. Nothing's happening there. we got skill two available to stun all these units up here. True Well in full control right now at match point. Oof. That is very oh, difficult, man, and Big Roid quits. True Will! True Will moves forward, knocks out Pink Roid again, and True Will moves forward to meet Les at the finals. What a set stun. That was, uh, that was a crazy, crazy set there. We almost got to see our game five. We didn't get to see it, boys. Almost got there. Still elusive. Maybe we'll see it in the grand finals. But I tell you, man, that was that was quite the showing from True Whale. I gotta say, the America's region looking pretty strong right now, and there's the sportsmanship for Pink Roid. You know what? Next time, next time could be the charm. He's been here a few times. He's proven that he deserves to be amongst the best players in the world. Unfortunately, True Whale pulls ahead. Congratulations, True Whale, facing last in the grand finals. And right now, guys, this might be the first. America's representative to take the title. We have a second shot. And you know what? The last time we had this close of a shot was 2019. And who was there to deny it?
last oh, yeah. once again last against Thompson. Big yeah. hug to Thompson here in the crowd with us. <laughs> yeah. Amazing player. Uh, but this time, Truwell's the one trying to carry, you know, the Americas region into its first title. Yes, so Lest feels very comfortable being in this position and denying the America's Cup champion from taking the win. So we'll see if he can do it again, but I got to rep my region. <laughs> I got to say, I hope True Whale can win it. I got to say, and, may, and then he can clean up the title collection. He'll be His name will be in the Hall of Fame multiple times. Yeah. That's right, that's right. Yeah. It's, it, that, that's the biggest thing, man, is that, that bragging rights to have your name right there in the Hall of Fame, man, when it comes to Legend of Tournaments, when it comes to world titles. And he's looking for that world title. Just another trophy, another medal on the wall. Yes. Well, yes, the him. biggest medal this yeah, yeah. one. Oh, man, and I'll it's, so, say, yeah. it's so meaningful for him, too. Like, he, he was, like, almost in tears at the America's Cup, you know? So this is a really significant thing for, for him, for anybody getting to this point. And also, $100,000 is nothing to scoff at, too. That's another, that's another benefit of taking the champion. <laughs> We've got the most exciting. That's a lot game. of packs. Yeah, it's a, a lot, lot of packs. packs. That's a lot of packs. It, yeah. it, it might cover what, what, what he spent this year. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be incredible for him if he takes it for anybody. And thank you to Pink Roid for being such an entertainer. It's always such a joy to see him play. He put up an incredible show against True Whale and gave us some of our favorite matches tonight. Yeah, so, you know. incredible, man. These semifinals have been everything that we expected. They've been popping. Let's go ahead and see this last set one more time in the point of highlight reel. Look at that easy cleanup from Masha at the start of that. Yeah, game one, very dominating. You know, we talked about the duo, Sean and the Masha. They, both of them stayed there, so he had two ways to deal with the Juno. The Juno tried her best to do everything in her power to keep Pinkroyd in the match, but True Whale prevailed with the double damage. Now in game number two, it was when we saw Pinkroy swapping a little bit, you know, and and the, the Kinky surprised all of us, right, yeah, Stoic? Yeah, I saw this match and I was like, I, I think Pinkroy has to take. We have a still mounted Masha. It's perfect, you know, built on violent. We knew the thing was going to produce. It didn't even get dismounted there at that time. Provokes coming out, which is going to direct that damage elsewhere, giving Masha another shot. I mean, but uh, yeah, the proc out, out of the death the break. Really, really nice proc. It was very. I very need to drop good. my despair, so Kinky. Close. That's not working out. <laughs> yes. I had to go violent. And it was so, it was so close there too. You know, that skill two granting in the endure was actually like that. That was the mm -hmm. game changer. That was the game winner. Oh, and look at Pink right. <laughs> He's like thinking about that proc, reanalyzing, and then on game number three, we <laughs> saw uh, the better Jackson. Uh, you no, may no, call her. Yeah. Because <laughs> does Jackson heal? Does Jackson put shields on their team? I don't know. You know? And and prove to be a very strong unit and take the win right here. Yeah. There's the last one. This is the last game that we saw today. Uh, everything could have changed if that reset from the segment hit that junk bomb. Yep, yep. You're right. You are very, very right. I mean, that segment just... Throwing it, from the, throwing it right out the window. We say it all the time. Sets the tone, and if Sekhmet's not having it, neither, neither are you. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Sekhmet's one of those monsters that really dictates the flow of the game for you. You know, she's not as reliable as Gany, but she comes with a few extra benefits, right? She's got that incredible base speed. She has that skill, too, that provides lasting uh, lasting results through the game. And, of course, she can, she can steal buffs, too. She can steal the buffs, too. But, like, you know, if you miss it, boy, do you feel it. And cool. oftentimes, it's going to dictate whether or not you win or lose that game. Uh, it's a high impact, high risk monster, yeah. uh, and and this is it. At, at this type of level, little things like that matter, right? Both of these players did amazing, and we saw True Well come out on top. Yeah, you know what else I'm seeing? Another code at the bottom of the screen. So make Ooh. sure you redeem that one. Again, if you're on Android, you can just type that coupon code in on your device under the events page. But if you're on iOS, like some of us here at the table, then all you got to do is interact with the link that's being posted in chat by our lovely mods. So thank you again to the mods for looking after the chat and looking after posting up the codes. And thank you to Stoic, because he always does such a good job of sharing those links with us. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're right. I, I'm not able to do that right now, yeah. but I will. I will be sharing those. It's always later. the first thing yeah. you do after. Stoic, we love you. Stoic always looks after us. It's awesome. It's so great. Guys, we still have the greatest game of the whole night up ahead of us today, Lest versus True Whale. And what a game it's going to be. And we have another thing, Evan. The 300K viewership goal. You better share that link. Share Watch the link. it. Get yeah. your grandma, your dog on a tablet, something. <laughs> I need that devil mod. Yes, and as much as I'd like them to stay and watch the whole thing, they don't even have to. It's an accumulated <laughs> viewership <laughs> award, so they don't even have to be there concurrent the whole time. It's, it's a late. little bit late for grandmas, you it, know, it at is. this time, but it's okay. Just wake their, them up a little bit. 
<laughs> exactly. Yeah, just wake him up, send him the link, get us the Devil Mon. Everybody, we'll see you right back here for the grand finals shortly. See you back here soon. Bye bye. Congratulations to the top two players for the grand final. Cause they broke up less than two well day cup. Oh, semi final is the du dead ma game plik pan the lot vela nekap. Let out big po chai ying ting. That chill the kawa some rap ne robs to tie one nee nekap grand final ja du dead kem kon kwan nee nekap. Lago yani sanka one nekawa. How could you kabra jon job gan? Nanon wa mi oka nekan de rap kong rawan club ban pa yang nanon nekap. แต่ว่าตอนนี้เดี๋ยวจะเรียนเชิญทุกคนนะครับในการรับชมแมตช์ไฮไลท์นะครับในรอบของเซมิไฟแนลแล้วกลับมาในชุดหน้าในรอบของการชิงชนะเลิศระหว่างเลสและทรูเวลใครจะครองถ้วยนี้ไปนะตอนนี้เชิญรับชมได้เลยครับ
Welcome back to the grand final of SWC 2023. ตอนรับนะครับกลับเข้าสู่ศึกตัดสินครับของ SWC 2023ครับซึ่งในครั้งนี้ครับอย่างที่บอกว่าประเทศไทยเป็นเจ้าภาพในการจัดการแข่งขันนะครับและก็ถ่ายทอดไปทั่วโลกเลยเพราะฉะนั้นขอฟังเสียงเชียร์ให้กระหึ่มกึกก้องในรอบกรานด์ไฟนอลหน่อยครับยอดเยี่ยมมากเป็นเจ้าบ้านที่สุดยอดมากครับแล้ววันนี้เดี๋ยวเราจะได้รู้ว่าระหว่าง2คนนี้นะครับก็คือเลสหรือว่าทรูเวลจะสามารถถือครองถ้วยรางวัลแห่งเกียรติยศนี้ไปได้นะครับเอาละครับต่อจากนี้ไปนะครับเดี๋ยวเราจะมาพบกับ2ผู้เข้าแข่งขันที่แข็งแกร่งที่สุดนะครับของ SWC 2023ครับ Alright all the summoners it's time To meet our top two players of SWC 2023. Hoi, Simbro, b u t o n r a p k a p l e s t และนี่คือโฉมหน้านะครับของสองผู้เข้าแข่งขันท่านแรกครับนั่นก็คือ Let's go ผมโอเค Please stand by at your station และมาถึงคู่แข่งนะครับที่สมน้ำสมเนื้อมากๆในการแข่งขันครั้งนี้นะครับที่จะมางัดกลยุทธ์ทุกอย่างเพื่อพิชิตคู่แข่งเดี๋ยวมาดูว่า
สำหรับอีกหนึ่งท่านจะสามารถเอาชนะเป็นแชมป์ครั้งแรกของเขาได้หรือไม่นะครับนั่นก็คือชูเวลครับผมเอาละครับต่อไปนะเดี๋ยวไปโจกับชูเวลได้เลยครับวันนี้นะครับหลายๆคนที่มาเชียร์เนี่ยมีการเขียนการเชียร์นะครับรวมไปถึงว่าทายผลเรียบร้อยแล้วใครที่เชียร์สองคนนี้อยู่นะครับถือว่ามีโอกาสลุ้นและจะได้รับรางวัลใหญ่ที่สุดในวันนี้ไปครอบครองจากสมุนเนอร์สวอลอย่างแน่นอนนะครับตอนนี้สำหรับพังเลสเนี่ยเตรียมตัวแล้วครับที่สเตชันนะครับไปพบกับเอเล็กแล้วผมดูเวลเอาชีหน้ามาแล้วชีหน้ามาแล้วเอาเอาจริงแน่นอนหลายคนบอกว่าเป็นเวลเหมือนกันแต่นี่คือชูเวลเวลที่แท้จริงครับเดี๋ยวมาดูตัวจริงว่าเขาจะนิ่งคิปคูได้แค่ไหนครับรบมือต้อนรับชูเวลลิสต์แตนบัตยูสเตชันนี่คือศึกตัดสินครับใครจะสามารถนิ่งควบคุมสถานการณ์ได้ดีกว่ากันวันนี้ได้รู้กันนะครับในรอบของ Grand Final SWC 2023ตอนนี้ทุกคนพร้อมไหมครับถ้าพร้อมส่งเสียงเชียร์ให้กับทั้งคู่อีกรอบหนึ่งหน่อยส่งหน้านี้ต่อนะครับให้กับเราแคสเตอร์ของเราได้เลยสวัสดีครับทุกคนนะครับวันนี้เป็นวันที่ที่สุดของการแข่งขันในประเทศFor this grand finals right now, you know, it's a really interesting question here. We we see these incredible players up there. We've got True. We've got Les. It honestly, it could be either one of them. I think both of them are phenomenal players up here. Both of them have the right to be champions. I think we're going to have some great matches. I think we are going to have some incredible matches today, guys. Wow! It is great evasion. It was, it was a great way to dodge the question there, Stoic. But I feel like the frames are telling me everything I need to know. This is going to be it's going to be awesome. We've got one last best of five, and it is the most important game of the entire day: Last versus True Whale. Seppi, how are you feeling about this game? It's a game that it has a lot of history. Right, Evan? Oh, yeah. It's super interesting to think about all of these years, six years of SWC. We've gotten four Chinese champions, two APAC champions, no EU, no Americas region champion so far. Yeah. So this is another shot at getting that first one. A lot riding on it, big rivalries, players that have been here for a long time. So. I'm just excited and rooting for a game five. I That's what I want. It. We haven't seen a full five game set this entire day so far, and I'd love it to be this one. There's so much on this game right now. We got True Whale trying to get every title available in Summoner's War, and then we've got Lest, who's trying to defend his title of world champion. He's coming back from 2019 to get it again now in 2023. We talked about this a little bit before, Seppi, but he's been in this position before. In 2019, we had Thompson there at the precipice, ready to take the championship, but Lest was able to snag the win, and he, he's, he's, he might do it again. Yeah, he's looking very strong today, only dropped one game. True Will, similar thing, both of them have very similar play styles, but with different monsters, right? So I think that's one of the interesting things today. One of the common monsters that we've been seeing is the segment. So let's see if they're gonna prioritize that, steal it away from each other, but we've seen True Will using more of the Laura, Water, Ryu, Chung Pong, and then less preferring the Chandra and the Charlotte. So has he prepared something unique for this matchup? Did he already expect this? We know Drill has been one of the favorites. So he's probably prepared, you know, for Diligent, for Pink Roy, for True Will. He's like, I will see this, guys. So I have to be ready. No, I do believe we're going to see something different. 
So whatever it may be, we'll find out here, guys. Very, very shortly, we're going to be getting into those matches right here. I'm just, I'm super excited to see what, and very curious what's going to be happening. There, these players are locked in right now. Drew Whale not looking nervous, looking like he's in his element, which, again, he was, he was probably a little anxious coming into this, but he has no reason to be. He's one of the best players in the world. Same with Lest. Both these guys are dialed in and ready to rock and roll. Here we go. Round number one in the final match, and there couldn't have been a better time for us to reach the accumulated viewership reward. We got there, 300,000 reach, which means we are all getting a Devilmon and five elemental scrolls of our choice. Wow, that's pretty incredible. Here we go, wind. I'm gonna get my Jameer finally. Fingers crossed, Annabelle being flashed. I don't think that that's what's going to get picked. 100% that's not what's going to be picked here. We've got the <laughs> yeah. pre-banned Shallot, and we have that Wajet getting pre-banned out here. I don't think he locks in that Annabelle. So look at the eyes, look at the eyes. I'm watching you, Lest, here. I see that. Wow. Annabelle's going to be going, and the Chandra's coming back here. We've seen this before. And he uses the time. This is a taunt, Stoic. He's doing it. True Will now with a response. He's trying to see a reaction out of him. The Laura coming out, very consistent. He doesn't have the wedge yet. So let's see if we see the segment, the priority. I really like that pick because he knows he can pick the Water Ryu later. Exactly. Yeah, I think these are great picks here from True Will. Kicking things off with Laura. We've got that segment in the field. Chandra to no surprise here. Next time, I think we should just lock that unit in instead of playing around. But we've got two other picks coming in right here. <laughs> Let's see if last brings over the already expected Charlotte and something to replace this segment because it's one of his priority picks. He's really putting some thought to it. Five seconds coming down. Etna is here. So is the Charlotte still coming out? Or nope. the Chi Wu? This makes a lot of sense. Yeah. The Chi was something that oh, good point. Super, the Charlotte was pre banned. Thank you, Evan. That's My right. beautiful assistant. So 24 speed leads <laughs> hitting the field here. Les is ready to take turn one if he needs to, and I do think he has to because I feel like yeah. he's a little overcommitted right now. But I do like that. We talked about the, Sh uh, the Chandra. He has two mm -hmm. picks here to swap to go Bruiser if he needs to. We get our first speed lead coming out of True Will, and it is going to be a 33, and I think that's very, very important that he yeah. locks in one of those. Vanessa, I think, is also a really good unit to opt to go Bruiser as well. So Ooh. quite interesting that we're going to see the Camilla right here because I do think <sighs> Les still commits to the turn two with these next two picks. Is the Camilla a bit too there early? To, to be picked, I Not don't know. Not because I do think he goes bruiser with these next two yeah. picks, and I think the Camilla's perfect. You know, you know what would be a great pick? Last pick right here with everything that we've seen on the field? Tian Lang. Tian Lang shuts down this Etna, shuts down the Alexandra, and he can ban this Kinky. I think the Kinky was something that Truvo is going to be taking yeah. to wrap up his draft and go with the Kinky and Camilla. I think that was a great take from Lest. Yeah, let's see. I, I would like that Kinky removed, please. I don't want to play against it if he picks a Tian Lang. If he doesn't pick a Tian Lang, then I think this Etna is very, very dangerous, and he can bring maybe some sustain like a Shizuka. Yes, yeah, I love that. I, I think so Shizuka. High this tells me right he's banning the Etna. I, I think that's a, that's the right pick here. You know, we ban out that Etna. Yeah. We get our turn one. Uh, well, so I feel like we're not getting a ton of value out of our segment right now. Curse the Beautiful, I think, is one of the bigger mm -hmm. things that we're getting because, like, we're looking at a Kinky. We don't care too much. Yeah. We're looking at an Alexander. We don't care too much yeah. about that. I mean, I guess you get a little bit of value um, getting those the resets on our, our Chiwu and our Chandra, but it's just not that great. 100% <gasps> getting the ban on the Shizuku. What? Couldn't handle that unit. Very surprising to he see that. He banned the Chandra? The Chandra. Yeah. yeah, I'm surprised. I don't know. I'm very afraid of this Etna. He guarantees the 33, so he needs to outspeed, and he needs to reset the Etna. All right, let's see what happens, guys. We get into our Woo! very first round with Les and True. Well, Ethna is going to be taking first turn right here. There's that third skill going out, not getting the stun on top of the lore, but we do have a segment. We'll find out the pace of the match right here. Very interesting. Outsped with a 33 on the other side. The Laura will get it stripped, but there's a not a lot of follow-up. Only the freeze from the Camilla. He tries to, well, I follow myself up. I can do whatever you want. Doesn't oh, get us. Only a stun. one slow, though. Yeah. No stuns. Only gets one slow on top of the Alexandra as well. We do have strip defense break is going out onto the Nessus. This is the unit that he, uh, Trill really wants to remove from yeah. the field here. You need to freeze the Alexandra, though. It's going to create so many problems. He goes for it and gets the freeze. Yeah, it does get that freeze here. Uh, Les needs to remove unit. He I thought he was going to go and just single out this Laura, but he is going to be taking out that, not taking out that Laura just yet. Curse the Beautiful is the perfect time for this right now. We need to get those glancings out there, and that's going to set up Truel really, really well to get those defense breaks on top of that. But it doesn't kill the Etna. Now the Etna removes the Laura, and the Chiwu can try to sleep. No sleep. 
do we have the removal of the Etna now? Let's see what happens. He's going for the kill. Yes, sir. Kill with the additional turn as well. Can he get the sleep here on top of this Alexander? I think he has to take advantage of that defense break here. He's got to stay on top of that Alexander right now. Take advantage of the defense break. Keep pumping that damage into this unit. Yeah. Uh, this is going to come down to Camilla and Kinky. If he kills this Alexandra right now, the Kinky will be the main problem. You need to keep a unit that can put some death break on it so the Camilla can freeze and kill him, but you have to be very careful. Yeah, Laura gets dropped right there, which is totally fine because we do still have Vanessa on the field and Vanessa's gotta go, but so does that Camilla. I think Camilla mm -hmm. is really is a massive problem for less though. So defense break's yeah. gonna be landing on top of that Chiwa. No additional turns gonna be coming out here. We're gonna see this like, weird cycling thing that's going to be happening right here with this Alexandra is attack broken, so it's not going to be an abundance of uh, damage right there. She gets I caught. With the skill one, go into the chi get that second skill No, he kills, there. he kills, he takes it. Oh, one HP, Oh, he does get the initial turn, so he's going to be turned back into the unicorn, looking for the kill, doesn't get that kill, though we do have skill three available. Yeah. I think he should just go and take out a unit here. Could be the yeah. chi -woo, could be the Alexandra. Either way, I think he gets his value, though. Take the chi -woo because now he gets the kick. Let's see. Finishes one unit. It's gonna be the sisters, the Valkyries. Can he kill one of the two units and then get the? I think he goes after the Alexandria. Alexandria. I agree. Oh no! Didn't get the kill on the he didn't kill. You need wow. to kill her right now. He gets it. And, and freeze. the freeze on top of that kinky as well, which is really, really big right there. Oh. But the initial turns coming through here, looking to get the kill on the Vanessa, he needs not getting the it. Death Honestly, I think he goes death break right on top of that kinky and try to do what he can. Never revive. Mind, that was great. He had to yeah. revive up there. <laughs> freeze goes out on top of the kinky now. He's got to stop this unit. This is the best yeah. unit to put out here to try and capitalize on he that. He guarantees the oh. kill, Stoic. He's not risking anything. He's going to be a 3v1 right now. The kinky lands Look at that death damage break. on top of Camilla. If he procs, this is a problem. Doesn't proc. He needs a stun. He needs a skill yeah, he's two. He's got to go skill two and hopefully get the slow there with that. Breathe. Get the, the slow. slow. Which is really, really big right there. Death Opens break. up with a defense break. Can he land it, though? He needs the death break. No. He is going to get resisted. Vanessa is going to stay the alive freeze. just a little longer. Is he able to get the freeze? Now, keep in mind, defense break is really, really big. We saw that damage no. already hitting the Camilla. It is oh. rather large right Brock. now. He needs a proc right now to have the death break. <laughs> And resist. Yep. No! Oh, he goes to the skill too. Keep them no. in the door. Gets a double kill. Massive damage from that last. Taking round one away from True Will. Wow. One point on the table already. Should he have gone for the freeze on the Kinky instead of confirming the kill on the Chi Wu? That's going to be the question that's yeah. going to be haunting us yeah. for a little while. Yeah. Well, the thing, resistance is king, man. Resistance yeah. is king because Kinky refused to pick up any of those things. No defense breaks, no freezes, no none of that. So, like, in my opinion, like, it really didn't matter too much. But, uh, uh, dude. I don't uh, know. I, I got to say something in here. I'm swapping my MVP of the day because Kinky has so <laughs> many <laughs> games. Crazy. Kinky is destroying Everyone. Kinky's been wild. Are we sure that that's not an LD5? Are we sure it's only four stars? No, we're I'm still checking. Sure. Can People I get are, one, It's please? under investigation, actually. <laughs> People are still looking to see if they can find the fifth star. Can someone message, come to us, and ask them to send a Kinky? I'm on it. Next on time it, I dude. summon an LD, please. I'm on it. Yeah, <laughs> Kinky has had a great showing today. I think that that was really well played by True Whale. There is that one question. I'm still kind of a believer that I think he should have locked down the Kinky instead. It would have been a chance. You know, it's not guaranteed. Could have missed it, but it would have been an extra I chance. I think the reason I that I say you. it is because the the worst case in that situation is not too bad. If you let the yeah. Chiwu live one more turn, it didn't have skills. Yeah. So it w the worst case isn't too bad. Worst case is sleep something and it gets woken up by Kinky next turn. It's like not a big deal. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And let me tell you something. Amazing first draft from both sides. I really like the pivots. You know how Will went into the Bruiser. And like you said, Stoic, lest stole away the kinky because I think True Will was going to pick that last. Yep, yep, I agree. I think that was going to be a pick that uh, True was going to be bringing out there and was not able to do that. Yep. I think kinky, also in True Hands, was going to be extremely volatile going up against Les Draft. Yeah, and now he has access to the Charlotte that I didn't see on the first one and because she was pre-banned, but now we'll see if the Sekhmet will swap sides, right? Will True Will steal the Sekhmet away once again and take it with yep. turn one I or will let it? I'm really, really liking the Chandra preban right now because mm -hmm. I feel like this is a unit that he keeps bringing back, and it, it's such a great combination yeah. with the Kinky. I think I yeah. really, really like this. And I'm, I'm feeling extremely inspired when I when I keep seeing this right now. Truewell opting to go with a cigar or the fi uh, Wind and Bison right mm -hmm. here. Charlotte and Sekhmet coming to, uh, to to an early draft. <gasps> Stop it. Please, it's not. No, I no, love no, 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 no. that. More mind games. He's playing mind games with you now. That's not mind <laughs> games. That's uh, 
You know, I don't want to say what it is. Here we go. Masha looking interesting, but he's going to go with a segment. We know it. The interesting thing will be, now that he doesn't have the Chandra speed lead, does True Will lock in the more so less doesn't use the more or does he you know chill bring on another speed lead and tian lang doesn't look strong yet but last match it looked very very viable i mean tian lang is okay because obviously yeah. we've got charlotte who's going to be boosting up attack bar. i do like, I like this the juno, juno but look out for that masha because it, it's been super yeah. super consistent anybody dropping a juno onto the field there look what he already has i mean this is yeah. a cigar on the field and then there's the uh, the widget like Masha still super strong right now. Yeah, and let's remember but that would be too thing. much fire too. Though, yeah, so yeah. I don't Not, think Les is gonna do that. Not right he now. has the Kitian Dashang that hasn't appeared yet. The Masha shows. Wait, double water. Yep. Let's go double water and play against this Camilla and Chow. Yep. Yeah, Camilla I mean, and Chow. Uh, yeah. Camilla <laughs> and Chow. Everybody has a Chow in the back pocket. Bring back the Chow. 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 Do you guys I, hear the crowd? No. Nobody wants to see <laughs> Camilla is going to be. I love the Abelio. Abelio is great. great. And then Camilla. Abelio, Camilla. Oh, oh, oh. Kinky. Yeah, yeah. That's very fair. Very okay. fair. Oh, oh yeah. Doman. Ban that very Ban quickly. It. Ban. <laughs> Ban that unit. Play against the yeah, fort. That's, that's hilarious. That is gone. Yeah, that I've is not I've never seen a unit so here. gone before. <laughs> that's know. wild. I, I do think that. The Abelio is the ban right here. The Kinky looks very dangerous, but I think the Abelio creates a lot of disruption. I agree. And, and oh, <gasps> oh, he's gonna what? rez it. He wants, he oh, wants to rez. Rez it. Both rez players it. have surprised us. They have some information over there. I'm very afraid of what this Abelio can do. And then on the other side, the Doman. He has no stoppage for the 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 Duman. Like yeah. It's going, it's, it's, it's happening. Reset. It's going to do whatever it wants. Goes for the Abelio, actually, not even for the M. Bison. Reset gets the glancing. glancing. Defense break does land on top of Chibu, though. Gets it. Let's see. Second skill. Third yep. skill oh, on no. the Kinky. Can he remove? Oh, no. Can he remove this M. Bison? Yes. No. Double resist, Stoic. Yep, 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 yep. We'll see what happens here. We've got a second skill. I think he has to go for the second skill. Uh -huh. and <gasps> Double the spare stun, which was really, really nice there. Yeah. Still has that defense break sitting on top of the Chiwu, but once again, keeping this Doom on back is going to be really, really important. The glancing is so powerful. It didn't do anything because of the three fire units. Now he can try to remove this Chiwu or stun the segment. He goes Ooh, for the nice Chiwu. stun there. I think you confirm kill at this point, unless you're going to go for the stun on top of the Masha. I, I would say stun right here. He confirms the kill. Uh, the Juno will take a very important turn. He could try to stun the Masha once again. He's got to stun the Masha. He's got to keep going after that unit. Make sure you get that early dismount on it as soon as possible. You know, you get another unit down while you're about to lose your Kinky. Yeah. You know, you got to know that's going to happen. The no glancing. Out he there. went for it, even with the glancing. Now there's be an opening. It's a 3v3 stoic. Needs the tick. To dismount. Yeah, and the time's ticking on the kinky, right? It is. Even if you dismount it right now, we know this kinky will be gone soon. So he needs the abelio. The abelio, I think it has the skill right now. Big oh, brock. But it's, gonna be dying but it's right a bad after brock. This, though. Get that yeah. dismount. You gotta dismount that Masha. Often to not go for oof. it though. Oof, oof, oof. This is a very important moment. He will dismount it with the Abelio. He does it. Yep, that, that was super necessary. Big rock! Oh, the the heel! Not be mattering too I know, much here, I but know. He's going to go for those provokes. I would go with the hit. The, I think he's always going the kill, for the wild The kill, the kill, yes! The kill! I like it! He gets the though. kills. Yes, sir. It's going to be a 2v2 stoic. But I think the Abelio takes this home. The Duman still is too far away from the skills. The Juno pumping a lot of damage. Even if the Karma comes on, she needs one more turn to have it. He, he can't kill two units. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be really, really tough for uh, Les to get it. Yes, sir. Right here. Finish really up really that nice. Masha. Yep. Bringing it back. Stun the Doman. <laughs> she can remove one unit, but I don't think she's going to be around for four turns. That's right. Juno is definitely the unit that you want her to go after mm -hmm. right there. Keep pumping that first skill. Get the attack bar. Do whatever you can. Uh, you hold on to that second skill. I really yeah. hope he's not going to do that. Look for some stuns here. He's not able to get stunned. Does get resisted here. Looking for her despair. No Doesn't despair. get it. Doesn't get it. The interesting thing will be that he gets the karma. Can he survive four turns, Stoic? He needs a big hit right here. Yep. A stun would be marvelous. I wouldn't even go for skill two. No, nope, I would just I go stun. Even, I'd go stuns, yeah. Under yes, no. he gets stuns. it. Another go, stun. Go, go do the stun again. Yes, sir. No Another one. He does go for the wild. Oh, 
That was very heal, impressive, please, though. sir. Yeah, he, ne he definitely needs to heal before he gets that other uh, 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 the, the mark of death coming out here. Uh, this is very intense. Very. He has the mark of death. It comes out. He hasn't missed one. Can he kill it? He needs he to do this stuck. right here. No, it doesn't kill it. This is too close. Stoic, can oh he kill it? Oh my God, it's so low. That should be enough there to get the kill, though. Holy shit! Oh, Drew Will! One more point. One point on the board. Oh my god. He, Ladies and he gentlemen. He made some scary decisions, to be honest with you. I was very comfortable with just going skill one, skill one, skill one. On a nice edge, he yeah. won that one. That was, the, that was the last possible turn. There were no more turns <laughs> after that turn. After that, if he if he couldn't do it, it was over. One way or the other, that was it. That was pass, die in your upkeep. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. That was that was die to mannequin. That's what that was. That was crazy. The last possible opportunity to take that win, and True Whale did it. Now both players at one one. I've gone on record and said this is the, my favorite point, where no one's at risk of winning the game right now. It's just feeling each other out. Winning the game is a risk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one's at risk of winning the whole thing. This is this is it. So no one's at match point. Okay, wow, stoic. So uh, your glasses are the same. Do you still feel the same way? Um, hey, we're going into round number three. All right, you and this got is it. gonna be really, really wild. The fact that we're sitting at a 1-1 right now is looking great for us to get into our game five. That's what we really want to see. We really want to see the game five. I want to see some more excellent drafting. Do I I don't know how I feel about being at the edge of my seat like that again for that. That was a little nerve wracking. I want me. that three more times, oh, by God, the way, please. and then one second. If Questions were bullets. Stoic would be Neo. He's dodging. <laughs> Boy's dodging. <laughs> He's dodging. Some slow mo, beautiful dodging oh. right here. And game number three, Evan, this is the moment. This is the moment. Man, True Whale looked that dome in straight in the eyes and said, I'm unafraid. <laughs> that was crazy. He looked at death right in the, <laughs> the eye. The curse of death. <laughs> Not afraid. We're going back to the Wedjet. Charlotte pre-ban. Who would have thought? Charlotte and Chandra, and, uh, the Cha-Cha, getting cha -cha. pre-ban yeah. in the World Finals. Never I did I'd not see, see this. Never thought I'd see it. Sagar almost locked in there. Less thinking about changing <laughs> the, the most, pace a little bit. <laughs> the most legitimate first. I know he's not playing around anymore. <laughs> no. He's actually. Oh, thinking oh about he's definitely playing around. That one, he's flashing the Vanessa, with was Vanessa a little... but he gets the Chandra. Yep. True well. Looking at it, we know that he pre-banned the Chandra and he banned the Chandra. So he doesn't want to face this monster. He goes with a little bit of change of pace. Goes with the Oliver this time. 33%. I know you're a huge fan, right, Stoic, of, fan of the, the difference. I'm a Vanessa, Vanessa first pick over the Oliver. But you know what, Oliver? We'll, we'll see what happens. I feel like this is going to be talking about like what he's going to be bringing in here. So we already have one mm -hmm. stripper. I'm expecting to see two more strippers in there. Maybe like a water Ryu, but that really depends what happens. So I really like the Chandra. I think this is an excellent play from Les. Good point. The segment coming out, as expected, is it going to be the Etna, like in game number one. Worked out really well. Very fast unit. Outsped even with the 24%. It's the Kinky wow. with the priority. Yeah, that is too funny that we're going to be seeing that. So I can't help but think, like, there's a lot of time to address that. Like, what, yeah. what bruiser do you really Mo like that? Mo Lung. Mo uh, Lung. Yeah. Very, very aggressive. I, I don't know how I feel about a Mo Long, especially when we have like a segment already showing out there. I think Shizuka is great. I think Juno is quite interesting. Juno is okay. I, I think Juno has better situations to come on in. And you know what would be good too in this matchup? And you're gonna fully agree with me. A Miles in that in place of that of one of those two units a miles versus any of those three is really strong and miles still looks pretty good to be I, honest I really even like with a bird miles to, to yeah. respond to the uh, the to the kinkies i i, I yeah. do agree with that i think miles would have been great verdi heal very very interesting we've seen this verdi here is this triple revenge bird I, I don't think you know what i mean you're looking at this draft the only thing he's going to triple well no he's going to triple revenge oh you got to ban that julian yeah you know julian you got to ban that julian double vampire yeah. rap draft very interesting and the bird is very strong here why because even though there's control, there's not a lot of re reliable control, right? So he can bring back your units, get on that sustain, make sure that the Chandra gets multiple turns. So, yeah, it's going to be difficult to play against those two. Yo, uh, oh, banned. Uh, I really like the Rika pick. Yeah, I really I like really the Rika pick, like too, but we know what that is. So, yeah. I, I mean, Truo wants to see his four units go through, yeah. and that's what that says to me, though. But I think there's a ban going out on top of that segment. Segment's going to get banned out Wait, here. question. Yeah, do you leave the Julian and make sure he's reset? The Vert is banned. 
I like that. But the problem right now is the segment takes turn one, and you can just try to reset this Oliver, and then you're done. How do you deal with the Julian? I don't know how you deal with the Julian, because it's not an abundance of damage. A lot of it, yeah. like additional damage that he has out here. And obviously, Laura <gasps> brings a lot of damage as well. That's the great stat right there. You get that reset landing on top of the Shizuka. Interesting choice. Interesting choice. I think this looks like a very Holy good game strip. for Oliver. Nice stun. Very, very good. Let's we'll see where this damage is going to be going into. Keep going on the Julian, you know, pump some damage. Take life away of the rest of the team. He tries to Not go in yet. here. He can reset, take the attack bar away from the Chandra, and then reset the Julian. I, I agree with that strategy, just not just yet. Not, okay. not, it's too early to, to, to do that going into the GM. And then You're get, afraid get of the step. attack bar game co because of the nemesis? Got it. Yeah, that's that's definitely safer. I would say he goes for the increased cool time, and it's a despair. Despair all of them. Yes, sir. Just like Mr. Sloths. See, right now in the position of Julianne, like I get it, maybe you know try to get more despair yeah. stuns off. He's going to take a turn either way. Justified there. Yeah. Right. yeah. Keep going. He wants to remove. Oh. Nice little additional turn. Skill 2 goes right back into that uh, uh, Laura. Laura. Use it like a Ventilate. Oliver is good, That's too. That's what we like to see. Yeah. He needs a proc. No proc from the Julian. Here we go. Ooh, Gets a nice good stun. stun. There with the Chandra. Very, very good there. Does he risk it all I and goes for, for the Kinky? Yeah, oh! oh my God. Stun. The despair, my friends. Oh, it's a 25% activation chance. He doesn't care about your resist. Oh, what? Oh. What? Oh. Is, that's happening right now. New meta. Let's he, go. He's playing. Getting a stun on top of the Shizuka. He's going to stop this dude from getting any turns here. Yeah. Nope. Opting to go for the Oliver. He wants to stop those despair stuff. Very strong resist. I'm glad that the Oliver got this resist. This might change things. He tries to reduce. He can finish the segment right now. Yeah, I think he goes. He has to take units away. It's definitely a great yeah. decision. Gets another despair stun. It's too cute right there. Stun on the other side. Back. He needs to reduce the Julianne right Correct. now. Correct. I agree. Oh, see, we're, we're almost in a position where yeah. we can. Look, we can keep sy siphoning life right now. It's really good. Beautiful additional turn, though, coming out of that Julianne. Julianne. That's why I wanted to reduce the attack this, bar. Uh, Laura. Yeah. He goes, oh, oh one HP. Interesting. So we are going to get a turn out of that Oliver. Oliver yeah. not being removed is really, really big. Looking for a despair stun on top of the Chandra, not getting it. If we get a additional turn, it's going to be really to reduce, wild right now. Reduce right there, and then. The, the chance of stunning with the Oliver or stunning with the Laura. Here we go. He has one more reset. Can he get it? Is he going to Chandra? You just go right into that. Uh, he goes for he goes, it. He goes right into the Chandra. Does he, if he gets stuns right here, this yeah. is huge. If he he's doesn't, he's it. dead. Oh, that was a really good stun outside yeah. there, but the Kinky is once again going to be very, very impressive. It's a difficult unit to have to Ooh. deal with right now. Yeah. You got to you gotta go all Julian start right training. now. Yeah. Yeah. Start training. You got to go the all chance. Julian. I agree. I think you go right into the Julianne and keep that unit back here. I don't know. Ch Chandra's looking really, really low right now, so it'll start. He needs the unit. to bring back the Oliver, or he does it. No, 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 not just yet. I love that he went with that though. And I, I think know. again, you keep going to that Julian starts. Yeah, that life. Yeah, the Julian super squishy. Uh, Look how low the Chandra's already yeah. getting though. I'm very afraid of this Julian though. I, I knew he the has, Julian was going to be yeah, terrifying he, though. I'm, he has I'm terrified the, of it as well. Every turn he has it stoic. You need to bring something back. He goes for the Laura. Uh, she doesn't have skills. Now you need to kill the Chandra. You Just have to. damage on him. Good job. Well, she has skills now, Peck. You 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 breathe right now. Very you slowly. Breathe. <laughs> yeah, you breathe very slowly. I mean, so the only thing that's really, really beneficial right now is that with that Juno, that Juno can keep going into this uh, He saves oh my it. God, Julian. He saves it. Oh my god, look at that so damage. Much damage. I you, you have go to go skill one. Yeah. Skill yes. one on the Julian. Yeah, I know. Look how low. Look how low he's able to get this kinky right now. So, but the kinky can after. finish the match right now it if really he procs. Can. Yep, that skill two mm. is down right now. Oh, it we doesn't hit it. it. No procs. Goes for the kill right there. <sighs> Honestly, I feel like he's at he's at a loss right Can now. Does go for it. Oh, oh my God! Doesn't no! right there. Wow. I think that's the play. I, I would that have was done the play. Exact that same was the play. play. He yep. needed the stun on the kinky to try to win and to kill if the he other team. That, that was stun, though. Yeah. Oh, my 100 percent. That was the play. That, that was, was the play. play. He saw it and he took it. That was Very it. close match, Stoic. I still go back to how much trouble was playing around that Julian. So much trouble to play oh, around. The Julian, Julian was a, was a frequent 
thorn in his side through the entire game. And yeah. finding that right moment to start attacking the Julian to drain the team, I think that was the I think it was the perfect timing, but ultimately the Julian proved to be a little bit too difficult. His recent buff now that he cleanses himself too at the start of his turn. Yeah. Uh, it's it's tough to play around and he does crazy damage on that skill too, man. You just never you never quite expect how much he's gonna do on that skill too. Yep. Yeah, and, and it's such a short cooldown, right? It's a proc away yeah. from killing oh. a unit. Uh, the thing was, I, I, I understand that when you don't have a lot of CC, the Verda Hill is just so oppressive, but I was more afraid of the Julian. I was case. too, but hey, Stoic, what about that Despair Oliver? I, I, you know, <laughs> I love There's it. so many times that I hear like, oh, Despair Oliver, I don't care. Why would anybody do that? Put that unit on violent. But you know what? It's crazy when it works. Yeah. It's crazy when it works, man. Yeah, and it oh, gets, it, because he's got that attack bar absorption too, he still gets comparable turns to a Violent Oliver, which is not something that you can say easily about other monsters. That flexibility is so cool. Here we go, everybody. We're going into the next round of this incredible set, Lest versus True Whale. Now Lest is at match point. That's this right. could be the last game of the SWC 2023 World Finals. Yep. Well, we finally get a game five stoic. That's what I want. Uh, I, want I mean, we all five. want to see the game five. The game five is just way too exciting, man. But boy, wh I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm we're, nervous. We're, we're sitting at match point right now for less. And Trua looking to keep himself alive in today's tournament, man. This is the finals right here. New pre bands locked in right here. Chandra and Laura. He continues with his strategy. Takes away the Chandra. Will he steal the segment right now? Or will he stick to his guns in this match with his backs against the wall? True will. Pick number one, Cigar. Now the response is quick, and it's the Chi Wu and the Charlotte. He puts it out very, very quickly. We know that the Kinky has been a priority. Does he take it early like less did last match? Kinky has been incredible today. I'd be super okay with the Kinky right now because he mm -hmm. went with the Chi Wu and a Charlotte. I think yeah. that's great if you actually dropped in the Kinky and then opt to go with a, a you know, you go go speed lead kinky, I think that's great. Like, okay, never mind. He goes with the water reunion, he goes with the segment. He steals away the segment, but I think Les was already expecting that, and that's why we picked the Chi Wu. This is also an interesting game for the Light Monkey King. Hasn't appeared yet right now in this matchup. Or I think we see the does kinky he get the kinky? Yeah. I, I think we totally see the kinky coming out of Les again. It's very Aetna, great success, you know what I mean? Etna, very strong turn one. He's used the Zabala earlier today too, but we haven't seen it. And the Masha. Masha very strong against the segment, very strong against the Cigar. The question right now is, do we see a Wedge rounding out the second speed lead, or does he just go with a bruisery take, bringing that Kinky? We know the Les is well prepared for the Kinky though. Oh, there's the Kinky. It's out mm -hmm. here right now with the Fire and Bison as well. You know, kind of really bruises you up a whole lot. It's pretty good. It, 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 it's it's pretty good in my, in my opinion. We'll see what this last pick is. No. Oh, a Clara locked in. Wow, oh locked my in. God. I Very think unexpected. You potentially ban that out. I think I think he's gonna ban the Water Ryu, right? I think you gotta bend the Masha stoic actually. I think the Masha is the volatility. Like, does he bend the water Ryu? Does he bend the Kinky? The thing is, if he trusts his speed, he doesn't need to bend the water Ryu. And he bans the Kinky. But with a fire pick, triple fire, that tells me he's banning that. Right? He kinda yeah. telegraphed it. All right, well, well, let's see what happens. Bands are locked in. Water Ryu and the Shallot. HP lead for True Whale. Speed lead coming out for Les. Guys, this is match point for Les here. This could be it. Or True Whale looking to stay alive. Is getting into match number four right here with Ethna kicking things off. Ethna, does she go for the AoE or does she just go for the stun on this cigar? Goes for the cigar. Resistant. The safest play. Takes out, glancing on everyone. The Kinky still lands the Death Break stuns. Triple stun from the Clara Stoic. Yeah, we're going to be losing a unit right here to the Namasha. Yep. Namasha doing so much damage. Spreading, uh, going after this uh, uh, Fire and Bison. Fire and Bison looking really, really low right now. There is no sustain inside of True Whale. True Whale with a big skill, too, doing a ton of damage out on this field. Beautiful Revengers are coming out there as well. Defense breaks being reapplied to the Kinky. Kinky looking really low already. Yeah, I'm telling you, I would have liked to remove this Masha. The Masha can kill this Kinky. She's a very good unit. Whoa, oh, so much damage. That I'm is telling you. Not good. AoE. 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 Or, AoE. Or does he remove? Can he strip them? Oh, he has glancing. He, if he violence, he could, though. He could still strip. I, I think he, he, he could goes still strip right No, just go, just, go the, just go for the Just go for the segment. Just reduce so the Kinky takes a turn. He got it. Yes, he got it. He, got he it. did go for it. That is wild. The Kinky needs to survive. Oh, oh. 
does get the kill right there. Oh, Kinky. He does have another turn. I think Kinky he needs has a to go for the, the, the he's no, gotta stay on Edna. the Masha. Kill the Etna. Get rid of the Etna. You you have two units to remove the Masha. He goes for the Masha. I do think he has to go for the Masha though. Oh, uh, it, it doesn't make a difference at this point. You need to play 2v1. The Masha is too strong. Goes for the reset, resist it. You see, now he has to dump everything. If he had killed the Etna, he could go for the reset on the Masha. Oh, Can no, he get turn. it? He has a skill three up here. This is going to be a big reset, but this is going to be Cigar is going to be dropping right here. The segment once again. She failed and gave Defense the advantage to him. Oh, a big resist. Wait, second chance. I believe in second chances. Let's go, segment. No! Oh my God, he was not able to get that. Being able to hold. That's it's just. It's still having the immunity is absolutely insane. Can not you able to get it? Anything. Can you get it, please? Finally, or does he just go for a skill two to go additional damage? Yeah, he's going for the additional damage there. That's oh, it doesn't kill! It he's doesn't kill! He, he needs to get this the attack bar reduction with the provokes as yes. well. It needs to let. Doesn't he, get it. Reset this. Go for the attack breaks and try to keep your second. No, reset. Reset. The reset. You need the reset. No proc. No proc. Kill it. Something. Does he kill it with the skill two? Oh, my God! Oh, less! Less! Gets the victory over True Whale. At the last moment, Les takes the champion title for the second time. Resist. He is our 2023 Resist. world champion. What an incredible match, Evan and Stoic. This will go down for the ages. It's probably the best SWC we've seen. Down to the wire. Every little detail counts. Every miss reset. Oh my god, I'm never every drafting. Every resisted, every resisted reset. Yeah. Well, <laughs> every single what, resist. That's what brought him. It's kind of karma, you know, it brought him to the finals. A segment missing a strip and a reset. And now she did it twice. Wow. There he is. Our champion, Lest. The first two-time champion in the history of SWC. This is one for the history books. The most stacked bracket we've ever seen. The greatest games. And it was decided at the last possible turn again. Lest is our champion. Wild. Absolutely wild. Like, it's, it, it's so crazy. See, that, that's how it went down, man. Unbelievable. Kinky game plays, Masha, many surprising picks, even a Doman game with an Abelio, Charlotte Chandra. Who would have thought we've seen so many different monsters? Super fun gameplay. Congratulations to Les. Yeah, the journey of the draft is so crazy. Did you see where we came from with how, how even Les was like playing throughout his matches and just totally changing his, uh, his style of play. You know, go, obviously changing his style of play depending on like the player you're going up against. But it's so crazy to see how it developed to the very end and to see what was being prioritized with, uh, by both these players. Oh, yeah. And, and like you said, I, I love the pick diversity too. I like seeing so much Chandra today be it in the games or in the pre-bands. I, I, it was really cool. And also the last, the last game had a Clara in it. How cool is that? Yeah, like, and the Clara did amazingly well. She did such well. a great job. Oh, man, I was so nervous going into that. There was so much defense break in that last game. Kinky did not look comfortable in that Ooh, matchup yeah. at all this yeah. time. Yep, yeah, that was super, super nerve-wracking to see all of that go down there. I, I can't help just the words resistance, man, is, are haunting my dreams right now. That's so crazy. I can see the see text lingering just, over yes, you, too. It's still, you know, seeing, it's still lingering. I'm seeing it everywhere. <laughs> Resist. But it was... What a, what a great moment. I love that it was, again, two times in a row the last possible turn. It was like, yeah. that was it. The game was going to end after that. Everybody gets one turn, and then it's over. You know, that was A it. provoked Masha yeah. wins it all. You know, it's kind of crazy. Imagining it's one of the theme monsters. is the monster of the America's Cup, and it takes it away. You know, it's... Is there some irony there? Is there yeah, some divine sure. <laughs> irony there? You know, yeah. <laughs> something like that? What an incredible series of games, and also Les did just an impeccable job. I know, Seppi, I know that you, you knew, you knew that Les was going to do a great job today, didn't you? Yeah, I called it months ago, but you know what? True Will made us proud. Excellent drafting, excellent targeting. He played really well and came super close in a couple of games, only away, but Les came out on top in the end, Stoic. Yeah, he really did. Man, the Valkyries put in so much work right there. You know, that was the moment where I was actually really hoping for that skill to go into that, into the Kinky. 
you know. Hey, I mean, that word. All day. That word. There it is. It's gonna haunt my dreams, man. Resist is uh, that's a cruel mistress. It really is. It is. The kinky was so clutch. So much damage on that Camilla, right? Impressive. This was a great game too. The one with the dome and where True Whale let it through. That is not a monster that most players are. Even we called like, it as a ban. We, we saw yeah, the we, dome I, hit the field and was and banned. It, like, it there's no way. Is. Most players yeah. aren't comfortable fighting against it, but that's that is a sign that True Whale kept his cool and he was like, you know what? I can navigate this, and he did. And that was that it was awesome. It got too risky. It got dicey. Yeah. It got dicey, but it was it was great. It was it was uh, it was really this fun kill to watch. two was a bit risky. Let's talk about that. But uh, another interesting thing, if we look at this game right here, is that first game, Lest had Kinky, he won. Second game, True Whale had Kinky, he won. Guess who picked Kinky game three? Lest. Kinky. Well, well, like I said, it's the priority of these units going back and yeah. forth. You know what I mean? Like, we went from, like, Sekhmet, we, we go to Kinky. Uh, but like you know, it was changing all before as well. It's it's so crazy to see the development uh, as as you go player to player to player. Yeah. Uh, I, I just think that so Kinky wild. was a big hurdle to get over. You know, he won all matches in this grand finals. Ex it was three one last, three last one Kinky. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, ex yeah. It was yeah, except kinky. exactly except three the last one. Three one Kinky. Three one. Yeah. 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 I I think that he's probably the MVP of uh, of the day. Actually, yeah. he had such a great showing. Uh, if he had resisted that death break on the last game. That would have been, once again, 1v1 monsters. Out of the four games, three of them were decided by a 1v1. How crazy is that? How beautiful. Super fun to watch, I gotta yeah. say. And there's the Clara, which was a really good choice. Mm. Got those super clutch stuns. And, you know, True Whale did get some decent resists at the start here, too. You know, Kinky stayed up so he could keep revenging. Didn't get stunned by it, but really hung on towards the end here, too. But. Man, we're about to see it go down. We're about yeah. to relive the moment. I don't know about so the Masha, you know, hindsight's 2020. But banning the Charlotte when you have a lot of fire units and way to deal with it, but keeping the Masha, that was so close. Oh my god. Imagine if he procced right here. That would have been match. He procs, that's a dead Masha. <laughs> that would have been that would have been absolutely small details. Wild. Small details small details, small moments. You know, that was really well played by everyone involved. Drew Whale showed that he deserves to be here and less taking on the second championship title again in 2023 after his win in 2019. It was a great showing from him. One of my favorite tournaments in the history of SWC. Yeah, this actually. was a really exciting tournament. It really was, you know, like uh, uh, resistance RNG aside, like it was so incredible to see, you know, the players that we had today in today's tournament just felt like one of those insane brackets. Like if you could take just all these gems from every region, throw them in one, you'd have today's tournament. Like it really was, it was so good. Oh yeah, absolutely. I don't think we could have asked for a better bracket, nor could we have asked for a better final code. Here we go, everybody. Whoa. We've got an SWC scroll for everybody who redeems the coupon. Jamir, please. <laughs> that would be, <laughs> be amazing. It has a name on it. And the limited Temple of Wishes, the new place to get my 10,000 mana every day. Incredible. That's outstanding. That's Make sure to type in that code in the event section if you're on Android. Or if you're on iOS, you can redeem from the link. Just interact with that in the chat. Thanks to our mods. Guys, how lovely has this been? This has been such a great tournament. It really has. It's such a pleasure casting with you guys. This has been a great tournament run. Dude. Finally got to do it after all these years together. Finally. And Stoic, it's always a pleasure, man. Yeah, So always. much fun casting with you all the time. It was great being out here at Thailand with everybody here, all the players, casting with you guys, casting with all these wonderful casters that we have here. It was just been such a, it's been such a pleasure to, to be able to spend as much time as we have with everybody. Seven other languages, man. Yeah. Love all of our communities. Thank you for being with us here so late. And like I always say, it's not about the journey. It's not about the destination. It's about the company. It's about the company. It's about the company, the people <laughs> you do it with. Our friends at home, thank couldn't you so much for being with us. More. Yeah, thank you so much to everybody who's watching, being a part of this unit. This is the best part of the year for Summoners War players where we all come together as a community to celebrate the game that we love and the people who play it the best. What a tournament this was. It's such a fun viewing experience. I love talking over it with you guys. This is great. I, I really enjoyed it. And I can't wait for next year. 2024, I reckon, is going to be even better. Who knows? Yeah, maybe we could have a... Uh, 
Maybe Lest is going for the three-peat next year, Stone. <laughs> three-peat. Yeah, who knows? We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Let's, Let's see what the next balance patch brings. <laughs> Let's see if it talks about Kinky. Let's see if Kinky makes an appearance. Let's yeah. see if there's a name over there featuring Kinky. <laughs> Chandra's nerfed. <laughs> Sean needs Sean a buff needs because buff. he missed a couple stunts today <laughs> that I wasn't expecting. Hey, we saw her. Zero ragdoll today. And I mean, no I miles think it's about either. time we see. No, I can't even. With no that. miles. No raccoonie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that was it. That was that was uh that was the gem. Yeah, there was a lot of missing units today, but you know what? We'll see if a uh, balance patch helps anybody out in the next one. You know, we'll see if that brings anybody into the limelight, guys. From the table in Bangkok, Thailand, this has been Evan, Seppi, and Stoic. We've had such a lovely time casting today. Thank you all for watching. See you later. สำหรับแคสเตอร์ทุกทุกท่านนะครับจากทั้ง8ภาษาโปรเมอีกหนึ่งครั้งด้วยครับ Thank you all the casters Thank you very much for being here โอ้โหตอนนี้ปิดฉากเรียบร้อยอย่างสมบูรณ์นะครับสำหรับการแข่งขัน SWC 2023ครับและผู้ชนะคือ Last Yeah โอ้โหตอนนี้เขาสามารถเป็นแชมป์ได้อีกหนึ่งสมัยนะครับใครที่เชียร์เลสบ้างขอดูมือหน่อยครับใครได้เขียนชื่อลงไปในกล่องของการถ่ายผลว่าเลสชนะดูมือหน่อยโอ้โหเตรียมตัวลุ้นกันให้ดีเพราะว่าเก็บเซตที่จะมอบให้ยิ่งใหญ่กว่าตอนแรกที่มอบอีกนะครับแต่ว่าตอนนี้ครับมาถึงช่วงเวลาสำคัญครับของการมอบรางวัลให้กับผู้ชนะในทุกอันดับครับ alright it's time to present the awards To all the winners. ตอนนี้นะครับเดี๋ยวขออนุญาตเริ่มต้นในการมอบรางวัลนะครับเราจะเริ่มจากรางวัลของรองชนะเลิศอันดับที่2กันก่อนนะครับ So let's get started with the second runner-up, which has two winners sharing this honor. ซึ่งรางวัลนี้ครับมี2ผู้เล่นที่ได้รับไปเหมือนกันนะครับ And now may I kindly invite Mr. Martin Kim. C President of Come to Us Corporation. ขอเสียงโปรโมทต้อนรับนะครับท่านผู้บริหารนะครับมิสเตอร์มาร์ตินคิมนะครับในการให้เกียรติทำการมอบในครั้งนี้ครับเท่มากเลยโอ้โหสวัสดีครับว้าว And next, please welcome Mr. G. Hernan, Head of Business Group of Come to Us Corporation. อีกหนึ่งท่านนะครับมาแล้วสองท่านนี้จะเป็นผู้มอบนะครับแล้วขอเสียงปรบมือต้อนรับนะครับเพลย์ยอของเราครับ please welcome Dilijan and Ping Roy Woo! FC เยอะมากเลยตอนนี้มาแล้วนะครับ Dilijan นะครับแล้วก็ได้รับนะครับเป็นเหรียญรางวัลอันทรงเกียรตินะครับพร้อมกับเงินรางวัลมูลค่าสูงถึง 10,000 US ดอลลาร์ครับสำหรับแต่ละท่านนะครับมาพิงรออัพรอมให้กับทั้งสองคนหน่อยครับวู้และนี่คือผู้ที่ได้รับรางวัลนะครับอันดับ3ร่วมกับเราหรือว่ารองชนะเลือกอันดับที่2ขอเสียงปรบมืออีกครั้งหนึ่งด้วยครับให้กับติลิเจนและพิงลอยนะครับสมศักดิ์ศรีนะครับสู้กันมาแล้วเรียกว่างัดทุกกลยุทธ์นะครับแต่มันขึ้นอยู่กันหน้างานจริงๆว่าใครสามารถดิ้งได้ดีกว่ากันนะครับแล้วตอนนี้ก็ได้พูดชนะ Thank you very much for all of you Thank you so much Let's move on to the next award So please welcome Mr. Min Yong Jong Executive Producer of Come to Us Corporation on the stage to present the first run-up award. มาถึงรางวัลนะครับรองชนะเลิศอันดับที่หนึ่งครับเรียนเชิญนะครับมิสเตอร์มินยองจ้อ
เหมือนมี FC มาด้วยด้านหน้าและรองชนะเลิศอันดับที่หนึ่งขอเสียงปรบมือให้กับ Please welcome True World ดานโนนโอ้โหประกาศชื่อ True ใหญ่เลยนะครับจะได้รับเป็นเหรียญรางวัลอันทรงเกียรตินะครับและเงินรางวัลสูงถึง 20,000 US ดอลลาร์ครับ He will receive the SWC 2023 medal and 20,000 US dollar. ขอเซ็งปรบมือให้ด้วยครับ True Well ครับสมศักดิ์ศรีเช่นเดียวกันนะครับในครั้งนี้ Woo! Oh, oh, sound not good. Thank you very much for both of you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to crown the champion of the Summoners War World Arena Championship 2023. ถึงเวลาของการที่จะประกาศผลแล้วก็มอบรางวัลให้กับผู้ชนะเลิศอย่าไปทางการแล้วนะครับกับสื่อของ Summoners War World Arena Championship 2023ครับ Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. Chu Huan Li, CEO of Come to Us Corporation of All State, to kindly present the SWC 2023 medal, the prize money at 100,000 US dollars, and the British Championship trophy. To our champion, I sing from the top, Rab Cap, CEO of Come to Us Corporation, Cap, Mr. Chu Wan Lei. Chu Wan Lei, just like a superstar right now. You have a big fan club over there. ซึ่งจะได้รับนะครับขอรางวัลทรงเกียรติมากมายนะครับและตอนนี้ขอเสียงปรบมือต้อนรับกับแชมป์ของเราในครั้งนี้ครับเลสวู้เอาแชมเปี้ยนได้รับเป็นเหรียญรางวัลอันทรงเกียรตินะครับเงินรางวัลสูงถึง1 0 0 0 0 0 0ดอลลาร์ครับ The SWC 2023 medal and the prize money at 100,000 US dollars and the trophy of SWC 2023. And moreover, the winner who rises above all summoners will receive the Rakan figure, which engraves his name on it as a symbol of victory. There's only one piece in the world. สุดยอดมากๆนอกเหนือจากนี้นะครับที่1ยังได้รับฟิกเกอร์ราคันนะครับที่สั่งทําพิเศษจะมีการจารึกชื่อของเลสลงบนตัวฟิกเกอร์นี้มีเพียงแค่1ชิ้นบนโลกด้วยครับว้าวคอนเกรสเลสจิเยอดูเหมือนเขาชิวมากกันแล้วตอนนี้อัพรอมเบิร์กับทั้ง2คนด้วยครับ thank you very much to both of you you are the champion right now เดี๋ยวตอนนี้นะครับเดี๋ยวเราไปพูดคุยเซเล็กน้อยนะว่าตอนนี้เนี่ยเลสเขารู้สึกอย่างไรบ้างนะครับ Alright I think it's time to interview a little bit to talk a little bit with our champion right now Okay Okay เลสขอลามด้วยนะครับมามามา Could you please uh, One more shot One more shot to everyone ชูหน่อยชูหน่อย yeah <laughs> thank you very much ล่ามครับมาครับขออนุญาตนะครับได้พูดคุยกับทางเลสนิดนึงนะครับของล่ามของเลสอยู่ไม่เอ่ยมาเลยมาเลยมาเลยวันนี้นะครับฝ่าฟันมาจนถึงวินาทีอันทรงเกียรตินะครับโอเคมาครับด้านข้างเลยพูดคุยกันหน่อยอยากสอบถามนะครับว่ารู้สึกอย่างไรบ้างในการที่สามารถกลับมาคว้าแชมป์ได้อีกรอบบนเวทีของ SWC ในครั้งนี้ครับในปี2023ครับนี่คือหลายตัวอีกทีอย่างได้ SWC กับไต้ชอยอะไรอย่างไม่กำศักดิ์เออฮันโก้ชิงนั้นยินดีที่สุดแล้วก็ยังไม่ได้เล่นเลย
ผมรู้สึกดีใจมากที่ได้เป็นแชมป์เอ็กซ์เพรสซีครั้งที่2ครับแล้ววันนี้เนี่ยอยากจะมีอะไรบอกกับแฟนแฟนทุกคนที่มาเชียร์เรารวมไปถึงว่าคนที่คอยสนับสนุนมาตลอดเส้นทางของการแข่งขันในครั้งนี้ไหมครับตัวนี้ยังจีเชลเลยอีกช่วงคุณจงว่าจะเลี้ยงพันยาวให้เขาแค่จีเชลเลยพันยาวเลี้ยงไม่ต้องเลี้ยงกองขอบคุณทุกท่านที่มาชมเราในครั้งนี้ก็ขอบคุณมากแฟนๆที่เชียร์ผมมาตลอดนะครับผมรับได้ครับโอเคเพราะฉะนั้นนะครับขอเสริมปรุงบันดาลังอีกครั้งให้กับแชมป์ของเราในครั้งนี้ครับ Let's go ผม Summoners War ทุกทุกท่านครับในศึกชิงทั่วแอนซงกีตรงหน้าตรงนี้ครับกับ Summoners War w a r n a c h a m p i o n s h i p 2023ในรอบของ World Finals ครับผมเดินเต้นไปสิครับเตะเข้าไปชาลอนเขาจิ้มสองเข้าไปสตันเรียบครับและต่อยตามเข้าไปจูโน่ร่วงไปอีกหนึ่งครับและเป็นผู้ปกครองต่อยเข้าไปฟิตเกมเย็กกลับมาหรือเปล่าครับจิ้มสองเข้าไปว่าจังหวะนั้นจะอยู่ที่แบบฝั่งเล็กของนึงเกินกอแตกเลยฮะจังหวะมาละนี่เรียบร้อยหรือเปล่าครับสำหรับควอเตอร์ฮะจะตายหรือไม่โอ้โหโดนหนักทีเดียวฮะแต่เมนอาจจะพอแล้วเอาแล้วขึ้นมาจังหวะนี้เฮ้ยได้ลอยโอ้โหตามมาอีกรอบหนึ่งแล้วไอ้กันซิงอยู่ไปด้วยตีไปที่ใครเอ้าเอ้าไปแล้วไปแล้วโอ้โหครับดันเกลงไปแล้วตามมาที่ครับน้องชาลอนปั่นเข้าไปครับผมโอ้โหนะเป็นการปิดชาที่สวยงามจะยุบได้ไหมนะฮะยิงชี้ครับตรงรีไปครับแต่ถ้าสวนกลับมาจังหวะนี้ก็แตกได้ไม่ได้ครับถ้าสวนกลับมาเปิดกองแตกกลับขึ้นนี่ครับสวนไปครับจะตกเสือนะฮะเปิดกองแตกไปแล้วแต่ก่อนจังหวะนี้ก่อแตกไปครับตับกลับขึ้นมาเอาจังหวะนี้เอเอครับจะเก็บได้อีกตัวหนึ่งหรือเปล่ากระโดดเข้าไปไปเข้าไปนะบงโอ้โหแล้วตีนโอ้โหมีบอลตัดทันครับแล้วสวนกลับมา
ไปไปเลยครับเป็นยังไงลึกเปล่าพี่ไม่นานเข้ามาแล้วมาซะโอเล่ติ๊กกลับเหมือนกันเอาละเอาละขออีกหนึ่งทีทูเวบขออีกหนึ่งทีตึงปีกไปได้